much guys those who have joined me and those who are joining me thank you so much as you join please comment uh, your name your country your city and all that and i would love to see your comments and i will try to reply to your comments as well well guys i planned this six hour session for you all as you know ielts exams are held regularly four times a month two times academic uh, no, four times academic and two times general training, okay? So students are always there. So I planned this long session with you because some of my students, they were requesting me to conduct a long session on IELTS. That includes writing, listening, reading, speaking, each and everything in detail. So I know it's going to be midnight time somewhere, somewhere night time and all that. It's around 8 plus, okay? 8 p.m. onwards. So it's going to be late or early or whatever, but don't worry. I mean, this session is going to be of six hours. And by the way, uh, you can watch it. Along with that, you can enjoy it as well. Like you can have your food on the table. You can have your favorite drinks on the table, your favorite snacks. You can attend the session, sip your coffee, drink your juice, and you'll have fun. And as you attend the session, I want you to have pen and paper with you. Okay, put pen and paper there. And especially when you attend listening session, during the listening session, I will play the audio. When you find the answer from the audio, write the answer on a piece of paper. And then later on, <coughs> later on you can check that answer. When I tell you the right answer, you can check and match the answer and then see out of 40 how many answers are correct. And at the end of listening test, comment what the right answer is, uh, how many answers are right, okay? Or you can do one more thing when you do listening as it is going to be live, so you can type your answer, okay? So this is going to be even better as well. Whenever there is an answer, write question number and then type answer. For example, question number one, answer is table. So write one dot and then table. This is how you can do that, okay? Uh, as the session proceeds, let me tell you, there will be reading, there will be writing uh, for listening and reading. Uh, I mean, uh, there are going to be handouts as well. So for that, I will share my own comments there. There will be a link of Google Drive. From that link, you can download the handouts too. Listening handout and reading handout, you can always download from there. And then uh, on your mobile, you can uh, see the handout. And on your laptop, you can attend the class. <coughs> or you can do one thing. You can have a small video screen on your laptop and Take a look at the handout and I mean make it more interactive as it is live. So try to make it more interactive and on every step you can comment whatever is in your mind comment and I will try to read your comments although it's going to be this it's going to dis uh, to divert my attention during the session I will not answer the questions live but actually my colleagues are there they are going to answer your questions they are going to read your comments and they're going to reply your comments as well so don't worry at all about all these things okay session is long but you know the journey or the destination you have that requires hard effort you know if the effort is hard the journey or the destination is going to be something remarkable if the effort is small outcome is going to be small as well, right? So IELTS is a great task which you have actually taken responsibility of. So this is going to take you somewhere, okay? So let's move on. Now I'm going to start with the session and during the session, I will change clothes, I will change locations, okay? So don't worry about that. You need to attend all the session regardless of making any ju judgment about anything, right? This is the place management house. Some session I'll conduct from here. <coughs> then downstairs we have auditorium. I will conduct your listening and reading sessions there in the auditorium. Okay, so I'll try to change locations and my clothes as well so that you have different feelings and all that stuff, okay? So don't worry, and during the session, I will also enjoy myself. I will eat, drink, enjoy, and all that, okay? Yeah, I'll have water bottle with me, tea, coffee, stuff, and all that, okay? So thank you so much. Now we are going to start with listening, and you can download the handouts. There will be my comment, Google Drive link. <coughs> you can download the handout from there as well. And as I'm coughing, so during the session, if I cough, please excuse me for that, as it's a live session, right? Let's start with listening now. Bismillah.
اوکے گائز بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم تھینک یو تھینک یو السلام السلام اوکے سو ویو گاٹ آئلس لسننگ پارٹ ون اینڈ ایف یو اسٹے اٹینٹو فار دا نیکسٹ ٹین ٹو ففٹین منٹس یو ول بی ایبل ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ ہاؤ ٹو گیٹ ٹین بائی ٹین ان لسننگ پارٹ ون دوز ہو نیڈ اوور آل سکس پوائنٹ فائیو اور اوور آل سیون listening and speaking these two modules will provide them that because with a little extra effort you can achieve better band score writing needs time to develop practice to develop reading needs time because of your understanding and all that but listening and speaking if you pay a little more attention you can get very good band score right so anyways now the first thing is you need to see the first sentence is complete the notes below This sentence will tell you about the type of questions. So question type is notes completion. Next, write one word and or a number. Now answer is going to contain one word or number or word plus number. One word, number, word plus number. Okay. So after that, you need to read the title. Buckworth Conservation Group. Don't go for the meaning of Buckworth. conservation if you understand good if you not understand no problem uh, it's just a group and all that your focus should be on the questions right so regular activities the first title is regular activities and the first one is beach uh, when they play the audio there are certain words which you need to sign post because you know going along the audio is very important here you are on the question booklet here is the audio if you go simultaneously like if you are on question 1 when the audio is on question 1 you will find the answer if you are little below or little before or after you will not be able to find so that is why in circle at least 4 5 words that when you listen to those words you know audio has reached here for example if they use the word beach now beach means audio has reached here if they use the word uh, nesting boxes nesting boxes and by the way the notes or sentences where there is no question they use the same wording for that okay moth pen the when question comes they change the wording all together when there is a note there is no question only note they don't change the wording they use the same wording like nesting boxes they will use the same wording for that okay so you need to sign post so that you know now the audio is here now the audio is here now the audio is here and you'll find the answers easily if you and audio they're going to go together okay uh, this this one point shaila this one point treble treble ko kam karenge ye awaaz sahi ho jayegi Okay, so question number one: Making sure beach does not have. Now, very simple. This question is with not, and for not they can use anything, any word. For example, they use the word unless. They use the word uh, none. So make sure beach does not have. Now underline does not have. For does not have. For example, make sure beach does not have pollution. Now, just try to understand their mindset. Uh, you should make sure that there is no pollution at the beach. Does not have and no pollution at the beach. Or they can say, make sure the beach is free from pollution. Free from pollution means does not have any pollution. You understand? This is called rewording. This is called synonyms and all that. So once you start understanding these type of synonyms. IELTS listening will not be difficult for you. Anyways, let's start question number one. You will hear a woman called Jan phoning a man about their local conservation group. Hello. Oh, hello. My name's Jan. Are you the right person to talk to about the Buckworth Conservation Group? Yes, I'm Peter. I'm the secretary. Good. I've just moved to this area and I'm interested in getting involved. I was in a similar group where I used to live. Could you tell me something about your activities, please? Of course. Well, we have a mixture of regular activities and special events. One of the regular ones is trying to keep the beach free of litter. A few of us spend a couple of hours a month on it. And it's awful how much there is to clear. I wish people would be more responsible and take it home with them. I totally agree. 
free of litter. How do you spell litter? L I double T E R. Now, other liter is one liter, two liter, three liter. This liter means garbage, trash, garbage, liter. And see, sometimes this thing starts with confusing word. Now, liter is a confusing word because sometimes we only know liter, one liter, two liter, three liters. So, trash, garbage, liter, it's the same thing. For example, don't litter. Don't litter means gandana pilau. Don't litter. Okay. Now, on it. And the second option is no dash. Now, another point which is not allowed. And for no, they can use not, free from, or anything. Now, I play the audio. I'd be happy to help with that. Is it okay to take dogs? I'm afraid not, as they're banned from the beach itself. You can take them along the cliffs, though, and children are welcome. Right. Children are welcome. Dogs, I'm afraid not. Are we allowed to take dogs? I'm afraid not. So, no dogs. Answer is dogs. That's right. Because it's one word only. Okay, let's go on. Nature reserve. Now, can you see there are two points without any question? So, you need to know which point is discussed in the audio. If you know, now they are discussing point one. Now they have come to point two. And when they come to point three, you know there is the, your answer. So going along the audio is extremely important. From the first point, maintaining paths, underline the word paths. They will elaborate on it. They will just explain it. Next, nesting boxes for birds installed. Now nesting boxes and installed. Next, task is taking action to attract, underline the word attract, taking action to attract dash to the place. To attract dash to the place means that thing should come to the place. So it can be any species of animals or attract mosquitoes, attract birds, attract pigeons, attract crows and all that. So let's see which word they use. For example, for attract, they may use the word encourage. Attract mosquitoes. It will encourage the mosquitoes to come here. Attract mosquitoes. Encourage mosquitoes. So whenever you solve IELTS listening and you do debriefing, you must see what is written here and what is the synonym of that in the audio. Once you learn 40 questions, 40 things like that, you'll be better test after test. So let's see. We also manage a nature reserve. And there's a lot to do there all year round. For example, because it's a popular place to visit, we spend a lot of time looking after the paths and making sure they're in good condition for walking. I could certainly help with that. Good. And we have a programme of creating new habitats there. We've just finished making and installing nesting boxes for birds to use. And next, we're going to work on encouraging insects. They're important for the biodiversity of the reserve. Okay. They certainly are. Insects. Plural. They've spoken plural words. So we're going to encourage insects to the place for biodiversity. Means every type of animal is there. If in the forest there are only lions and tigers and zebras are not there, what will happen? Lions and tigers will die of hunger. Right? So they, they are important. That's what we call biodiversity. Okay. Answer is insects. Next, question number four, identifying types of. Now, underline the word types of and listen carefully. For types of, they can use the word types of, kinds of, sort of, S-O-R-T, classification, sorts of, or species of, species of, types of, kinds of, species of. For example, types of birds, kinds of birds, species of birds, and all that. Now, let's see what is the answer. Oh, and we're also running a project to identify the different species of butterflies that visit the reserve. You might be interested in taking uh, part in that. Instead sure. of speaking your answer, I would advise you to write your answer. Okay, once you write your answer quietly, when I stop the audio, then tell me what the answer is. Because many students who don't find the answer, then they find it. And they find it from you, not from the audio. Okay, so keep quiet, wait till the last moment when audio is over, then I say, yes, what is the answer? Then tell me the answer, okay? So question number four, please listen Oh, again. and we're also running a project to identify the different species of butterflies 
Okay, to identify different species of butterfly, identifying types of and species of. Okay, in part one and part four, listening merely depends on all these things. Part one and part four, absolutely. Question number five, building a new. Now listen, for building, they can use the word constructing, making, creating, and for new. They use a number of different words for new. For example, they can say, if I say, uh, for example, I want to replace my old mobile. What does it mean? I want to buy a new mobile. So when I want to replace, now replace is another word for new. Okay, so replace uh, another one. I want to buy another mobile. Means I want to buy a new mobile, right? Or I want to update my mobile. Means I want to buy a new one. Okay, so let's see. Another job we're doing at the reserve is replacing the wall on the southern side between the parking area and our woodshed. It was badly damaged in a storm last month. Okay. So replacing the wall, I play it again. Please stay focused. Even for a second, if you lose your attention, you will miss the answer. Answer will come and go, and you will never notice that. Please listen. Another job we're doing at the reserve is replacing the wall on the southern side. Between another the job we are doing. Another job we are doing means building. building. Building and another job we are doing is replacing the wall. So replacing the wall means new wall. Answer is wall. If you write new wall, two words, right answer will be wrong. Okay, that's good. Okay, guys, now we move on. Next is forthcoming events. That is the title. And the subtitle is Saturday. Now, whatever is going to take place on Saturday, that will be your answer. Just underline car park. The points which are without questions, you will never read them to waste your time. But you will just take a look at them and underline one important word for signposting. And what is signposting? Audio has reached here. Now they are going to move on to the next one. So when you underline car park, you know the audio is here and now they are going to come to the next point. And you can do this thing also with the right, with the, if you are a right-hander, with the left hand, follow the audio. Now audio is here and with the right hand, write the answer. So right hand will move from question number one to question number two. Question number two to question number three. And this hand that is only following the audio will move along the audio. Now it's here. And when these two hands join, you will write your answer, okay? So, let's see. Uh, walk across the sands and reach the. Reach the means a place where you're going to reach. How will you reach there? By walking across the sands. Walk across the sands and reach the dash. Now, just keep in mind, by walking across the sand, you will reach somewhere. For example, reach the garden. Walk over the sand and you will reach the garden or you will find the garden right or the garden will come there something like that then as i said we have a program of events as well both at the weekend and during the week right i presume you have guided walks i'd like to get to know the local countryside as i'm new to the area yes we do the next walk is to ruston island a week on saturday we'll be meeting in the car park at dunsmore beach at low tide that's when the sands are dry enough for us to walk to the island without getting wet. Sounds good. The island's a great place to explore. It's quite small and it's got a range of habitats. Okay, answer is? Island. I-R-E-L-A-N-D. Ireland, huh? How do you spell I-C-E-L-A-N-D? Yes, I-S-L-A-N-D. Island. S is silent. Okay, so the answer is island. Just listen to this once again. Then, as I said, we have a program of events as well, both at the weekend and during the week. Right. I presume you have guided walks. I'd like to get to know the local countryside as I'm new to the area. Yes, we do. The next walk is to Ruston Island a week on Saturday. We'll be meeting in the car park at Dunsmore Beach at low tide. That's when the sands are dry enough for us to walk to the island without... Walk to the island. Reach the island. Walk to the island. Okay, picnic, you need to underline. They will talk about it. Question number seven. Where appropriate. 
Now, it's something wearable. Anything on your head, on your feet, on your arms, on your body, anything and appropriate. For appropriate, they can use anything suitable, right? For example, uh, if the answer is appropriate coat, they can use the word suitable coat, coat that suits, right? Or for appropriate, they can use any other word. Now, let's see what that is. But remember, answer is going to be wearable and which is appropriate. If they say, if they say, don't wear plastic shoes because they are not good. Would the answer be plastic shoes? No. You must wear sandals, for example, if they say, right? So. It's also an ideal location for seeing seals just off the coast or even on the beach. Okay. And is there anything we should bring? Like a picnic, for instance? Yes, do bring one, as it's a full day walk. And of course, it'll be wet walking across and back, so make sure your boots are waterproof. I must buy a new pair. There's a hole in one of my current ones. <laughs> make sure your boots are waterproof. Now, waterproof is appropriate. Got it? No, 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 no. Answer is boots, but appropriate. For appropriate in the audio, they use the word waterproof. Waterproof, appropriate, and answer is boots. B O U. Absolutely. B double O T S. Got it? Now, when you understand suitable, waterproof, they are synonyms, and I call them stupid synonyms. Why? Because they are only synonyms in IELTS, not otherwise. You will never fi find anywhere suitable and waterproof, but in IELTS you will find. We call it rewording, paraphrasing, and all that. So the answer is. Boots, right? Yeah. Sorry? Reference to the context. Absolutely. Okay. Next is woodwork session. They have a woodwork session. You know woodwork, making things out of wood and all that. Okay, woodwork session. Suitable for. Suitable for means suitability of woodwork session for the type of people. Right? Suitable for dash to participate in. Now, suitable for who to participate in? Well, I'd definitely like to come on the walk. Great. Then later this month, we're having a one-day woodwork session in Hopton Wood. I've never tried that before. Is it OK for beginners to take part? Definitely. There'll be a couple of experts leading the session, and we keep the number of participants down, so you'll get as much help as you need. Excellent. Beginners. Is it okay for beginners to take part? Definitely. Suitable for beginners. Try to understand how they talk. Is it suitable? Uh, no, they use the word, is it okay for beginners? And definitely means suitable for beginners. And if he would have said no, then that would not be the answer. Okay, so answer is beginners. How do you spell? B-E-G-I. Okay. Single G, B E G I double N E R S, beginners. Okay, question number nine making dash out of wood, underline out of wood. Now listen and always remember for out of wood, for example, if it is out of wood, for that they use wooden. For instance, if answer is plate, plate out of wood, wooden plate. Okay. Plate out of iron, iron plate. Plate out of silver, silver plate. Understand? Plate out of gold, gold plate. Right? Like that. So out of wood means wooden something. So let's see what that is. I'd love to be able to make chairs. <laughs> That's probably too ambitious for one day. You'll be starting with wooden spoons. And of course, learning how to use the tools. And anything you make is yours to take home with you. That sounds like fun. All right. Answer is? Now, one more thing. Don't develop a habit of speaking the answer when it comes. If you do it in actual exam, it may lead to cancellation of your test. So just your mouth shut and write the answer down and all that. Okay. I mean, you need to follow the practices which are allowed in the exam. In reading module also, you are not even allowed to whisper. Your tongue and your lips must not move when you are reading. So make sure you practice with your mouth shut. Okay, answer is 
spoons. Uh, then there is 3 p.m. So when they say 3 p.m., it means they are going to move on. 3 p.m. is signposting, right? Question number 10, cost of session, no camping. Now this no camping, another language, we call it, this is a sort of travel. They will give you the price with camping and some students will write that. And then without camping, for no, they use the word without. So cost of session, no camping means cost and they have already given pound sign. So you will not write currency sign, you will just write the amount, okay? So let's see what is the cost without camping. With camping, that's not your answer. When is it? It's on the 17th from 10 a.m. until 3. There's a charge of £35, including lunch, or £40 if you want to camp in the wood. I should think I'll come home the same day. Well... I'd certainly like to join the group. It's All right, so cost of session, 35, absolutely. Got it? Now, they gave you two options and one of them is the right one. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, now those who do not understand multiple choice questions, this is a good opportunity for you. Why? Because we've got multiple choice questions from a very basic level. And in the same test, we will go on to advanced level multiple choice questions as well. So if you really have problem in multiple choice questions in IELTS listening part three, try to solve multiple choice questions in IELTS listening part two. Because part two multiple choice questions are easier and shorter than part three. Once you develop good understanding of multiple choice of part two, then part three will be fine for you and all that. So that's what we are going to do. Boat trip round Tasmania. Now they have a boat trip and that boat trip is round Tasmania. Now you don't know what Tasmania is, but still forget about it. Just think about boat trip. All right. Question number 11. What is maximum number? Underline maximum number. Thank you. What is maximum number of people who can stand on each side of the boat? Now, they have a boat. Imagine this is a boat. What is the maximum number of people who can stand on each side? Right? If it says, well, for example, 9, 15, 18. So, 9, 18, 15, what is the maximum number? Maximum number means each side and maximum number. Right? Equal. Yeah. So, let's see what is the maximum number. Let's see. Maybe it can be 15 and total 30, right? But anyways, keep in mind maximum number and then keep in mind each side. Each side means one side. For example, if one side 15, total 30. Yes, yes. You will hear a tour guide, Lou Miller, speaking to a group of people about a boat trip they are going to take around the Australian island of Tasmania. So, hello everyone. My name's Lou Miller and I'm going to be your tour guide today as we take this fantastic boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. Before we set off, I just want to tell you a few things about our journey. Our boats aren't huge, as you can see. We already have three staff members on board and on top of that, we can transport a further 15 people, that's you, around the coastline. But please note, if there are more than nine people on either side of the boat, we'll move some of you over. <laughs> Otherwise, all 18 of us will end up in the sea. <laughs> okay, nine. And he had already counted. Staff members, three, 15, 15 plus three, 18 divided by two. Answer is nine. But you don't have to do it. He said that clearly that nine on each side. Otherwise, all 18 of us will end up in the sea. What does that mean? Sare dub Yeah. Okay. So the right answer is nine. Sure, sure, sure. You will hear a tour guide, Lou Miller, speaking to a group of people about a boat trip they are going to take around the Australian island of Tasmania. So, hello everyone. My name's Lou Miller and I'm going to be your tour guide today as we take this fantastic boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. Before we set off, I just want to tell you a few things about our journey. 
Our boats aren't huge, as you can see. We already have three staff members on board. And on top of that, we can transport a further 15 people. That's okay, three staff members, and top of that, we can transport 15 people. You around the coastline. But please note if there are more than nine people on either side of the. If there are more than nine people on either side, so maximum number more than. And answer is nine. Good. I like it. I tell you. I tell you. I like it. You know, you are at the height of confusion right now. Uh, you are forgetting the word either side. Read the question. Read it loudly. Huh? Maximum number of people on each side. Each side means at the either and either. Okay. Don't confuse yourself too much. Okay. There's no way out of it. Question number 12, please, now. What color are the tour boats? Now, listen. R. Is it past or future? Present. So, if he says our boats used to be light green, will that be the answer? No. If he says we are planning to paint our boats jet black, no. The color they are now, that will be the answer. Okay. So, let's see. Dark red. Option A is dark red, B is jet black, C is light green. So again, focus R. We've recently upgraded all our boats. They used to be jet black, but our new ones now have these comfortable dark red seats and a light green exterior in order to stand out from others and help promote our company. This gives our boats a rather unique appearance, don't you think? Dark red. Well done. Excellent. Quiet? Upset? Shut up? Yeah. So, dark red. Kis ne likhe? Well done. Come on. Excellent. Good, good, good. Grahat kada karein. Dark red kis ne likhe? Okay. Dark red is the color of seats. So, that's not the color of boat. They are talking about boat. Okay. So, the answer is light green. And when you write the wrong answer... You are double chora. Yeah. Here. I eyelets Canada. Yeah. Okay. So be careful. I play this one again. I tell you. Yeah. They use the word in here. The question is what color are the tour boats? When we talk about the color of the tour boats, that is their exterior. Right. So just look at that. We've recently upgraded all our boats. They used to be jet black. Now, jet black cannot be the answer. They used to be. But our new ones now have these comfortable dark red seats. New comfortable dark red seats. That's the color of seats. And a light... In order to... Seats and a light green exterior in order to stand out from others. Okay, light green exterior in order to stand out from others. All good. Okay, let's go on. Question number 13. Which lunch box is suitable for someone who doesn't eat meat or fish? Which, which lunch box? Vegetarian. Okay, vegetables and all that. So someone who doesn't eat meat or fish. Which lunch box? Now, lunch box one. They will tell us what does it contain. If they write over here, fish, chicken, this, then we can easily identify, right? So lunch box one, they say, we offer three lunch boxes. Lunch box one, they will tell us. And if they use the word meat or fish, that will not be your answer. A lunch box which contains only vegetarian food, that will be your answer. Okay, now let's see. We offer you a free lunch box during the trip and we have three types. Lunchbox 1 contains ham and tomato sandwiches. Lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll. And Lunchbox 3 is salad-based and also contains eggs and tuna. All three lunchboxes also have a packet of crisps and chocolate bar inside. B? No. A? Well done. C? Good. Now, listen, we are not playing a guess game. We are not playing a guess game. The right answer is option B. 
I tell you why. Just listen. And again, again, you need to remove your confusions. If you are confused, I say right answer is B. You say it's C. I know it is C. I heard C. They use the word vegetable. They use the word tomato. Not like this. You need to make sure why B is the right answer. If you don't make sure why B is the right answer, you're not learning anything. You're just following the trend. So we offer you a free lunchbox during the trip, and we have three types. Lunchbox one contains ham and tomato. Ham and tomato. Ham, you know. Barley the ghost. Okay, <laughs> that is what we call ham. Understand? Ham is pig's meat pork or whatever so ham is actually meat right now lunchbox 2 sandwiches lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll and lunchbox 3 that's the cheddar cheese roll now cheddar cheese is not meat or fish so that is the right answer cheddar cheese roll and lunchbox c or 3 a cheddar cheese roll And lunchbox three is salad based, and also now salad based. You say ah, salad based, but now also so contains eggs and tuna. Tuna. What is tuna? Fish. Okay, eggs and tuna. Now, if you don't know tuna, you'll say okay, salad. Yeah, I know. I let's. Yeah, okay. So it's just that thing. You gotta be very, very careful, and you have to observe all these things while practicing. If you practice like this, the way we are doing, you will find all the answers right. Okay, let's go on. Question number fourteen. What should people do with their litter? Same litter. Yeah, yeah. The other day, one of my colleagues once said, "Me letter pro ne ne letter." I said letter. What letter? We were just like, you want to post the letter? He said, "No letter, letter, lighter." Yeah. Okay, some people call it letter. So, what should people do with their litter? Litter means garbage. What should they do? Now, what options do we have? Throw it in the sea, as they have a sea to work. Throw it in the sea, <laughs> exactly. Or otherwise, you can keep it with you in the plastic bag and throw it. Or if they say on the boat we have a dustbin, throw it in the dustbin. So, option A, take it home. Option A, take it. Oh, why not? Huh? Tanu ki bhai. If they say, "Be careful! Don't throw your trash anywhere. You should take it home and put it in your bedroom's dustbin." Ha, hon sahi hai. They can say anything without listening to the audio. You cannot decide. Answer is yes or no. Don't do the fluke or tukas. Option B: Hand it to a member of staff. Like you say, "Excuse me, this pamper. You take it." Yeah. <laughs> hand it to a member. How hand it? Give me your hand. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So hand it to a member of staff. And option C, put it in the bins provided by on the boat. Bins mean dustbin. Hand it to a staff or keep it home. Now, what should you do with your tra trash? I'm sure I don't have to ask you not to throw anything into the sea. We don't have any bins to put litter in, but Jess, myself, or Ray, our other guide, will collect it from you after lunch and put it all in a large plastic sack. B, hand it to a member, and he named the staff members, and they said we'll collect it from you and put it in the large plastic bags. Even they didn't use the word bins, large plastic bags. So B is the right answer. So. This is the very foundation of IELTS multiple choice questions. Now we will find multiple choice questions in part three, and you can differentiate how these questions are and how those questions will will be. Yes, in IELTS listening part two or part three, we have a question type which is actually called multiple choice questions. Okay, and these multiple choice questions are double. And for that they write choose two letters, choose two letters. Now whenever it is uh, one letter, choose one letter. For that they say choose the correct letter. Choose the correct letter means single multiple choice, and choose two letters that means double multiple choice. Okay. So which two features of the lighthouse does Lou mention? Now you know lighthouse on the bank of sea. There is the lighthouse. Two features. Now listen carefully. Five features have been mentioned. Three features he will discuss 
in contrast with the statements given here. He will have contradicting ideas to three of these statements and two of his statements will agree or otherwise I can say three statements will be false according to A, B, C, D, E, F and two statements will be true. I, ex I explain further, don't worry. Why it was built? If in the audio he says the reasons why this lighthouse was built are still unknown today. Will this be the answer? No. And they say this lighthouse was built to protect the army. Then A is the right answer. Got it? What I mean by false statement and true statement. Okay. Option B. Who built it? If in the audio they say it was built by King George answer is this right uh, however people still don't know exactly who built it so yeah it's cross so you got to see right or wrong option c how long it took to build if he says it took 35 years to construct this lighthouse this is the right answer and if, if, if he says well it took a lot of time but nobody knows exactly precisely then this is not the right answer option d who staffed it Past tense, who staffed it? Who staffed it means workers. The people who work at the lighthouse, who are they? Who staffed it? And option E, what it was built with. That means material. Okay? So now, another problem is this. They're going to discuss all five options, but unfortunately, they will not discuss them in order. If they only discuss these options in order, first A, B, C, you only have to do one thing. Tick, cross. Tick, cross cross and the ticks are the right answers and cross that that are the wrong answers but anyways now the first thing is you need to catch the option which is under discussion then you need to decide if that option is right one tick if that option is wrong cross and then move on to the next option and how to go to the option in every option underline one word for example option a why built option b who built option c how long built Option D, who staffed? And option E, what, uh, what built with? What built with? So, now please listen and answer. And this time you will select two letters. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise. So, before we head off, let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors, as a number of shipwrecks had led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated, as some of the original drawings kept by the local council show. It sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot. In the 19th century, there were many jobs there, such as polishing the brass lamps, chopping firewood, and cleaning windows that kept lighthouse keepers busy. These workers were mainly prison convicts until the middle of that century, when ordinary families willing to live in such circumstances took over. So, option A and D. Well done. Now, option A, why it was built. They use the word to protect sailors. To protect sailors, option A. And option D, who staffed it? Prison convicts and other and all that. Okay, so option A and option D, these are the right answers. Now, I play the audio and just listen to option A and D more carefully. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise. So, before we head off... Let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors. Now, listen, how long it took to build? He didn't mention that. It was built in 1886 to protect sailors. So A is the right answer as a number of shipwrecks had led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated, as some of the original drawings kept by the local council show. It sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot. 
In the 19th century, there were many jobs there, such as polishing the brass lamps. Okay, there chopping. were many jobs there, polishing the brass lamps and all that. And then they come to those prison convicts. So A and D are the right answers. Question 17 and 18. Choose two letters A to E. Which two types of creature might come close to the boat? Imagine you are traveling by boat on this sea tour. So two creatures will come closer. And other creatures you will see from the distance. Now the creatures that will come closer will be the answer. And the creatures that you at the distance will not be the answer. Sea eagles. Sea eagles. Option B, fur seals. Option C, dolphins. Yeah, do you think dolphins will come closer? Let's see. Okay. Option D, whale. If whales come closer, they will be a disaster. Right? And E, penguins. Yeah? Penguins are friendly, so they might come closer. Now, the animals that will come closer, the boat, that, that's going to be the right answer. Some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see. I know everyone loves the penguins, but they're very shy and unfortunately tend to hide from passing boats. But you might see birds in the distance, such as sea eagles flying around the cliff edges where they nest. When we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals, we'll stop and watch them swimming around the coast. They're inquisitive creatures, so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. Their predators, orca whales, hunt along the coastline too, but spotting one of these is rare. Dolphins, on the other hand, can sometimes approach on their own or in groups as they ride the waves beside us. Okay, so correct answer? B and C. Absolutely. B is fur seals and then whales are their predators, right? And C is dolphins. Now, please write down this code. E, A, B. Write it down. E, A, B. D, C. It's Elephant, Alpha, Bravo, Delta, Charlie. Okay, so this is the order of the audio. Now, I just play this one again for you. Some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see. I know everyone loves the penguins, but they're very shy. Everyone loves the penguins, but they are very shy. Cross this option. At the end, write a little cross. Now, penguins is not the answer. Cannot be the answer because they are very shy and unfortunately tend to hide from passing boats. Okay, unfortunately tend to hide from passing boats. But you might see birds in the distance. You might see birds in the distance. What is the question? Type of creature might come close. So it's the opposite of might come close. That is why the birds like sea eagles, that will not be the answer. Such as sea eagles flying around the cliff edges where they nest. When we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals, we'll stop and watch them swimming around the coast. They're inquisitive creatures, so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. Don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. So right in front of you means might come close to the boat and that is fur seal. Okay, now they discuss option D. Their predators, orca whales, hunt along the coastline too, but spotting one of these is rare. Spotting one of these is rare, so it's not the whales. Now they're going to talk about dolphins. Dolphins, on the other hand, can sometimes approach on their own or in groups as they ride the waves beside us. Okay, so the second answer is dolphins. Now, questions 19 and 20. Choose two letters. Which two points does Lou make about the caves? Now, underline two points. Lou makes caves. Okay, now just visualize caves. Option A, only large tourist boats can visit them. So, underline large boats visit. And them means caves. And you should know that. Option B, entrance are often blocked. So, underline entrance blocked. Entrance, often blocked. Option C, dangerous for individuals. Dangerous for individuals. Option D, someone will explain. 
Someone will explain me in tourist guide will tell you what is inside the caves and all that. Okay. Option E cannot be reached on foot. They cannot be reached means caves cannot be reached on foot. You need to use a boat or any other means of transport. So just underline cannot be reached on foot. Now listen two points they make about caves. Lastly, I want to mention the caves. Tasmania is famous for its caves and the ones we'll pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them. They can only be approached by sea, but if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you, then you can take a kayak into the area on another day and one of our staff will give you more information on that. What we'll do is to go through a narrow channel past some incredible rock formations and from there we'll be able to see the openings to the caves and at that point we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. We'll talk to you about what lies beyond. What lies beyond means what is inside. So the correct answer is option D for doctor and E for elephant option a large to okay now just write another code uh it's echo echo e alpha bravo delta charlie delta and charlie they, they just confuse these two options anyways i'm going to play this one again please listen lastly i want to mention the caves tasmania is famous for its caves and the ones we'll pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them they can only be approached by C. They can only be approached by C. So option E. They cannot be reached on foot means they can only be approached by C. Now if something can be approached by C means it cannot be approached on foot. So E is the right answer. Got it? See how technical they are. You cannot go there by, by boat. For example, if they say it means you need to fly there. So if they say you cannot go there on foot. It means you need a boat. So, E is the first right answer. Now come to option A. But if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you, then you can take a kayak into the area on a... You can take a kayak into the area. Now, those who don't know kayak, they will not understand. This kayak is a small boat. You might have seen one person is having this thing and he uh, oar in his hand and he's going on small board very small board is all body is inside the board and only this much is visible and they're doing it like this that is called kayak and kayak is a very small board now option a only large tourist boats can visit them opposite of that is kayak right so a is not the right answer now option b another day and one of our staff will give you more information on that what we'll do is to go through a narrow channel past some incredible rock formations. Okay, go through narrow channels. Entrance to them are often blocked? No, he said we'll go through narrow channels. So entrance is not blocked, right? Now come to option D and option C. And from there, we'll be able to see the openings to the caves. And at that point, we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. Okay, we will talk to you about what lies beyond. And this idea, it is too dangerous for individuals to go near them, is not discussed. Okay, so correct answer, D for doctor, E for elephant. Okay, guys, in IELTS listening, the most complicated questions for the students are multiple choice questions. Most complicated because of the complexity of the options they discuss and they talk about them in such a way that a normal speaker of English language or a normal learner of English language cannot spot the difference between the right answer and the wrong answer. And what do many students do? They pick up the words. They don't go for ideas. They pick up some words and then they decide, okay, in option B, they have this word. That is why this is the right answer. It's not the word. It's the idea that will decide the right answer. The title. Work experience for veterinary science students. Veterinary science means animal doctors. So work experience for them. Question number 21. What problem did both Diana and Tim? Underline problem. And then both. If I say, well, I had this problem, and you say, yes, I also had this problem. It means both. So there are three problems. 
one is individual problem of diana and one is individual problem of tim but one problem is their what do you say common problem so that common problem will be the answer option a making initial contact with suitable farms underline making initial contact for that they might say i didn't know how to find or how to get hold of a farmhouse and if the other one says me too then a is the right answer if other one says well i had my uncle who helped me so i easily contacted with them then it's not the answer right option b organizing transport underline organizing transport if one says well i had to arrange a bus to go there and the other one says i lived on the farm so i didn't have this problem or if other one says i had my own vehicle so i didn't have this problem so will that be the answer now what will you focus both the problem they both had if one says well i had issues with the train service and the other one says yes i had the same problem with me that will be the right answer option c finding a placement for the required length of time finding a placement required length of time now what is finding a placement means job placement and required length of time one month two months three months you know like you do internship for three months two months and all that now a common problem will be the right answer individual problem will be the wrong answer they will discuss all three options in any order first catch the option which is being discussed and then see if that is individual problem cross it if that is combined problem and that is your answer you will hear two veterinary science students called Diana and Tim discussing their work placements and their course modules so tim we have to do a short summary of our work experience on a farm right my farm was great but arranging the work experience was hard one problem was it was miles away and i don't drive and also i'd really wanted a placement for a month but i could only get one for 2 weeks. Mm, I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm so I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't easy. No, they don't seem to have websites, do they? I found mine through a friend of my mother's, but it wasn't easy. No. Excellent. Right answer is A. Chor phade gaye ha. it's not c okay i tell you why write down this code b c a what's the code b c a it means in the audio first they will discuss option b then option c and then option a now please listen to it again you will hear two veterinary science students called diana and tim discussing their work placements and their course modules okay only focus option b So Tim, we have to do a short summary of our work experience on a farm. Right. My farm was great, but arranging the work experience was hard. One problem was it was miles away and I don't drive. Okay, it was miles away and I don't drive. Now listen to her. And also, I'd really wanted a placement for a month, but I could only get one for 2 weeks. I wanted a placement for a month but I could only get one for 2 weeks. Now that was his problem. Now let's see what does she say. Mm, I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm. I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm. So problem B was not her problem. She lived on the farm with other animals. <laughs> Now come to option C. But I could only get one for 2 weeks. Mm, I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm so I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't Finding the right sort of farm to apply to means making initial contact with suitable farm. It's easy. Wasn't no, it? they don't seem to have No, wasn't easy. No, means both had this problem. They don't have websites and all that. So making initial contact with suitable farms is the right answer question number 22 tim was pleased to be able to help now tim helped someone and he was happy about it option a lamb that had a broken leg now listen carefully if tim helped a lamb with broken hell uh, leg a is the right answer 
if tim called the doctor and doctor treated the lamb then a is the wrong answer understand yeah some you must be thinking it's so technical but the good thing is i'm explaining to you so you can understand option b sheep that was having difficulty giving birth so tim became a midwife there okay a sheep that was having difficulty now if tim helped the sheep giving birth then b is the right answer but if doctor came and tim only you know they did the extra work then it's not the right answer and option c newly born lamb that was having trouble feeding so tim helped with the lamb tim gave the uh, new baby lamb a feeder or cerelac or anything like that then c is the right answer otherwise it's not now listen carefully out of three options where tim actively helped or tim got involved in helping that is the right answer where others for example the farmer did all the work and i was just looking right then that is not the right answer okay now let's see please listen and decide what's the right answer. and you know one thing answer is either a or b otherwise c so that's not difficult okay my farm was mostly livestock especially sheep i really enjoyed helping out with them i was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb on your own no the farmer was there and he told me what to do It wasn't a straightforward birth, but I managed. It was a great feeling to see the lamb stagger to its feet and start feeding almost straight away, and to know that it was okay. Hmm. Then another time, a lamb had broken its leg, and they got the vet in to set it, and he talked me through what he was doing. That was really useful. Not B, C. No, A. Okay. and you know all of you are right right but <laughs> as per you you are right okay now please write down this code b c a b c a and the right answer is c well done good english you canada soon okay i stay here punjab you canada forever canada yeah All right, you Desi, no, you Valati, I Desi, yeah. Okay, let's listen and decide. My farm was mostly livestock, especially sheep. I really enjoyed helping out with them. I was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb. On your own? No, the farmer was there, and he told me what to do. The farmer was there, and he told me what to do. Who did it all? Tim. So option B. sheep that was having difficulty giving birth and tim helped now i tell you listen don't look at me angrily oh now i tell you why a and c are wrong now please come to option c newly born lamb that was having trouble feeding it wasn't a straightforward birth but i managed i managed it was a great feeling to see the lamb stagger to its feet and start feeding almost straight away lamb staggered to its feet and start feeding straight away did tim do anything no. no the lamb did it all by itself okay so c is the right wrong answer now come to option a and to know that it was okay hmm. then another time a lamb had broken its leg and they got the vet in to set it they got the vet in to set it who set it vet vet is animal doctor right veterinary veterinary and all that yeah and he talked me through what he was doing he taught me through what he was doing so who was doing that was doing and he was watching okay let's go on question number 23 diana says the sheep on her farm now diana says and she talks about the sheep on her farm so you will listen to diana carefully <coughs> various different varieties underline sheep and various different varieties okay so if there was a various different variety a is the right answer b mainly reared for their meat reared for their meat means they were raising the sheep for their meat so for their meat reared for their meat and option c had better quality wool so underline better quality wool than other sheep better quality wool so Now what does she say about the sheep on her farm? Yes, my farm had sheep too. 
The farm was in a valley, and they had a lowland breed called Suffolk. Although the farmer said they'd had other breeds in the past. So were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. They're quite big and solid. My farm was up in the hills, and they had a different breed of sheep. They were Cheviots. Oh, I heard their wool's really sought after. Yes, it's very hard wearing, and they use it for carpets. Right. So, why not see? Their wool is good. It is used for carpets. That is Tim. Absolutely, that's what I told you. Okay. Now please write down the code. This time it's simple. A B C. Right. So I'll just play this and. Yes, you. my farm had sheep too. The farm was in a valley, and they had a lowland breed called Suffolk. Although the farmer said they'd had other breeds in the. Okay, they had lowland breed called Suffolk. Now various different varieties. No. They had lowland breed called suffix, although the farmer said they used to have, or they had in the past. So that other breeds were in the past. So A is the wrong answer. Why? Because they had only one breed. Now listen to option B. Past. So were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. Were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. So bred and reared. Right answer is B. And for C. They're quite big and solid. My farm was up in the hills, and they had a different breed of sheep. They were Cheviots. Oh, I heard their wool's really sought after. Yeah. Okay, but that was there on the farm of Tim. So that is why C is not the right answer. Got it? Okay, don't worry. Gradually, you'll be fine. Okay. Question number twenty-four. What did the students learn about adding supplements to chicken feed? Now. What did students learn? Adding supplements to chicken feed, like we have food supplements. So adding supplements to chicken feed. Option A. Uh, these should only be given if specially needed. Underline given if specially needed. If the chicken needed, then they should give. Otherwise, they should not give. Supplements. Okay. Option B. It is worth paying extra for more effective ones. So worth paying extra. Worth paying extra means the money you paid. It was value for money. Worth paying extra means value for money. And option C, amount given at one time should be limited. Amount of what? Supplement. Amount of chicken feed supplement. Yeah. So amount given at one time should be limited. Just underline two words: limited amount. Right now, I play the audio. I was interested in the amount of supplements they add to animals' feed nowadays. Like even the chickens got extra vitamins and electrolytes in their feed. Yes, I found that too, and they're not cheap. But my farmer said some are overpriced for what they are, and he didn't give them as a matter of routine. Just at times when the chickens seem to particularly require them. Yes, mine said the same. He said certain breeds of chickens might need more supplements than the others, but the cheap and expensive ones are all basically the same. Hmm. Huh? Absolutely, A. These should only be given if specially needed, and the code is C B A. Now it's the reverse one. Listen. I was interested in the amount of supplements they add to animals' feed nowadays. Okay, amount of supplement they add to the uh, feed, animal feed, but it's not the limited they are talking about. Like even the chickens got extra vitamins and electrolytes in their feed. Yes, I found that too, and they're not cheap. But my farmer said some are overpriced for. Okay, they are not cheap. Some are overpriced. When something is overpriced, it is not worth paying extra. Overpriced means. Very expensive, so it's not option B. Now come to option A. Should only be given if specially needed. What they are, and he didn't give them as a matter of routine. He didn't give them as a matter of routine. Just at times when the chickens seem to particularly require them. Just at times when chickens seem to require them means given if specially needed. For need, they use the word require. A is the right answer. Question number twenty-five. What happened when Diana was working with dairy cows? Yeah, imagine it to Dumaria, something like that. Okay. So what happened when Diana was working with dairy cows? Option A. 
She identified some cows incorrectly. Identified cows incorrectly. Okay, like the breed of cows and all that. Option B, accidentally threw some milk away. Dud rul gaya. Yeah, she kicked the bucket and all the milk actually went away. So she threw some milk away. And option C, made a mistake when storing milk. When she was storing milk, she made a mistake. So what did she do when she was working with the dairy cows? So did your farm have any other livestock, Diana? Yes, dairy cows. Oh, I made a really embarrassing mistake when I was working in the milk shed. Some cows had been treated with antibiotics, so their milk wasn't suitable for human consumption and it had to be put in a separate container. But I got mixed up and I poured some milk from the wrong cow in with the milk for humans. So the whole lot had to be thrown away. The farmer wasn't too happy with me. C. She made a mistake when storing. So some cows were given antibiotic and that milk was not suitable for human. And that had to be saved and she mixed both of them. And then farmer had to throw or the milk, and he was not very happy, okay? Just listen to this one. So, did your farm have any other livestock, Diana? Yes, dairy cows. Oh, I made a really embarrassing mistake when I was working in the milk shed. Some cows had been treated with antibiotics. Okay, some cows had been treated with antibiotics. That is, she identified some cows incorrectly. No, she knew that. Some cows were treated with antibiotics. So their milk wasn't suitable for human consumption and it had to be put in a separate container. But I got mixed up and I poured some milk from the wrong cow in with the milk for humans. Okay, milk from the wrong cow with the milk that was for humans. So that was she made a mistake when storing milk. Okay, that is option C. And then who threw the milk? The farmer. So the whole lot had to be thrown away. Whole the lot had to be thrown away. The so farmer was not happy. Okay, let's go on. Question number 26. What did both farmers mention about vets and farming? Both farmers. There were two farmers and they mentioned about vets and farming. Vet means animal doctor and farming. Option A. Vets are failing to cope with some aspects of animal health. Vets are failing. And... Animal health means vets don't even know. They are failing to cope with some aspects of animal health. Option B, there needs to be a fundamental change in the training of vets. Fundamental change, training of vets. Vets means, again, animal doctor, vet means. And option C, some jobs could be done by farmer rather than by a vet. So some jobs done by farmer rather vet. I mean, farmer can do it himself. You know, many farmers, they are injecting their cows and they're giving them medicine and all that. They know how to treat that and all that. So some jobs done by farmers. So what did both farmers mention? Now, both mentioned. Both mean Tim's farmer and Diana's farmer. Yeah. I asked my farmer how much he depended on the vet to deal with health problems. I'd read reports that the livestock's health is being affected as farmers are under pressure to increase production. Well, he didn't agree with that. But he said that actually some of the stuff the vets do, like minor operations, he'd be quite capable of doing himself. Yeah, my farmer said the same. But he reckons vet skills are still needed. My farmer said the same. See, some jobs could be done by the farmer rather than by a vet. Minor operations and all that, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, with multiple choice in IELTS listening part three, we usually have matching. Sometimes if you are unlucky <clears throat> with single multiple choice, we have double multiple choice. Like questions 21 to 26, single multiple choice. 27, 28, 29, 30, four double multiple choice questions. So it depends. And if you are very lucky, then you get sentence completion. Sentence completion is the easiest one. Okay, so... Questions 27 to 30. What opinion do the students give? Underline opinion. Students give about each of the following modules. Underline modules on their veterinary science course. So you have to match opinions with modules. Now, if you take a look at the questions 27 to 30. 
the question is modules medical terminology diet and nutrition do you get any information that is why don't read questions because in the audio they will discuss all of them one by one the first module is medical terminology or after that we had diet and nutrition they will talk about them as clearly as the words are written here so you don't need to worry about it read the opinions now they are going to paraphrase the opinions question will not be paraphrased okay option a now please follow me very very carefully tim found this easier than expected who is this guy tim now you got to listen to tim and underline easier than expected underline tim easier if he says anything it was it was quite easy and i was thinking it could be difficult but actually it wasn't it wasn't option b tim thought this was not very clearly organized again tim not clearly organized option a tim easier than expected option b tim not very clearly organized option c diana may do some further study on it diana further study on this if she says i will do some more research on it i will read a couple of articles about it it's that again again diana okay option d they both found now they in circle they this is very confusing question yeah tim and diana they both found reading required for this was difficult reading was difficult they didn't understand so both and reading was difficult option e tim was shocked underline tim and shocked he learned something on this module tim was shocked he learned something or something he learned option f they were both surprised so they were surprised how little is known about some aspects now it's basically tim tim diana both tim both okay now let's see this makes it confusing tim tim diana both and all that so this is quite complicated question number 27 medical terminology now we've got to give a bit of feedback about last term's modules just short comments apparently shall we do that now okay so medical terminology well my heart sank when i saw that especially right at the beginning of the course and i did struggle with it i thought it would be hard but actually i found it all quite straightforward i thought it would be hard but i found it quite straightforward it's a tim found this easier than expected easier than expected easier means it was quite straightforward i thought it would be hard so question number 27 answer is a question number 28 diet what did you think about diet and nutrition okay i suppose do you remember what they told us about pet food and the fact that there's such limited checking into whether or not it's contaminated i mean in comparison with the checks on food for humans I thought that was terrible. Mm. I thought that was terrible and she only said mm. what does it mean? Na ha te na na. Right? So I thought it was terrible. Tim was shocked at something he learned at this module. And what was it whether the food for animals was contaminated or not? There was no check on that. So E is the right answer for question 28. I'm playing it again. What did you think about diet and nutrition? Okay, I suppose. Do you remember what they told us about pet food and the fact that there's such limited checking into whether or not it's contaminated? I mean, in comparison with the checks on food for humans, I thought that was terrible. Mm. Question number 29, animal <laughs> disease. So, let's see. I think the module that really impressed me was the animal disease one. when we looked at domesticated animals in different parts of the world like camels and water buffalo and alpaca the economies of so many countries depend on these but scientists don't know much about the diseases that affect them yes i thought they'd know a lot about ways of controlling and eradicating those diseases but that's not the case at all that's not the case at all scientists don't know 
option F. Well done. They were both surprised how little is known about some aspects of this. Please listen to it again. I think the module that really impressed me was the animal disease one. When we looked at domesticated animals in different parts of the world, like camels and water buffalo and alpaca, the economies of so many countries depend on these. But scientists don't know much about the diseases that affect them. Yeah. Scientists don't know much about the diseases that affect them. Yeah. Yes. I thought they'd know a lot about ways of controlling and eradicating those diseases, but that's not the case at all. But that's not the case at all. Surprise! That's not the case at all, right? Okay, let's go on. Next, we have question number thirty: wildlife medication. I loved the wildlife medication unit. Things like helping birds that have been caught in oil spills. That's something I hadn't thought about before. Yeah. I thought I might write my dissertation on something connected with that. Right. So actually, I was thinking something along the same line. I think I might write my dissertation on something connected with that. I write my dissertation. She's going to write her dissertation in the future, and for that, she's going to study. Option C. Diana may do some further study on it. For further study, they use the word dissertation. When you do dissertation, you do further research. On that topic. Okay, IELTS listening part four, and it's one word only. One word only <laughs> is the common pattern of IELTS listening part four. Labyrinth. What is a labyrinth? It's a kind of、uh, sort of you know. In the past, they used to have maze. Like from one end you enter, and then you have to come out. Right, there are many deadlocks, many closed ways, and all that. Okay, yeah, puzzle. It's a kind of puzzle. Definition: a winding spiral path leading to a certain area. Right, like sometimes you solve a puzzle or labyrinth on paper. You know, you enter from here, and from there, that is the exit. You go there, there, that is blocked. Then you find another way, and finally you go out. Labyrinths compared with mazes. Mazes are a type of. Now, please tell me the synonyms of type of. We did it in part one. Absolutely, kind of, sort of, yeah, anything like that. Now, just focus, kind of, type of, sort of, and you will find your answer. And mazes are. Part four. You will hear an anthropology student giving a presentation on spiral path designs known as labyrinths. Labyrinths have existed for well over four thousand years. Labyrinths and labyrinthine symbols have been found in regions as diverse as modern-day Turkey, Ireland, Greece, and India. There are various designs of labyrinth, but what they all have in common is a winding spiral path which leads to a central area. There is one starting point at the entrance, and the goal is to reach the central area. Finding your way through a labyrinth involves many twists and turns. Okay, so what is the answer? Yeah, see, ani hogi kudi ha? Who nani aya answer? Well done, very good. So you got to wait for the answer to come. Shanti, kaha ho tum? Okay. <laughs> Sir. But it's not possible to get lost,、hmm. as there is only one single path. In modern times. The word labyrinth has taken on a different meaning, and is often used as a synonym for a maze. A maze is quite different, as it is a kind of puzzle with an intricate network of paths. It is a kind of puzzle. Well done. Kind of puzzle and type of maze. And for maze, they use the word. It is a kind of. It means maze is a kind of puzzle. Puzzle. P U double Z L E. Well done. Now dash is needed to navigate through a maze. Navigate through a ma maze means find your way through a maze. Dash is needed. For example, intelligence is needed, right? Let's see. Mazes became fashionable in the 15th and 16th centuries in Europe, and can still be found in the gardens of great houses and palaces. The paths are usually surrounded by thick, high hedges, so that it's not possible to see over them. 
Entering a maze usually involves getting lost a few times before using logic to work out the pattern and find your way to the center. Before using logic. Now listen, before using logic means logic is needed. Logic is needed. Before using logic means you need to use logic. Right? Logic is needed. Before using logic, it is difficult to find your way and all that. Question number 33, the word maze is derived from a word, meaning of a feeling of. Now underline feeling. For feeling, they can use the word emotion. For feeling, they can use the word state. S-T-A-T-E. For example, what state of mind are you in? What are you feeling? What state of mind are you in means what are you feeling? So answer is going to be a feeling. It's going to be an emotion or a feeling. Simple. There are lots of dead ends and paths which lead you back to where you started. The word maze is believed to come from a Scandinavian word for a state of confusion. This is where the word amazing comes from. State of confusion. Okay, amazing comes from maze. And maze is, you know what maze is. So answer is confusion. Have you noticed answers are very simple? They are coming very systematically. So in part four, if you lose, if you have bad part three, you can always get back in part four, right? Worst scenario, there will be three to four questions that you don't actually understand. It's not that, okay? So over here, you can get 10 by 10. Part one, you can get 10 by 10. With 35 answers, you can get eight pen. Anyways, let's go on. Question number 34. Labyrinths represent a journey through life. They have, they means labyrinths. Labyrinths have frequently been used in dash and prayer. Now in dash and prayer. Answer will come with prayer before or after. And for and they can use any other word. And also as well as along with or anything like that. Now focus the word prayer and it's going to be with that. Labyrinths, on the other hand, have a very different function. Although people now often refer to things they find complicated as labyrinths, this is not how they were seen in the past. The winding spiral of the labyrinth has been used for centuries as a metaphor for life's journey. It served as a spiritual reminder that there is purpose and meaning to our lives and helped to give people a sense of direction. Labyrinths are thought to encourage a feeling of calm and have been used as a meditation and prayer tool in many cultures over many centuries. Meditation and prayer tool. So it's, so it's very easy. Whenever before the blank or after the blank there is end, answer is definitely going to come with that word. Okay, so answer is meditation with the right spelling. Okay, yeah. Question number 35. Early examples of labyrinth spiral. Ancient carvings on. Now look here. Carvings on means material. Carvings on stone. Carvings on rock. Carvings on wood. Carvings on cement. Carvings on what? So carving is when you know they carve and all that. Like sometimes people carve heart. When you go to the garden you see there is the A love this and B love C and all that. So that is also called carving. Right? So, ancient carvings on surface. Answer is going to be that surface where they have the carving have been found across many cultures. The earliest examples of the labyrinth spiral pattern have been found carved into stone from Sardinia to Scandinavia, from Arizona to India to Africa. Okay, answer is stone. stone. Carved into stone. Now, into Carved into stone and carvings on. Answer is stone. Okay, next they talk about Pima and baskets. Got it? So just underline Pima and underline baskets. Okay? Alright, as I said in part 4, there is one thing. Remember, in IELTS listening part 4, for many students, listening audio is fast. Why fast? Because it's a lecture. One person is talking, he talks on and on and on and on. And many students, they are lost in part four. 
audio is somewhere they are on a different question audio is discussing a different question so in order to avoid getting lost it's a very good idea when they give you one minute to read the questions in circle some signposts for example before this question number 36 <coughs> you can encircle pima and then you can encircle baskets when they say pima and baskets they are discussing that option and when in the audio they say ancient greeks it means now they are going to give us the answer. Ancient Greeks use the symbol on dash. Again, a surface. Symbol on something. Exactly. It's going to be a surface. In Europe, these spiral carvings date from the late Bronze Age. The Native American Pima tribe wove baskets with a circular labyrinth design that depicted their own cosmology. In ancient Greece... The labyrinth spiral was used on coins around 4,000 years ago. Okay, used on coins around 4,000 years ago. And for symbol, they use the word was used on coins. Symbol on coins, used on coins. Coins, okay. Q, U, double E. All right. Good job. C, O, I, N, S, coins. Walking labyrinth. The largest surviving example of a turf labyrinth. Now, if you don't know what the turf labyrinth is, it doesn't matter. The largest surviving example of turf labyrinth once had a big, underlined big. Now, I tell you, for big, they can use the word huge. For big, they can use the word gigantic. For big, they can use the word large. Right? Enormous. Or any other word like that. Just focus and then... At its center. Now look, look here. Big dash at its center. For center, they usually use the word middle. Region. Middle, middle. Center is not that center. This center is Darmian. Okay, yeah. So for this center, they will use... Because they said at its center. Right? Big dash. Focus context of the talk. Context is big dash at its center. So they may use the word a large... Uh, a, a large tower in the middle. A large tower. tower in the middle. What will be the answer? Tower. tower. Well done. In northern Europe, there were actual physical labyrinths designed for walking on. These were cut into the turf or grass, usually in a circular pattern. The origin of these walking labyrinths remains unclear, but they were probably used for fertility rites, which may date back thousands of years. Eleven examples of turf labyrinths survive today, including the largest one at Saffron Walden, England, which used to have a large tree in the middle of it. Which used to have a large tree in the middle of it. And see, answer is tari. Okay, T-H-R, T-R-E-E, tree. Well done. Okay, question number 38. Labyrinths nowadays believed to have a beneficial impact on mental and physical health. For example, walking a maze can reduce a person's underline reduce. Okay, walking a maze, if you're walking a maze, right? We used to have a maze in uh, Gulshan Iqbal Park. Lahore Gulshan Iqbal Park. We used to have a maze old times and people used it for toilets. <laughs> exactly wherever you entered oh my god because you know in the maze you can hide yourself easily so people use it for toilets there i remember in my childhood we had a trip to that labyrinth and as we entered oh gosh come out come out come out so anyways uh walking a maze can reduce now listen can reduce underline that and right there decrease or slower now look here can reduce blood pressure or slower heart rate, slower, uh, yeah, we, with blood pressure we can also, can reduce pulse rate, pulse rate. So slower pulse rate or anything like that, okay? Now let's see what it is. And they've mentioned persons. For persons, again, they will use some different word. More recently, labyrinths have experienced something of a revival. Some believe that walking a labyrinth promotes healing and mindfulness and there are those who believe in its emotional and physical benefits, which include slower breathing and a restored sense of balance and perspective. Okay, which slowers? Breathing, breathing can reduce a person's... How do you spell breathing? 
ing breathing good <coughs> okay let's go on question number 39 then there is a point prisons so just encircle prisons and when they say prisons it means audio has reached here after that popular with parents visitors and staff in hospitals Yes, I'm just coming. Popular with patients, visitors, and staff in hospitals. Patients who can't walk can use finger labyrinth. Now they have a finger labyrinth, right? <laughs> Made from. Now what is the answer? Material of that finger labyrinth, right? Now whatever the material. For example, made from plastic. Now they've got this and they're doing it mm, like that. Yeah, they just come. Do you understand labyrinth? Then you find it easier. Otherwise, what is that? Yeah, non de na rakhe khai de. All right, let's see. Material. This idea labyrinth. has become so popular that labyrinths have been laid into the floors of spas, wellness centers, and even prisons in recent years. A pamphlet at Colorado Children's Hospital informs patients that walking a labyrinth can often calm people in the midst of a crisis, and apparently. It's not only patients who benefit. Many visitors find walking a labyrinth less stressful than sitting in a corridor or waiting room. Some doctors even walk the labyrinth during their breaks. In some hospitals, patients who can't walk can have a paper finger labyrinth brought to their bed. Can the science... have a paper finger labyrinth. Now, paper is the material, right? So, answer is paper. paper. Well done. Question number forty. Research has shown that Alzheimer's sufferers experience less dash. Now underline less, and for less they can use any word. For example, they can use the word calm and relief from. For example, answer is stress. Less stress. But what is the other word for that? Minimum stress, reduced stress, or Uh, decreased st stress well done exactly or calm and relief from stress shuru mein video banate hain to uske end pe hota tha cameraman yasin afiz right us waqt inko kaam nahi aata tha lekin ab inko aa gaya kaam mashallah bade ha isi tarah hi uska uska youtube channel bhi amin afiz us din aaya hua tha wo pc mein tha all right so let's go on question number 40 Research has shown that Alzheimer's sufferers experience less dash. Focus less, and you will find your answer. For example, one study found that walking a labyrinth provided short-term calming, relaxation, and relief from anxiety for Alzheimer's patients. Anxiety for Alzheimer's patients. Anxiety. How do you spell? X I E T Y. And again, if your spelling is wrong, your answer is wrong. Thank you. यासिन इज क्वाइट इंटेलिजेंट इन दैट जिस जोक में यासिन का नाम आता है वो जोक भी काट देता है ही इज डूइंग ऑल दी एडिटिंग सो जहाँ पे इसका अपना नाम कोई चीज़ें आती हैं वो काट देते हैं ओके गाइज वी स्टार्ट विद आयल्स रीडिंग एंड दिस इज एकेडेमिक आयल्स रीडिंग एंड एकेडेमिक आयल्स रीडिंग इज अ मॉन्स्टर ओके सो when we know ielts reading academic reading is a monster so then we need to make a strategy how to deal with this monster okay so don't be afraid step by step gradually you are going to be fine uh, there are three parts of this monster part 1 is the baby monster it will not be that difficult so you can find your way out part 2 is monster's wife okay so monster is monster but monster's wife is also going to be a monstrous so that can be a little difficult and part 3 is the big monster or rakshas or whatever you want to say but still practice through practice you can beat this monster if something is difficult at first do it again and again and again and god almighty has given us one ability we perform several things in our life on autopilot what is autopilot when you drive the car when you learn to drive the car first time 
you are observing each and everything the gear the clutch if it is a shift car and all that stick shift car and once you learn driving then you are going on very comfortably you are enjoying music and your hands are moving auto on uh, autopilot in the same way have you noticed the ladies they are working in the kitchen at the same time they are talking all right horsuna ki hal something like that and they are doing it all perfectly so these things are on autopilot right so this is something very great according to psychologists and experts they say if god has not granted us this ability of doing things on autopilot we would be confused every day how to do this and that and this autopilot comes when you repeatedly do the things when you repeatedly drive the car when you repeatedly cook then things go on autopilot so once you practice ielts reading it will be on autopilot you'll be enjoying ha huh? academic reading no problem all right true second false and all that okay so practice can beat this monster right now let's start reading passage 1 the concept of intelligence what does it mean what is intelligence what is the definition of intelligence who are intelligent people and who are unintelligent people how can we define stupid people how can we define intelligent people what is the concept what makes people intelligent are they born with intelligence or they can learn to be intelligent so we will come across all these things and in ielts reading we always come up with topics like this sometimes they will talk to you about chimpanzees about uh, robots about driverless cars and things like that okay so never expect thirsty crow or greedy dog in academic ielts reading topics are going to be on science research and all that okay concept of intelligence and you can see the paragraphs are labeled as a b c d after reading the title and within few seconds you can make up your mind what you are going to read ahead now you will come to questions questions 1 to 3 now it is not necessary that you have to follow the same order when you solve the questions it's not necessary that first you will solve 1 to 3 then 4 5 6 no mainly there are two type of questions in ielts reading academic or general training type 1 is what i call type a questions where questions and the answers in the passage they are in order in order means when you find one answer you read on and on and on you will find second answer then you read on and on and on you will find third answer okay <coughs> and then we have type b type b is where questions and answers are not in order they are scattered they are in random order or they are scattered in different parts of the passage so whenever we you start your ielts reading try to start with the type of questions which are easiest for you and such questions are sentence completion summary completion flow chart completion any completion type of questions you can do they are going to be easy for you after that you can see uh, in the end you will do the questions which are type b now let me tell you in ielts reading there are only ty two type b questions number 1 list of headings number 2 which paragraph contains the following information list of headings and which paragraph contains the following information they are type b uh, and then there is another one uh, matching we do have matching type of questions okay so when we have matching type of questions yeah it's not naswar it's only holistic <laughs> but i use the style of naswar before reading it's important to have one here <laughs> solve a test and throw it out <laughs> then have another one <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so uh yeah i was telling you type a and type b number one list of headings number two which paragraph contains the following information and the third one is not type b it sounds like type b it is called matching where you have to match the names with the list with, with options for example there is a list of scientists lists of list of researchers and then there are questions in this question type questions are not in order but the list of scientists that is in order 
okay so as we practice we we have all these questions here we'll find them now can you take a look questions one to three which section contains the following information how many questions and for these three questions you have to use now there are three type of readings uh, one uh, two are reading types and one is only searching number one scanning scanning is looking for some specific information in the passage when you scan you don't read you only look you only search for example please come to the title page title page the concept of intelligence I want you to look for the word not well understood phenomenon not well understood phenomenon title page not well understood phenomenon search search scan scan not well understood phenomenon now don't read only scan paragraph C second last line so what it is we call it scanning let's scan another word okay same page and I want you to scan the word implicit theories implicit theories yeah it's there and you may find it in, in, in another line as well okay so this is what we call scanning after reading the question you find a clue word and then you scan that clue word in the passage your first target is to reach the right part of the passage that contains answer and second target is to read that part and find the answer so by the way uh, for questions one to three there are only three questions but these three questions will take a tour of all the passage that may take more time so it's a good idea to start from questions four to six now what is question type yes no and one common mistake that students do when it comes to yes no not given for true false they write yes no but most commonly for yes no they write true false okay so in such type of cases your answers may be wrong if for yes no you write true false because the computer system or the markers markers are those gentlemen who check your reading okay uh, and listening so they only know true false if you write yes no they will cross your answer so you have to be careful with that as well now let's try to solve it yes no not given it's type a questions questions and answers are in order question number four slow language development in children is likely to prove disappointing to their parents now listen slow language development in children and disappointing to their parents if slow language development is disappointing for their parents answer is yes if it is not disappointing parents are okay with that you know some children they start talking later like after six seven years of their age if it is not disappointing if it is normal then the answer is false sorry or no and if they don't tell us whether it is disappointing or it is good then the answer is not given now look for the word slow language development slow language development all right paragraph b for boy and please come to third line <clears throat> okay we've got this third line of paragraph b uh, it is useful to learn about people's implicit theories for example parents implicit theories of their children's language development will determine at what ages they will be willing to make various corrections in their children's speech now have they mentioned that parents are disappointed or they are not more generally parents implicit theories of intelligence will determine at what ages they believe their children are ready to perform various cognitive tasks and all that what's the question slow language development in children is likely to prove disappointing to their parents there is no mention of disappointing or good that is why the answer is not given Question number five, people's expectations 
of what children should gain from education are universal look here look here whatever we expect from education for children that is universal universal mean in all, every country of the world parents expect that after getting education our children will get a job they will get money they will be able to earn money and all that if all the people of the world think in the same way it's universal if in some countries people give education for one purpose in other countries they have another purpose in other countries they have another purpose their expectations are different or variety of expectations then this is going to be no and if they don't tell us whether expectations are universal or specific then the answer is not given okay you need to understand this is academic reading now let's go back expectations education universal expectations paragraph e well done and you know how do you reach there through scanning if you are good at scanning you will reach there easily now they say in the third line okay i'm reading it from second line paragraph e second line after full stop as mentioned earlier people have expectations for intellectual performance that differ for children of different ages how these expectations differ in part a function of culture now expectations differ and they depend on function of culture so it means people's expectations are not universal they are different and they differ or they vary from culture to culture that is why what is going to be the answer no people's expectation of what children should gain from education are universal no people's expectations vary from culture to culture or they are different as per the culture so question number 5 answer is no question number 6 scholars clue word is scholars scholars may discuss theories without fully understanding each other now underline without fully understanding and each other each other means one another scholars may discuss theories without fully understanding each other now scholars will discuss the theories and even if they don't understand each other they will still discuss the theories now the clue word here is scholars well done paragraph j last three lines and see that now those who said j it means that gentleman is very good at scanning so when you scan you don't read when you scan you are only searching the word scholar 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 and every question in ielts reading will give you a clue okay until scholars are able to discuss their implicit theories and thus their assumptions they are likely to miss the point of what others are saying when discussing their explicit theories and their data now scholars may discuss theories without fully understanding each other what do they say until scholars are able to discuss their implicit theories and thus their assumptions they are likely to miss the point of what others are saying they are likely to miss the point what others are saying means without fully understanding each other so the answer is yes, yes. you know this test has started in a confusing way otherwise in academic ielts reading part 1 all right in academic reading part 1 two type of questions are extremely important it usually starts with completion and completion questions are very easy you can do them second one is true false not given so usually there are 5 to 6 completion type of questions and 5 to 6 true false not given and you can easily find your way but over here we've got yes no not given and the passage is a bit confusing anyways yes all right now we try to solve questions 7 to 13 we call it matching usually we get matching in part 3 of academic reading but when your day is bad and you are unlucky so you can see this in part 1 as well right now you can see there are questions 
questions are more and the list of theories they are fewer than the questions how many questions do we have <coughs> seven questions and how many theories three in this case it's a good idea to do it according to the theories now i want you to underline hamiltonian hamiltonian where is it paragraph g first line okay so it means few answers are going to be in this paragraph hamiltonian underline it wherever you find hamiltonian underline that it's paragraph g next i want you to underline jeffersonian paragraph h and then jacksonian it's the second part of paragraph h now what does it mean only three paragraphs and how many questions isn't it good like if you do it all in seven eight minutes that's perfectly fine right so this is what we call locating the right place in the passage where there is the answer sometimes students ask me the question we can't manage our time in reading we take two hours or i spend one hour on one passage i need two more hours that is not possible okay so you need to manage your time what are the time wasters in ielts reading when you read extra when you are in the wrong part of the passage for example you go to buy a book and you are in a vegetable shop and you say kitabe nazar nahi aa rahi har jagah aloo tomato tinde pade hain mein pata nahi kya masla hai so it means you are at the wrong place when you are at the right place you will find the answer okay now let's see we go back and we look for hamiltonian now i give you some time to skim read paragraph g okay let's do this together uh, i'm reading paragraph g please follow me and in actual exam you will read it in your heart lip reading is not allowed at all invigilators will come and stop you okay if you're reading like this they will not allow you for that okay they'll say shh and how to read understand so whenever you read your mouth should be tightly shut exactly shut your mouth all right let's start hamiltonian view now what you are going to do when you read you should develop a habit that you need to underline important points now let's see what are the important points here hamiltonian view which is similar to platonic view is that people are born with different levels of intelligence underline that people are born with different levels of intelligence and that those who are less intelligent need the good offices of the more intelligent to keep them in line okay less intelligent people can go to the offices of more intelligent people to keep them in line whether they are called government officials or in plato's term philosopher kings okay and then they talk about murray and all that got it now they are changing the topic when they change the topic you stop reading now we go back to the questions question now when you read the questions read them very carefully why carefully because other questions you have to match with other names as well so don't just read them casually and underline the words question number 7 it is desirable for the same possibilities to be open to everyone underline desirable possibilities open to everyone because this option will go somewhere Question number eight: No section of society, underline section, no section of society should have preferential treatment at the expense of another. No section of society, preferential treatment, expense of another. Would it go with that? No. Question number nine: People should only gain benefits on the basis of what they actually achieve. So people gain benefits on the basis they achieve. no question number 10 variation in intelligence begins at birth now let's go back the hamiltonian view which is similar to platonic view is that people are born with different levels of intelligence and what's the question variation in intelligence begins at birth so question number 10 answer is a now don't write hamiltonian by mistake your answer will be wrong some people are extra careful a hamiltonian 
they will write that on the answer sheet don't do it okay and one more thing you have to do now cross question number 10 from the list you will not read it second time for time management this is very important otherwise you will reread the questions which you have done okay so number 10 where they have written number 10 just cross it it means it's now out of options Question number 11, the more intelligent people should be in positions of power. Why not? More intelligent people should be in positions of power. Come back. They say different levels of intelligence and those who are less intelligent need the good offices of the more intelligent to keep them in line, whether they are called government officials or in Plato's term, now government officials, we call them people in power, absolutely. So question number 11, more intelligent people should be in positions of power. And for positions of power, they use the word government officials. Now please cross question number 11 as well. How many questions have we answered? 12. Everyone can develop the same abilities. Underline everyone develop same abilities. <coughs> Question number 13, people of low intelligence are likely to lead uncontrolled lives. Now just underline low intelligence, lead uncontrolled lives. So how many questions have we answered? Two, 10 and 11. Will we read them again? No. Now please come to Jeffersonian. Jeffersonian. Okay, now we just go through paragraph H. Jeffersonian view is that people should have equal opportunities. Underline equal opportunities. But they do not necessarily avail themselves equally of these opportunities and are not necessarily equally rewarded for their accomplishments. People are rewarded for what they accomplish if given equal opportunity. Focus this thing. Does it ring a bell? Question number nine, people should only gain benefits on the basis of what they actually achieve. Now, what is written here? Yeah, exactly. People are rewarded for what they accomplish if given equal opportunity. People are rewarded for what they accomplish and people should only gain benefits on the basis of what they actually achieve. What they achieve means what they accomplish. So for question number nine, answer is B and you will cross number nine also. Cross number nine as well. Let's read on. Paragraph H, fourth line. Low achievers are not rewarded to the same extent as high achievers. Now, once again, in the Jeffersonian view, the goal of education is not to favor or foster an elite. Elite means rich class of the society. Right? The goal of education is not favor or foster an elite as in the Hamiltonian tradition, but rather to allow children the opportunities to make full use of the skills they have. Now focus this thing. Goal of education is not to favor or foster an elite, but rather to allow children the opportunities to make full use of the skills they have. It's question number eight. No section of society should have preferential treatment. No. Come on, come on, come on. Go through the questions. Twelve is everyone can develop the same abilities. No. Absolutely. Question number seven. It is desirable for the same possibilities, underline same possibilities, to be open to everyone now please come back in jeffersonian view the goal of education is not to favor or foster an elite not to favor or foster it means there should be same possibilities to be open to everyone when they say not to favor or foster an elite it means everyone when you say education should not favor the rich people it means it should favor everyone okay and then they say uh, yeah, 
it is desirable for the same possibilities to be open for everyone and what are the possibilities for that they use the word opportunities right possibilities and opportunities so question number 7 answer is <coughs> b now please cross question number 7 as well how many questions have we answered four and how many questions are left all right let's go on okay now we are going to go on and next we've got jacksonian the very next one okay the jacksonian view is that all people are equal not only as human beings but in terms of their competencies means you cannot say this person is intelligent this person is unintelligent all people are equal that one person would serve as well as another in government or on jury or in almost any position of responsibility in this view of democracy people are essentially intersubstitutable except for specialized skills all of which can be learned anyone can learn anything in this view we do not need or want any institutions that might lead to favoring one group over another now please come back we are left with question number 8 no section of society should have preferential treatment at the expense of another and what have they used for that yeah in this view of democracy people are essentially intersubstitutable except for specialized skills all of which can be learned in this view we do not need to want any institutions that might lead to favoring one group over another so question number 8 answer is c now what are we left with 12 and 13 Qu question number 12 everyone can develop the same abilities exactly why where have they written everyone can develop the same abilities all of which can be learned specialized skills otherwise they say all of which all of which means all the skills can be learned so that is question number 12 everyone can develop the same abilities answer is c cross it as well now what are we left with people of low intelligence are likely to lead uncontrolled lives now i think we missed it somewhere so for this we'll have to go back to hamiltonian let's go back to hamiltonian paragraph g okay paragraph g and we've got uh, the last two lines last two lines people who cannot take care of themselves left to themselves the unintelligent would create as they always have created a kind of chaos people who cannot take care of themselves what is that people of low intelligence are likely to lead uncontrolled lives now what is for uncontrolled life exactly left to themselves the unintelligent would create as they always have created a kind of chaos so kind of chaos is that they would lead an uncontrolled life question number 13 answer is a sometimes if you miss any question you will have to go back but don't answer blindly right okay now we come back to first three questions because we are quite familiar with the passage we know about this monster how to see and we have been through many paragraphs so let's see okay the best way to deal with the type of questions <coughs> which is called which paragraph contains the following information is through scanning now i tell you what to scan and how to scan question number 1 information about how non scientists assumptions underline non scientists information about non scientists assumptions about intelligence influence their behavior towards 
others. Now, non-scientists. Non-scientists are sometimes the people who are not scientists. Go back and see where do they talk about it. I give you three paragraphs, A, B, C. Scan. Information about how non-scientists assumptions, assumption is what they believe, what they assume about intelligence, influence their behavior towards others. B, why B? Okay, we've, uh, which line? All right, paragraph B, let's read from the beginning. First, implicit theories of intelligence drive the way in which people perceive and evaluate their own intelligence and that of others. To better understand the judgments people make about their own and others' abilities, it is useful to learn about people's implicit theories. For example, parents' implicit theories to their children's language. Now come back. Information about how non-scientists assumptions. What is non-scientist? People, parents, right? And assumptions is their theories about intelligence influence their behavior towards others. Come back. Let's read again. To better understand, I'm reading paragraph B, second line. To better understand the judgment people make, people are non-scientists, about their own and others' abilities, it is useful to learn about people's implicit theories. For example, parents, uh, children, language development will determine and all that. And if you go on, you will find further clues. Now, please come to question number two. A reference to lack of clarity, underline lack of clarity over the definition of intelligence. Now look here, uh, they will tell us it is very hard to define intelligence. Read the question again. Lack of clarity over the definition of intelligence. Now for example, what is the definition of intelligence? It is very hard to decide. Some people say intelligence is this. Some people say intelligence is that. We don't have a universal definition of intelligence. Now go back to paragraphs A, B, C. And then tell me which paragraph is that. <coughs> okay. Paragraph A. Looked at in one way, everyone knows what intelligence is. Now, lack of clarity. Focus that. Looked at in one way, everyone knows what intelligence is. Looked at in another way, no one does. No one does means lack of clarity. Sometimes if you look at it in, another, in one way, everyone knows what is intelligence. If you look at it in another way, no one knows what is intelligence. So question number two, answer is A. Question number one, answer is B. Now question number three. The point that researchers implicit and explicit theories may be very different. Now underline researchers. And implicit and explicit theories. These are two types of theories. That's it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now just look for researchers. Implicit or and explicit theories may be very different. Very different means two entirely different theories. They think in a different way. Paragraph D for doctor. Exactly. Third, implicit theories can be useful when an investigator suspects that existing explicit theories are wrong or misleading if an investigation of implicit theories and all that now investigator what is investigator that is researcher exactly so the point that a researchers implicit and explicit theories may be very different how do we understand may be very different exactly theories are wrong or misleading absolutely so for question number three answer is d and you have noticed one thing uh when they have questions like which paragraph contains the following information as question number one two three mostly answers are in paragraph a b c or a b c d if there are three four questions you can just see because you know when they start ielts reading it starts from band one level band one means non-user by the way in ielts if you get number one it means you have no relation with English. Then band 2, band 3, band 4. So they start reading from band 2 level, then band 3, band 4, and gradually they go on. So they try to keep part 1 simple and easy. 
Anyways, thank you. Now get ready for something different. Saving bugs. What is bugs? Insects. Saving bugs to find new drugs. To our DSC, the Tessie. Now, what do we have in the passage? They will talk about some insects which they are going to use to make new medicine they will make medicine like have you heard if you eat mosquitoes every day it's good for your stomach if you have a headache eat some flies you'll be fine okay yeah no just kidding don't start eating flies the other day i saw on youtube uh they made kebabs of mosquitoes in africa and this is how they uh what do you say uh protein the protein needs of their bodies they have got something and they just do it here and they, are, they collect mosquitoes. Once they collect the mosquitoes, then they mash them all. And then they make those kebabs and... Mm, yummy, huh? <laughs> okay. So saving bugs to find drugs. Now switch on your imagination. They will talk about some insects. How they can use those insects to make drugs. Zoologist Ross Piper. Ross Piper looks at the potential of insects in pharmaceutical research. Now we understand the scope of the passage. Once you read the topic and understand the scope of the passage, then you come to the questions. <coughs> questions 14 to 20. Reading passage 2 has nine paragraphs. Which paragraph contains the following information? Bad day. Huh? Listen, whenever they say test was easy, test was difficult, it depends on the type of questions. If in the test you have more type B questions, test is likely to be difficult. Like for example, which paragraph contains the following 14 to 20? How many questions? Seven here three in previous one and then after that if they give you a list of headings also so that test is going to be more confusing and if they have more sentence completion true false not uh, not given yes no not given and then they have uh, multiple choice questions table completion that test is going to be easier so it depends right anyways questions 21 and 22 double multiple choice questions and questions 23 to 26, complete the summary below. So where should we start from? Summary completion. Okay? <laughs> then we can go back and fight with other ones. Now, for summary completion, mostly questions and answers are in order. Sometimes they give you one summary, sometimes they give you two separate paragraphs and they are two summaries. If there is one summary, space, another summary, then you have to deal with them in two separate paragraphs. And once I solved a question type, every question was a summary. <coughs> question number 11, one summary, one uh, summarized sentence, 12 another, 13 another. In that case, questions and answers will not be in order. But if it is one summary, then questions and answers are in order. Research at uh, Eberis Twyth University. Look for Eberis Twyth University. Look for that. So the good news is you will find all the answers in paragraph Hanji. Okay? In paragraph G. So you have found the location. Now we read the questions. Now first we read the questions and then we go back. Ross Piper and fellow zoologists at this university. If the name is difficult, however, you can read, read it. Otherwise, just read AB University. AB, AB, AB. Right? Moving us in the current Okay, just AB University are using their expertise in DASH. Now, where are they using their expertise? It can be a subject or area. They are using their expertise in DASH when understanding bioprospecting with insects now let's go back paragraph g my colleagues and i at ab university in the uk have developed an approach in which we use our knowledge our knowledge means expertise we use our knowledge of ecology so knowledge of ecology means expertise in ecology well done answer is ecology 
Clear? Yes. All right. Now, question number 24. They are especially interested in the compounds that insects produce to overpower and preserve their. Now, look here. Their means something related to insects. And insects use that compound to overpower. Overpower means to control and to preserve their dash. Let's come back. Third line. The creatures that particularly interest us are the many insects that secrete powerful poison for subduing prey. Subduing prey and keeping it fresh. It means prey. And fresh means preserve. Keep something fresh means preserve. What will be the answer? Prey. And what does prey mean? Prey means shikar. Prey. This prey is P-R-E-Y, prey. Right? So, subduing prey. What is the word for subduing? Overpower. Overpower and subdue and preserve. And for that, the word is keeping it fresh. Answer is prey. Let's go on. They are also interested in compounds. They means not insects. Now, the researchers, Ross Piper and fellow zoologists. They are also interested in compounds which insects use to protect themselves from uh, pathogenic bacteria and fungi found in their dash. Now listen, uh, the clue word is pathogenic bacteria and fungi. Now path pathogenic uh, uh, bacteria and fungi is found in their. Their means related to insects in their dash. Same paragraph, we read the next line. There are even more insects. Found it? Yes. There are even more insects that are masters of exploiting filthy habitats such as fecus and carcasses where they are regularly challenged by thousands of microbe organisms. And then they talk about these insects have many antimicrobial compounds for dealing with this and that. Now what should be the answer? Come back, read the question. <coughs> they are also interested in compounds which insects use to protect themselves from pathogenic bacteria and fungi found in there. Where did they find it? Pieces. Okay, please read it again. <coughs> read it again. There are even more insects that are masters of exploiting filthy habitats such as faces and carcasses, where they are regularly challenged by thousands of microbe organisms. Now, these microbe organisms are mentioned here, like pathogenic bacteria and fungi. So, these are found in their habitat, absolutely. What is habitat? Habitat is a place to live for animals or insects and all that. And in the passage, they have used plural word. So you will write plural word, habitats. Let's go on. Piper hopes that, question number 26. Piper hopes that these substances will be used in the development of drugs such as, such as means answer is the name of a drug. In the development of drugs such as, okay, Third last line, paragraph G. These insects have many antimicrobial compounds for dealing with pathogenic bacteria and fungi. Now they mentioned that. Suggesting that there is certainly potential to find many compounds that can serve as or inspire new antibiotics. Now antibiotics is the drug and such as, yeah. For such as they use the word as. So, answer is antibiotics. Okay, guys. Now, we try and solve questions 21 and 22. We call it double multiple choice questions. In double multiple choice questions, sometimes there is a paragraph that contains both options. Uh, it is very essential to read the title of the question. Let's read that. Questions 21 and 22. Choose two letters A to E. 
Which two of the following make insects interesting for drug research? Now underline make insects interesting for drug research. So you will not read the options and you're going to scan the paragraph that contains information about insects uh, like uh, insects interesting to for drug research. Drug research and insects. Drug research and insects. We've already read about that. Paragraph G and then it may be paragraph H. Okay, insects interesting for drug research as they talked about their habitat and this and that and all that. Okay, now we will not read the options. First we come to paragraph G and then we'll come back. Over here you have to do one thing. You have to skim read paragraph G. So I give you 20 seconds to skim read paragraph G. And by the way you have read it already. Just quickly go through the points. And develop a habit of underlining important words, important ideas, important statements. Only paragraph G. Got it? Okay, now let's go through the options. Option A, huge number of individual insects in the world. And remember, in multiple choice, elimination is the best way. As you guys said, no, now your success rate is more than before. So, A is not the right answer. Option B, variety of substances insects have developed to protect themselves have you noticed that what is the word for protect themselves Potential. the creatures that particularly interest us are the many insects that secretes powerful poison for subduing prey when they subdue the prey and keep it fresh it means they are protecting no 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 protecting themselves will be somewhere else yeah third last line these insects have many antimicrobial compounds for dealing with Pathogenic bacteria and fungi suggesting, yeah. So, variety of substances insects have developed to protect themselves. And to protect themselves means dealing with pathogenic bacteria and fungi. So, the first correct answer is B. Okay, now let's go on. Probably we get the clue. Potential to extract and make use of insects. Genetic codes, underline genetic codes. Option D, similarities between different species of insects. Underline similarity, species of insects. Option E, manageable size of most insects. Size and all that. Now, if you haven't found any other clue, you found one answer, don't forcefully select another option. Now, please go through paragraph H. I want you to come to paragraph H. Look for DNA codes. <coughs> paragraph H although natural history knowledge points us in the right direction it doesn't solve the problem associated with obtaining useful compounds from insects <coughs> fortunately it is now possible to snip out the stretches of the insects DNA that carry the codes what is DNA code genetic codes absolutely so the potential to extract and make use of insects genetic code option C. So the second right answer is C. C. On your answer sheet, what will you do? 21 B, B and 22 C. C. Or even if you write it in reverse way, it's okay. No problem. But for one question, you will write one option only. Okay. All right. Okay, now we see how to deal with which paragraph contains the following information. Questions 14 to 20. Reading passage 2 has 9 paragraphs A to I. Which paragraph contains the following information? For these questions, you have to use your scanning techniques. And if instead of scanning, you start reading, these 7 questions will take 30 minutes. 
because for these questions you have to go through all the passage and if you scan only quickly and whenever you scan use your pencil to scan don't scan without pencil like you're looking and scanning no you got to move your pencil quickly here there sometimes you scan straight from left to right sometimes you scan from right to left sometimes you scan the whole paragraph in a wave like this you know you're looking for a word you scan the paragraph in a wave paragraph may just go up then come down and this and this and this and this is how you can scan let's see the question question number 14 mention of factors underline factors and there will be a couple of factors, two, three factors. Driving a renewed interest, underline renewed interest, in natural medicine compounds. So, renewed interest means once again people are taking interest in what? Natural medicinal compounds. Like people are taking interest once again in natural medicine, herbal medicine and all that. Now, I just give you the paragraphs, otherwise they will not give you any paragraph. A, B, C. Go through paragraph A, B, C <coughs> and see which paragraph contains this information. Huh? B, where is that? A, where is that? If you say A, where is that? Uh, okay, focus this word. Uh, one is factors, one is renewed interest, one is natural medicinal compounds. Natural medicinal compounds. All right, option B. All right, if I say it's paragraph C, how many of you agree? Come back to paragraph C, please. Third line, after full stop, with the ability to mine genomes for useful compounds, it is now evident that we have barely scratched the surface of nature's molecular diversity. This realization together with several looming health crises such as antibiotic resistance has put bio prospecting the search for useful compounds in nature firmly back on the map. Now what is back on the map? Renewed interest and natural medicinal compounds for that they use the word compounds in nature so for question number 14 answer is c question number 15 how recent technology very important word recent technology for recent technology they may use the word latest technology new technology new innovation new use of technology and all that <coughs> how recent technology uh, technological advances have made insect research easier now just focus new technology insect research easier new technology has made it easier have you noticed one thing listen listen use your past knowledge you know in one paragraph they talked about genes and dna and they said we can have everything about insects through their genes and through their DNA. Okay, which paragraph is that? H. H. And how? Listen carefully. Although natural history knowledge points us in the right direction, it doesn't solve the problem associated with obtaining useful compounds from insects. Fortunately, it is now possible. What is this? How recent technological advances... It is now possible to snip out the stretches of the insect's DNA that carry the codes. It is now possible means have made insect research easier. So for question number 15, answer is H. H. Practice will make you perfect. And if you, uh, if you find something difficult, do it again and again and again and you'll be fine. Question number 16. Examples of animals which use medicinal substances from nature. Listen, in one paragraph they will talk about two, three animals. 
monkeys do this donkeys do this elephants do this tigers do this examples of animals which use medicinal substances from nature paragraph a can you see fourth line such as capuchin monkeys who rub themselves with toxin ozing and then the second one is chimpanzees right so examples of animals and have you noticed another thing what is the word for examples such as, such as absolutely so in which paragraph contains the following if this is example look for such as if this is such as look for example instance and all that so for question number 16 answer is a question number 17 reasons why it is challenging to use insects in drug research look here whenever they say reasons look for the word why why main reason why why it is that why is this why is that f, f absolutely reasons why it is challenging to use insects in drug research paragraph f why is it that insects have received relatively little attention in bioprospecting? Firstly, now what is firstly? The first reason. Can you see then secondly? Underline secondly in the same paragraph. Underline thirdly in the same paragraph. So, what we learn from here, whenever they say reasons why, look for why. And look for firstly, secondly, thirdly, finally. So the right answer for question number 17 is F. F. Question number 18. Reference to how interest in drug research may benefit wildlife. Reference to how interest in drug research may benefit wildlife. Like if we have interest in uh, drug research, it can benefit wildlife. Wildlife means the animals that live in the wild. Now look for the word wildlife, <coughs> animals, species of animals. Absolutely. Last paragraph. And please, I is not written right I. In actual exam, it will not happen. Just write I. Okay, so wildlife. What is the word for wildlife? Good. If you start from third line, I sincerely believe that all species and species are species of animals, insects and all that. All species, however small and seemingly insignificant, have a right to exist for their own sake. If we can shine a light on the darker recess of nature's medicine cabinet, exploring the useful chemistry of the most diverse animals on the planet. So wildlife, animals, species and all that. See, sometimes one word is enough to scan and find all that. Question number 19, a reason. Now, a reason means single reason. A reason why nature-based medicines fell out of favor for a period. Go back to paragraph A, B, C. A reason why nature-based medicines fell out of favor for a period. For a period means 10 years, 20 years, century and all that. Fell out of favor means nobody paid attention to them. <coughs> Paragraph B, third line. Then for a while. For a while means period. This is how you find the answer. For a while means for a period. And now let's find the word for fell out of favor. Then for a while, modern pharmaceutical science moved its focus away from nature and into the laboratory. So... Reason why nature-based medicine fell out of favor. And what's the reason, by the way? What is the reason that they mention here? Yeah. The main cause of this shift is that. So it means they have given the reason. And by the way, I told you the difference between reason and reasons. When they have reasons, firstly, secondly, thirdly. When they have one reason, the main cause of this shift is that. All right. Now, which question is left? 20. 20. An example. How many examples? One. 
an example of an insect derived medicine in use at the moment at the moment means present insect that we derived from an insect so look for a paragraph with this all right paragraph e for elephant second line for example elpharon an antimicrobial compound produced by blowfly larvae blowfly larvae is that insect okay is used is used which tense present. present and what does it mean is used means use at the moment now for at the moment they have used the word is is used means used at the moment so question number 20 answer is e you know many of you what you guys are thinking you are thinking ek kalle bande da kam nahi hai they should be four five people one person cannot do it yeah want to read the questions want to scan the passage want to read the passage and want to tell you the answer okay <laughs> so you must be thinking a kalle bande da kam nahi hai they should be four five people to do it all okay no problem ielts is going to change your life yeah it's not that he got married he thought his life would change <laughs> yes his life changed but upside down okay yeah what he used to be is not that pehle apne ghar mein sher tha ab billi hai okay <laughs> exactly so you you should take ielts seriously it's going to change your life and once the life changes even those who are not married wife will change otherwise puppi di kudi mamu di kudi mamu da munda they are waiting absolutely they are waiting in the kujh nahi hona in ethe hi aana hai yeah mentally they are engaged with you you guys don't know many people are mentally engaged with you right and you are mentally engaged with someone right but actually if you do ielts then that engagement will be different How do you feel? You come back from Canada. Two chote chote angrees. Aapke daaye paaye. Okay, meet my wife Julie. Julie is Canadian, right? And then there are two small children. Yeah, angrees bache. So think like that. Yeah, you think local children. <laughs> local children. Abba, me no kulfi leke dio. So think about angrees children. They will say, Dad, I want to eat an ice cream. Say, okay, no problem, right? Uh, anyways, so let's go on. passage 3 power of play yeah instead of crying laugh rone ki bajaye hanse the power of play now what does it mean play play means now we don't know this play is tv play or this play is playing a game and when you read the first line virtually every child the world over plays every child plays it means they are going to talk to us about children who play right so the power of play uh, have you ever played when you were small you know children play in the streets children play like with dolls right one of my friends he used to play with dolls so like that the power of play questions 27 to 31 <laughs> list of researchers and you have to match them with questions and list has more options and questions are fewer than the options okay no problem questions 32 to 36 yes no not given and questions 37 to 40 complete the summary so where should we start from absolutely never follow the order in which the questions are given you follow your own order that i understand summary completion i will start from there secondly yes no not given and finally kismat mein hua to otherwise you know time finishes and then you can guess right but you need to make sure at least you get 7 8 9 correct answers okay and don't worry in academic reading you only need 30 correct answers for 7 band and those who are looking for 6 band they only need 23 correct answers Yeah, with seventeen mistakes, you can get six band score and go to Canada or Australia, right? So don't worry about it. Don't think I need to get forty by forty. आपको कौन सा nine band चाहिए ये? आपको something like that, okay? Okay, questions thirty-seven to forty. Guided play. 
choose one word only underline the word guided play now let's look for guided play in the passage guided play <clears throat> oh one paragraph and that contains how many answers four. four answers one or two paragraphs okay and that paragraph contains all four answers isn't it good yes. yeah all right now by the way when you do sentence completion yes no not given practice so well that you don't have mistakes here you cannot afford to have mistakes here right guided play in the simplest form of guided play an adult contributes to the environment in which the child is playing okay alternatively an adult can play with the child and develop the play for instance underline for instance by dash the child to investigate different aspects of their game for example by now by is important word and by the way listen after by we mostly use ing form of the verb by helping by creating by going by coming by giving by providing now let's go back we focus the word by exactly guided place takes two forms it is a very basic level i'm reading second last paragraph uh okay it's uh, at a very basic level adults can enrich the child's environment by providing objects this is not the answer listen listen they have already said child's environment this is before that go back to the question don't write wrong answer in excitement they say yeah they said adult can play with a child and develop the play now this is something else let's go on so we read on by providing objects or experiences that promote aspects of a curriculum in the more direct form of guided play parents or other adults can support children's play by joining in the fun by joining in the fun let's go on as a co-player now do they talk about co-player they say and develop the play for instance by dash the child to investigate different aspects focus investigate different aspects let's read on uh, okay as co player raising thoughtful questions commenting on children's discoveries or encouraging further exploration encouraging further exploration or new facets to the child's activity now what is the word for further investigation exploration. further exploration that is to investigate different aspects so what will be the answer encouraging. no encouraging and i'm sorry they didn't use the word by okay that was misleading or encouraging now you just have to see what is written after the blank right and answer will have synonyms of that after the blank now for example they use uh, dash the child to investigate different aspects of their game so they use the word or encouraging further exploration or new facets to the child's activity child's activity means child's activity means game exactly so answer is encouraging by the way you are doing reading part 3 and you say part 1 kid as ansi ha all right let's go on adults can help i'm reading question number 38 adults and you will always read the question from the last full stop adults can help children to learn through play and may make the activity rather structured but it should still be based on the child's dash to play something related to child right it should be based based means stem base and stem child's dash to play child's dash for apostrophe s sometimes they use of okay let's go on all right it's the same paragraph although playful learning can be somewhat structured it must also be child centered play should stem from the child's own desire now what happens if you write own desire because it's one word only and some will write own as the right answer okay this is very common answer is desire 
Now, question number 39 and 40, they are a separate paragraph. Play without the intervention of adults gives children real, underline the word real, and for real they use the word true. Real happiness, true happiness. Let's go back. Next paragraph. Both free and guided play are essential elements in child-centered approach to playful learning. Intrinsically motivated free play provides the child with true autonomy. True autonomy means real autonomy. Exactly. Some will write true. Gives children real true. It doesn't make any sense. And remember, in fill in the blanks, wrong words will never make any sense. But you will be fine. Say, okay, it's nonsense, but it's okay. I found the answer. Answer is autonomy with adults. Okay, play can be dash at particular goals. Always remember, after can be, we use third form of the verb. So answer is going to be past form of the verb. Play can be dash at particular goals. Targeted. Well done. After true autonomy, while guided play is an avenue through which parents and educators can provide more targeted learning experiences. Now they have given three words. Targeted, learning, experiences. So some will write can be learning, can be experiences. But actually it is targeted. All right, for particular goals, they've used the word learning experiences. So is it okay? Yes. All right. Okay, guys, now we have yes, no, not given. And by the way, I tell you, usually when you reach part three, you are running out of time. And they announce candidates five minutes left. Don't forget to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. In that case, if you come across yes, no, not given, and there are four or five questions, don't say question number 32. Uh, yes. 33. Uh, no. All right. 34. Uh, not given. Why not given? Because I already used yes and no. Never guess like this. If you want to guess all yes or all true and otherwise all false because the ratio of not given is less than yes no or true false now i tell you if you write all the answers as yes 32 to 36 your two answers will be right out of five minute karke aapke ek bhi okay when you reach here i'm sorry okay so, sorry about that, okay? Yeah. So, if you write all yes, two answers are correct. If you write all no, still two answers are correct. And if you write all not given, one answer will be correct. Okay? So, in a hurry, you can write all yes, 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 yes. Jithe lag da lalo sahiye. And I'll get the band score. Anyways. Now, children need toys in order to play. Look at me. Look at me. If children need toys to play answer is yes and if children can play without toys you know sometimes they play with a bottle or there is just a wrapper and they start playing with the wrapper so if children don't need toys to play answer is no and if they don't tell us whether children need toys or not answer is not given what's the clue word not the why toys english you know canada yeah toys Children need toys in order to play. Where is it? Wow. First paragraph. Second line. Okay. So, first paragraph, second sentence. The drive to play is so intense that children will do so in any circumstances. For instance, when they have no real toys. So, children need toys to play? No. Answer is no. Absolutely. Question number 32, answer is no. no. Yeah? There's another technique. Do tin te anna karlo, baki sare yes or baki sare no. <laughs> All right. Question number 33. It is a mistake, underline mistake. It is a mistake to treat play and learning. Now, underline treat play and learning as separate types of activities. Now, look here. If we say play and learning, they are separate type of activities, it's a mistake. Now, if it is a mistake 
to uh, to treat play and learning separate it's true it's yes actually and if uh, if treating play and learning separate is not a mistake it is actually the right thing then it is no <coughs> and if they don't tell us anything about it then it is not given now you know what are they doing at school kindergarten they teach children by the games did they make them play and they learn okay so let's go on it's the third paragraph second paragraph where it's the second paragraph okay mistake they use the word false right okay now let's read this carefully before we decide yes no or not given everyone please come to second paragraph and we read it from third last line I, i'm looking for this yeah let's read it from third line after full stop after 2008 under pressure of rising academic standards found it yes. play is being replaced by test preparation in kindergartens and grade schools and parents who aim to give their preschoolers a leg up are led to believe that flash cards and educational toys are the path to success educational toys flash cards and educational toys let's read on our society has created a false dichotomy between play and learning our society has created a false dichotomy it is a mistake our society has created a false to treat play and learning as separate types of activities false dichotomy between play and learning so it's a mistake to treat play and learning as a separate types of activities answer is yes, yes absolutely question number 34 play helps children to develop their artistic talents underline the word artistic talents and all that third paragraph third paragraph they don't have the word artistic talent but let's see play helps children to develop their artistic talents so third paragraph through play yeah through play is actually the clue word here for through play they use the word play helps children children learn to regulate their behavior lay the foundations for later learning in science and mathematics figure out the complex negotiations of social relationships build a repertoire of creative problem solving skills and so much more have they mentioned play helps children to develop artistic talents no, no. artistic talents they have not said anything about it that play helps children to develop their artistic talent that is why answer is not given question number 35 <clears throat> researchers have agreed on a definition of and you know it if researchers have agreed on one universal definition of play answer is yes if they have different definitions and they don't agree according to some researchers play is this and others play is that then it is no and if they don't tell us whether they agree or they disagree then it is not given so it's the fourth paragraph <clears throat> full consensus on a formal definition of play continues to elude the researchers and theorists who study it definitions range from discrete descriptions of variation types of play now what's the question researchers have agreed definitions range from it means they don't agree answer is no try to understand researchers have agreed in the passage they say definitions range from this and that it means researchers don't agree on one single definition of play question number 36 work and play differ in terms of whether or not they have a target so work and play differ if they differ in terms of whether or not they have a target <clears throat> All right please come to fourth last paragraph <clears throat> work and play differ in terms of whether or not they have a target 
All right. From the perspective of a continuum, play can thus blend with other motives and attitudes that are less playful, such as work. Unlike play, work is typically not viewed as enjoyable and it is extrinsically motivated. That is, it is goal oriented. Now come back. Work is goal oriented. Goal oriented means it has a target. Work has a target and play is not goal oriented. So work and play differ in terms of whether or not they have a target. Yes, because work is goal oriented and play is not goal oriented. So work and play differ in terms of and for goal oriented, they have used the word target 36 answer is yes. Now, let's go on. We've got questions 27 to 31. Just look for, and you are already familiar with the passage now. So, number of separate categories means play has got various types. Play can be divided into a number of, and then there is bracket Miller and Alman. Right? So, Miller and Alman. Which option is that? Option B. Question number 27. Answer is? B. And by the way, one option can be yours. Affect how they play with children. Adults intended goals. Intended goals mean what they have in their mind. The targets that they have. Option G. And what's the, where is the location? Here. Paragraph. Approach. In interactions known as guided play. That is said by Fisher. But read on. The adults' role in play varies as a function of their educational, educational goals. Question number 28. Answer is G. Hirsch, Pasek et al. Now, come to question number 29. Play. Which paragraph is it? Fourth last paragraph. Fourth last paragraph work with play can you see in the third last line okay let's read fourth last paragraph fourth last line for example Mil gaya sabko? for example child may be engaged in a difficult goal directed activity set up by their teacher but they may still be actively engaged and intrinsically motivated at this midpoint between play coupled with guidance from an adult can create robust opportunities for playful learning playful learning means uh, it's basically learning and playing together what is the word for combining work with play playful learning may be the best way for children to learn and that is said by John Question number 30. Certain elements of play are more significant than others. Certain elements of play are more significant than others. Certain elements of play are more significant than others. <coughs> All right. Second paragraph on second page and we read it from second line. Robin and colleagues did not assign greater weight to any mention in determining playfulness. However, other researchers have suggested that. Now read this carefully. Process orientation and a lack of obvious important aspects of play. Yeah may be the most important aspects of play. What does it mean? Certain elements of play are more significant than others. So what is the word for certain elements? Lack of obvious functional purpose. And before that, they said process orientation. Now process orientation and lack of obvious functional purpose, they are certain elements of play. And for more significant, what is the word? Most For question number 30, answer is E. Pellegrini. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी वन एक्टिविटीज कैन बी क्लासिफाइड ऑन अ स्केल ऑफ प्लेफुलनेस स्केल ऑफ प्लेफुलनेस एक्टिविटीज कैन बी क्लासिफाइड एक्टिविटीज कैन बी क्लास स्केल ऑफ प्लेफुलनेस ऑल राइट येस इट इज सी टाइटल पेज सेकेंड लास्ट पैराग्राफ title page last line often play is defined found it okay often play is defined along a continuum as more or less playful using the following behavioral and dispositional criteria more or less playful now more or less playful means scale of playfulness you know you say on the scale of 1 to 10 so robin et al and robin et al is option c question number 31 answer is c yes page number 91 unit number 8 I tell you uh, for essay writing and for report writing this book is ideal right i mean this will give you a very good start and then you can move on so comparative narrative graph is a graph where there is comparison what is comparison your shoes are better than my shoes ha huh? the color of your jacket is better than the color of my jacket your hair style is better than me or my hair style is better than you okay so this is what we call comparison in comparison and you have to compare right let's just take a start page number 91 uh task 1 writing how to write about comparative graphs in this unit it how to write about a graph or table without a trend there is a graph with a trend i'll teach you that later information given in this type of chart does not change over time they will only give you one year data down there'll be the information you just have to compare let's take a look at this example the graph shows data about the average saturday sales of two bakeries in london in and that is a graph with a trend but they only said average saturday sales of two bakeries in london in 2010 so it's a comparative graph features and make comparisons where relevant now let's take a look uh, you can enlarge this uh, uh, bar chart you can see we've got lovely loaves and bernies buns and the items are what are the items down there cakes cookies rolls exact donuts are number 1 so it means when you start the body of your report first you will talk about donuts in comparative graph from the highest the second highest or the most popular second most popular third most popular and if the data is very large then you can pick up few things from there if the data is small like this one so then you can define all of it is that clear after donut number 2 cookies okay and then you can talk about crisps <coughs> clear uh now please look here whenever you write one is called introduction and there is a very simple way to write introduction which i'm going to tell you right now part 2 is called overview overview body of the report introduction overview and body of the report now what is introduction very simple the sentence which they have given you here the graph shows data and 10 you have to reword and rearrange this sentence understand reword so that examiner knows it's not the 
starting from the question paper, it will be out of the word count. If you copy any sentence from the question paper, exactly, that will be out of the word count. Same rule, get out. Okay, yeah, so don't copy. Rearrange so that examiner should not see it's the same thing. And reword. For example, they use the word graph. It's the bar chart. Then they use the word data. You can use the word information or details. They said average Saturday sales. Now, you cannot reword Saturday. Okay, that is, I'll write Sunday. Saturday cannot be reworded. And then sales of two bakeries. Bakeries cannot be. London cannot be reworded. I will write Lahore because this is my city, right? So never reword the proper nouns like that uh, in 2010, okay? This is what I already explained. Write an introduction to the topic of the graph in your own words. Second bullet point. Give an overview of the main ideas in the through it, by the way, a detailed report we are going to study. Then describe the most important details, including numbers, paragraph three and four. And remember, when you write overview, conclusion, when you write overview of the report. Okay? Now, take a look at this, and uh, you can come to page. Uh, I will just tell you there are few sentences which you can use in your report which you can copy from here as well so model answer page number 96 page 96 and uh, instead of holding your mobile like this hold it so that you could read it easily <coughs> we've got this book available if anybody wants to get yasin is there uh, model answer, comparative graph. So, this bar graph compares. Whenever you get bar graph and it's a comparative graph, you can copy this. This bar graph compares. This line graph compares. You can copy it because it's comparison. Or you can, instead of writing compares, you can say comparison gives a detailed comparison play with the words try to write a variety okay uh, compares the items sold by two bakeries <coughs> uh, in london on a typical saturday in 2010 so this is rewording of the sentence which they gave over there now you're going to give a little reference of the items like on x-axis and y-axis, you will give a little reference to that. The graph shows average sales of eight items, right? Now, instead of writing all eight items, never do that, right? The graph shows average sales of eight items, comma, including lovely loaves. This is the first paragraph. Is that clear? First sentence is rewording. Second is what you see on x-axis and on, on y-axis. Right, you can just write that. Okay, now to write overview, always remember this sentence. Overall, it can be seen that. And there is another one. What stands out from the graph is that. Because when you're writing, it means what is it that you're taking out of that graph? Right? So, what stands out from the graph is that, or overall, it can be seen that. Bernie's Buns is generally the busiest bakery. Now you can go bakery. So you've written, it's the busiest bakery. And one thing, let me tell you interesting point. There is no number in overview. You can only use the year if you want to. Do not use any number. Do not use any value. Do not use any statistic. Because in overview, you just tell overall. You don't use any specific information there. So. Uh, lovely loaves in six out of eight items, full stop, on the whole, savory foods. Now you will talk about foods which are more popular. First you talked about bakery, such as toasted sandwiches, salads and rolls are not as popular 
as sweet items like cakes and cookies. So first, which bakery is more popular? Second, which item is more popular? This is what we call overview and now you will not write any conclusion. After this, you will start with number one item, number two item and vocabulary, grammar, which you need to write such type of sentences, number one. Number two, in our class WhatsApp group, I have shared a handout that contains the vocabulary. There is a specific vocabulary. I've already shared the handout so you can find all the things, all the sentences, phrases, words from there. Anyways, uh, in terms of Agnes buns, donuts come top of the list. Now you will talk about both bakeries separately. Okay, you will not just mix up or mingle all the things. Talk about first bakery, number one item, number two item, number three item, then talk about second bakery. And the first bakery should be that has got the highest sales, right? With an average of around 155 sold on a Saturday. Focus the language, right? And by the way, marking criteria for task one is also same. Four parameters, they're the same. Uh, okay, next they say cookies and cakes are the next best seller. Now, if you're only right, number one item is donuts, number two item is this, number three item is that, number four item is that, foolish talk. Then write next paragraph, number one item, number two. You need to be wordy. Wordy means how to present these trends. Sentences, that's what you got to do. So, uh, 115 and 100 of these snacks, now, the word snacks refers the same items like cookies, sandwiches, and popular Bernie's buns sell slightly more rolls than crisps with roughly 75 of each leaving the shelves. Now, leaving the shelf means and toasted sandwiches and salads are not nearly as popular with just 25 and 18. And then you talk about the next bakery, their number one item, number two, and again, you will use same phrases. Is that all clear? And it needs practice. Now, let me tell you about a good resource which I've already shared with you. In your class WhatsApp group, we have this book, IELTS Journal, uh, Academic Training Module. Uh, and you can see they have given some uh, charts there, IELTS Journal. So this book is ID of graphic any type or every type of graphic, right? So you should use this book actually. It's the same IELTS journal. I mean, all the books have the same title. In this book, you will find every type of graphic information, but you need to start with this book. This book will develop your understanding and type, because uh, for report writing, we have four types. Number one, graph with a trend. Number two, comparative graph. And by the way, graph with a trend, it can be line graph, it can be bar chart. Information and the method is same. Second is comparative graph. Third is process diagram. And fourth is map. They may give you a map also. And you never know, but the more first and second. Graph with a trend and comparative graph. Okay, now we are going to go through a comparative graph. Now, what is a comparative graph? A graph that compares. There is one that we call shows the trends, upward trends, downward trends. That is a graph with a trend. But comparative graph is different. In comparative graph, they will give you comparison. Comparison of uh, the sales of the... Uh, I'm reading it from here. The graph shows data about the average Saturday sales of two bakeries in London in 2010. Always remember in comparative graph, data will not move. Move means in a graph with a trend, prices from 2000 upward, downward trends and all that. But when they give you a comparative graph, in comparative graph, we will not have any data that is fluctuating, going up, coming down only. And by the way, the year will also be given like one year. For example, 2010. In a graph with a trend, there will be time period. 
2010 to 2000 uh, comparative graph then there isn't anything that is increasing or decreasing it's like that now let's take a look at this please uh, the graph shows data about the average Saturday sales of 2020 still it's a comparative one unless they write 2010 to 2020 do you understand the difference time period like if I say 2010 as one unit and 2020 as another unit but when I say from 2010 to time period whenever there is the time period we've got the graph with a trend okay so let's see uh, summarize the information by selecting and reporting now you can see here lovely loaves and one bar is for Bernie Bun. In actual uh, IELTS test, they will give you all these charts in color. So you can easily read, easily identify and all that. A look at this on Y axis, you can see we've got number from 0 to 160. Can you see that? 0 to 160 and that is average number of ice cookies, rolls, fresh loaves, uh, toasted sandwiches, salads, crisps and then we have donuts. By the way, which item has got number one sales? Donuts. donuts. Exactly. So, donuts are top of the list. After donuts, cookies. cookies. After are more common or more popular than the other items, right? And the items like uh, uh, fresh loaves, toasted sandwiches, salads, uh, less sale. Okay, now we go through these bullet points. Uh, first of all, you need to write an introduction to the topic of the graph in your own words. Now listen, write an introduction, there should be two sentences. Sentence number one, you will reword this. The question rubric, we call it question rubric. You will reverse uh, of two bakeries in London. So you can just reword it. Uh, when we reword it, we use another term, reword and rearrange. Which means you can talk about bakeries first and sales later like that. This is first sentence. Second sentence is what is given on X axis and Y axis. Let's see, I just... Uh, take you to page number 96 please page number 96 page number 96 and first paragraph there this bar graph compares don't forget this word compares so that you tell the examiner I understand it's a comparative graph the most popular items sold by two bakeries in London on a typical Saturday in 2010. So, this first sentence is rewording of question rubric. Are given on x axis. Can you see that? Yeah, eight items like bread and loaves and donuts and all that. Including cakes, rolls and toasted sandwiches. Now, it is not necessary that you write all eight items one by one. Just give a reference of a couple of items. Uh, sandwiches in Bernie's buns and lovely loaves. These are the names of the bakeries. Is that clear? So, this is what we call uh, introduction. Now, please come back to... Take a look at the graph. Uh, the bullet point. So, the second bullet point is give an overview of the main ideas in the graph. This is the main ideas. What are the main ideas? Main ideas are first you are going to say which bakery has more sales. First you will tell them. mean the bakery that is selling more items so in your overview you will talk about that if you come back to page 96 please overall it can be seen that now you can underline this sentence and copy it whenever you write your overview overall it can be seen that 
Bernie's Buns is generally the busiest bakery, outselling lovely loaves in 6 out of 8 items. Is that clear? The outselling means they are selling more in 6 out of 8 items. So, this is what we are writing. You, you do not need to write conclusion. Overview is sort of a conclusion. Second sentence, on the whole, savory food such as toasted sandwich as sweet items like cakes and cookies. Rather, you should give the uh, reference of uh, donuts, cakes and cookies because uh, donuts are the one. So, sweet items are more popular than the savory food. This is the second sentence and we call it overview. Clear? Now, after this, you will write body bakery, which is the most important one. I mean, the bakery that, that's got highest sales. In donuts, you can see one bakery is getting selling less donuts than so the bakery that is selling more, we will write about that. Let's come back to page 96. In terms of sales. Now, we are going to write about Bernie's buns first. Donuts come top of the list. So, first we will talk about donuts. Donuts come top of with an average of around 135 sold on a Saturday. Now, you can see, go back and see around 135 on a typical Saturday. Next after this, uh, cookies and cakes are the next best seller. These phrases cookies and cakes and then next best seller with around 115 and 100 of these snacks sold respectively. And then you will talk about the next item, next item. So, one full paragraph will be written about one bakery. Then they say respectively savory foods are less popular. Bernie's buns sell slightly more rolls than crisps with roughly 75 and all that. Last paragraph. Donuts are also the number one purchase in Lovely Loaves. Now, you can see Lovely Loaves is the second bakery and Donut is the number one item. With just over 120 sold on a Saturday. Now, you can take a look and see just over. Just over means a little more than 120. On a Saturday, uh, cookie. you can see they have cookies number 2 is that cookies or cakes cookies exactly that's right so cookies are second at around 65 sales salads come next with just over 60 three times as many as are sold in bernie's buns three times as many by the way i'll just tell you the page numbers from 91 to 100, yeah, pages 90, then you will be 100 percent clear about the language, sentences, structure, everything. They will teach you everything on these pages, okay. So, 91 to 103, right. All right. So, coming back to that, we got the last few lines. As many sold in Bernie's buns, rolls and fresh loaves are joint fifth. Joint fifth means they are at number five. Uh, with 50 sales a piece sold by crisps at approximately 45. Least popular item in the end. Least popular item in lovely loaves is toasted sandwiches with around 25 sales. Is that clear? Now, there are four paragraphs. Number one, introduction. Number two, overview. Number three, you will talk about, if for example, if there are three bakeries or if there are three items, you can write three items, you will not write six paragraphs. You will just join two or three items together in one paragraph. I mean, try not to write more than four paragraphs. Now, if you got more references, for example, if the data is really large, it is not necessary to cover all the data. You can just pick up some points that, okay, this is the highest, this is the second highest, this is the data, uh, and sometimes the data is really very short or to the point. Then you can elaborate everything. Like over here, we elaborated everything. We left nothing.
So for report writing, this book is wonderful. After this book, we've got the book uh, IELTS, IELTS Journal. You can use these two books together. They are more than enough for writing. And by the way, if you are academic IELTS candidate and you need seven or above in writing, then you must pay attention to good report writing as well because report School, right? Uh, okay, guys, uh, we will talk about academic writing task one. Academic writing task one is report writing. And basically, there are five writing. I told you there are five type of essays. When it comes to report writing, there are four categories. The first one is a graph with a trend. I'll teach you that as well. The second one is a and the third one is process diagram and the fourth one is maps okay so there are just four types there isn't any fifth type and all that today we are going to discuss processes in our class whatsapp group i will share a link where you can learn all these things by the way it starts from unit number seven then unit number eight then unit number nine so in three units we have all four things. Unit number seven, eight, and nine. You should do that also. Unit number seven starts from page number 79. And then it goes on. And I will send you the videos on that in our class WhatsApp group. Okay, now let's talk about process. Uh, as far as the process is concerned, I'm going to read it from top. This is the page and I'm going to read it from top. Majority of task one questions in the IELTS exams are either a graph with a trend or a graph with comparatives. However, there are two other possible types of questions. Describe a process, for example, how to produce chocolate and there can be a map. Now please come here, this one, processes. If you have a describing a process task in the exam, you will be given a diagram with a series of pictures, right? A diagram and there'll be a series. Series means the first step, the second, the third, the fourth and all that. The diagram shows the stages of how something is made or how something works, very important. There can be a manufacturing diagram, how something is made and there can be a diagram, how something works. Now, how something works means how rainwater is purified. Uh, how a boiler or a piece of machinery works actually. It can be anything like that. Typical diagrams are how chocolate is produced, how coffee is grown and produced, the life cycle of an animal or insect or anything like that. Once there was a diagram, how the water is evaporated from the sea, it turns into clouds and then it rains and how it comes back. So there can be a cycle or processes and all that. Okay, now let's go through these bullet points. Uh, the first bullet point is write an introduction which describes the process in your own words and many stages there are. In a minute, we are going to see everything. Let me define it first, then we'll see it. So introduction which describes the processes in your own words and mentions how many stages. How many means number of stages. Like you can see there is a diagram on the same page. How many stages are there? 18, 18 stages, exactly. Second bullet point, write two paragraphs in parts. Now if I ask you to divide this diagram into two clear parts, where will you divide it from? Yeah, maybe one to eight, one part, how tea is manufactured and it reaches the market and then from nine onwards, that is how to make tea. Divide it there. And where you divide it, you will, you will write two paragraphs. The first paragraph from process one to eight and second body paragraph from process nine to 18. Okay, use mostly Look here, whenever they give you a diagram, process diagram in academic writing task one, you should use only present simple tense, active voice and passive voice. Now what is active voice? When I say you make a cup of tea, 
you are making cup of tea and you are active when the subject is active we call it active voice and if i say a cup of tea is made cup of tea is made in this sentence is cup of tea doing anything no cup of tea is made english is spoken i speak english active voice passive voice right so when there is a diagram you will use active voice and passive voice and i'll tell you when, when these two, two things come uh, use a range of words very important have you noticed 18 stages and for all these stages you will say first of all stage number one after that stage number two. now if you only know after that after that after that and you use after that 17 times in your report you will get low band score so you know to use a variety of linking words and all those linking words are clearly given in unit number nine you just have to study this unit and you will find all those linking words okay 50 words okay now let's take a look at this diagram here i'm going to read it for you <clears throat> the pictures below show how tea is produced Uh, in the exam, this statement will be written as it is. The pictures below show how tea is produced. They also illustrate the process of making a cup of tea. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features. Now, let's just go through it. I'll come to you. Uh, you, you just can see. Number one. What is number one? Tea grows in India and China. Now, you have to convert it into a fine sentence. Number two, sow tea seeds. Who? Farmer. Understood. Farmer sows tea seeds. Number three, sunshine and the plant grows or the plants grow. Number four, the tea leaves into the basket. Number five, dry exactly they spread the leaves out in the sun to dry number six pack in the boxes number seven load is just like a van delivery van so they load those boxes there number eight deliver tea boxes and where supermarket exactly number nine tea from there number ten Yes, customers take the tea home. Number 11, no, they pour some water in the kettle. I mean, the tea making process starts in number 11. They pour some water or you can use passive voice. Water is poured into the kettle. In order to avoid you or they or whatever, water is poured into the kettle. Boils the water. Number 13, tea bag is added into the cup. Very good. Not water, hot water. Hot water is poured into the cup from the kettle. Number 15, two minutes. So that tea bag and hot water, they are left for two minutes. Then add milk. So you can use passive voice. At this stage, milk and sugar can be added according to the taste and finally whose picture is this number oh you no you aisha you <laughs> all right <laughs> all right you can take a look number 18 is drink and enjoy a fine cup of tea all right <laughs> so uh, that's it now please come to page number 104 on this page, they will teach you spotlight one using the present simple passive to describe a process. So you have to go through it. There are exercises one, two, three, four. Answers are given at the end of the book. Then please come to page 105. Linking stages together. On this page, they will teach you ideas and what words you have to use. Page 106 giving extra information about a stage now what are the stages how tea is made and all that and then page number 107 we have model answer now please come to page 107 and at the same time you can do like this 
you will take a look at 107 and you will go back 103 as well 107 103 so let's start in introduction the first paragraph there will be only two sentences the first sentence is these pictures illustrate how tea is produced comma and how a cup of tea is made it's a compound sentence clear it's just a reference written on the diagram there are 18 stages in the diagram then you will talk about number of stages from after from the first stage sewing the tea sewing, and then the last stage so from stage number one to the last stage and that is second sentence of your report is that clear Okay, now we move on the body of the report. The first step is, now you need to learn these type of connecting words. The first step is that the tea seeds are sown and then the sun shines which causes the seeds to grow into plants. By the way, in this one compound sentence, how many stages have they covered? Three. The first step is that the tea seeds are sown and then the sun shines which causes the plants to grow so the first is tea grows in india china then two is sow tea seeds and three is sun shines so the first three stages have been covered in one sentence next once the plants have grown now this is what we call present perfect tense right once the plants have grown are uh, those ladies who teach cooking they use this thing once the eggs are boiled or once the eggs have boiled then you can do this once this is done so once the plants have grown sufficiently the leaves are then picked by the farmer and put into baskets now how many stages have been covered no two stages what two stages yeah pick yeah so you can see that is stage number, uh, yeah. They said here, once the plants have grown sufficiently, the leaves are then picked. So leaves are picked, that is stage number four, by the farmer and put into baskets. That's the same thing actually. All right. Uh, after the picking stage, the tea leaves are spread out into the sun to be dried. Now that's the next one. They are there to be dried. The tea leaves are packed into boxes and then they are loaded onto lorries which take the box of, boxes of tea to the supermarket. Now how many stages? Yes, yeah, six, seven and eight. And these are all compound sentences. In order to make a cup of tea, now we reach this stage number nine after this delivery. In order to make a cup of tea, you fill the kettle with water and put it on the stove to boil. Which one is it? 11 and 12. Both of them. Stove to boil. Meanwhile, you put a tea bag in a cup. Can you see that? That's stage number 13. And once the kettle has boiled, the water is poured into the cup. That is stage number 14. Having been left in the cup for two minutes, which one is that? 15. Having been left, present perfect. The tea bag is then removed and the tea is now ready to drink. Ready to drink is at number 15. Now let's see what do they say after that. At this point, milk and sugar can be added and that is stage number 16 and 17. By the way, ready to drink is not appropriate there. Because you didn't add sugar and all that. Uh, milk and sugar can be added. The final step is that you drink a nice cup of hot tea. Is that clear? Next we have uh, on page 107, there is a process diagram on how to make tomato ketchup. Can you see that? So your home assignment is you have to make tomato ketchup not a report don't write report you have to make tomato ketchup at home and then you have to bring it for me with french fries or burger or pizza or anything okay understand 
<laughs> okay, that's all. Uh, okay, guys. Whenever we talk about academic writing task one, there are four options. Four. I mean, you don't have any option, but actually there are four categories. The first one is the first one is graph with a trend. Second one is comparative graph. Third one is process diagram. Fourth one is map. So we will do all four, okay? Now today we are going to discuss maps. Remember, when you were small, you used to play a game spot the difference. You know, two identical pictures. Do the swimming exercise spot the difference. Over here, hat is red. Their hat is green, right? Over here, this and that and all that. In the same way, they will give you two maps of a city or town or a small place. and all you need to do you need to spot those differences and then you will write about those differences you will write a report on that okay uh these two maps can be one in the past and one in present right second it can be both maps from the past this is very very important if they give you one map 2001 second 2010 so now both are past so you will use past tense for both If there is one map that is like 2010 and today for present, they will not use the word 2021. They will use today, or they will say now, 2010 and now, 2015 and now. It's just like that. Okay, now I'm going to read it from here. Please follow me. This type of question often shows you a plan of a city in two time periods. right and uh, you have to describe the main changes between the two periods the most common time periods are between a time in the past and now two times in the past for example 2000 and 2010 is that clear yeah all right now next is the plan we will go through these four bullet points the first one is brief introduction to the maps in your own words in a minute i will show you how to do that we will go into the detail of it brief introduction to the maps in your own words next short overview to describe what has happened to the town in general this is called overview first paragraph introduction second paragraph overview next two paragraphs to describe some of the main changes This is what we call body of the report. So, in total, how many paragraphs? Four paragraphs: introduction, overview, and two paragraphs in body. Minimum one fifty words and all that. Now, let's take a look at this map here. <clears throat> the maps below show changes in the Spanish city of Castellon in recent times. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features, and make comparisons where relevant. Now, please take a look. Castellon, two thousand. See, they didn't have any modern facilities and all that. And then Castellon today. In today, we have a hall of residence, police station, new shops. new train station even airport under construction new shopping center cinema bars and all that uh when they give you maps in actual exam they will also give you directions east west north south so you can easily write north corner or north west corner in the downtown in the middle east side west side and all that so they will always give you directions so that you can just do that uh, you can link this with the map in ielts listening okay the language you can use like that all right now please come to page number 112 and now you will move between page number 112 and page number 108 first we are going to see how to write the introduction the two maps show the main changes which have taken place in the town of castellon between the year 2000 and today that's it please come back to the map and they have written the maps below show changes in the spanish city of castellon in recent times so all you need to do you need to reword or paraphrase this sentence paraphrase means write it or rewrite it in your own words and that will become your 
uh, first introduction sentence. Is this clear? Right? Uh, now, let's go on. In general, it appears that, underline this phrase, in general, it appears that you can use it in any overview. In general, it appears that Castellon has become a much more modern city, present perfect, because they said now, for now you will use present perfect, for now you will not use present simple tense, you will use present perfect because changes have taken place, that is why. So Castellon has become a much more modern city with far more shopping and transport facilities. For shopping, they have shopping malls and supermarket. And for transport facilities, they have uh, tram line, bike rental scheme, airport under construction and all that. You can add one more thing here. Please add it. With far more shopping, comma, transport and entertainment facilities. You know, clubs and bars and all that. So you can use entertainment facilities. Is this clear? Right? So this paragraph is called overview. First introduction, second overview. And you will follow this pattern for any map type of question. Now we have actually the details. So one interesting change is that, underline one interesting change is that, you can copy it in any map type of uh, report. One interesting change is that, a new tram line has been built. Now please take a look, go back to the map and tram line has been built to connect the university with the town center. Look at university, look at town center. Can you see tram line? Yes. So they have started from there. And by the way, you may take a start from anywhere, but try to talk about some prominent change. Okay. All right. In 2000, now focus tenses. Focus the tenses. In 2000, there wasn't any accommodation, past tense. Right? There wasn't any accommodation. By the way, wasn't is a contraction and contractions should be avoided. So you should write there was no accommodation. Instead of any, just write there was no accommodation for students. But a hall of residence has been built. Hall of Residence. Yesterday we were talking about it. Hall of Residence. A place to live. In uh, listening, exactly. That's right. Hall of Residence has been built. Has been built is passive voice of present perfect. So for maps, you should know past tense and present perfect tense passive voice. What is passive voice? Has been built. Banaya gaya hai. Right? It's like that. Okay, another striking change is that, underline this also, you will use it. Now tomorrow when you are writing your report, you will use these phrases. Another striking change is that, now after this, if you write a broken sentence, this sentence will be gale padega. You know what I mean? The examiner will say, okay, yes, has written it, it has written it, it has written it, it has written it. But after that, if you write a grammatically correct sentence, it will become value. Ban okay? So, another striking change is that, the old market in the west of the city has been knocked down to make way for new shops. Now go back and see old market knocked down to make way for new shops. Can you see that? Now you will say map me to kahai ni dukane girani. Girai ni to nahi bani hai na? Ya uske upari to nahi bana diya. So it's that. Has been knocked down. Which tense? Present puff not continuous only present perfect with present perfect continuous we use ing okay so has been knocked down and this is passive voice okay a completely new covered market has also been built why completely new because there wasn't anything there exactly so you will use phrases like that a completely new covered market has been built on the other side of town. Now they did not mention east, west, north, south. Otherwise you will write on the south side, west side, north side and all that. Okay, so you will divide the whole map into two parts. You can just see like this uh, uh, vertically or horizontally divided into two parts. Or maybe you can just see transport facilities one part, entertainment facilities second part, shopping facilities third part, like that. Okay. If we look at the port area, now one paragraph about port area. 
it has been pedestrianized since 2000 pedestrianized means now you can walk it only vehicles are not allowed it has been pedestrianized since 2000 has been pedestrianized you see present perfect passive voice is very common and a range of entertainment facilities have been built now what are those entertainment facilities cinema bars and clubs so range of entertainment now instead of using the word cinema bar clubs you have used the word entertainment range of entertainment facility this is what we call rewording paraphrasing so you'll get good band score and if you write bar cinema and same wording you'll i mean just see what sort of place is that if this is supermarket you say shopping facility if this is a train you say transport facility so you can use words like that Okay, let's go on. Uh, the northeast of the city used to be a green area. Now they have mentioned northeast, so most definitely in actual exam they will give you directions. The northeast of the city used to be a green area with lots of trees, but the trees have been cut down. Clear? Trees have been cut down and a new shopping complex has been constructed. Now don't see someone is cutting down the trees in the map. Means jab darakht nahi hai to cut hi gaye na, right? So a new shopping complex has been constructed. Now just look at this sentence. Uh, they said northeast of the city used to be a green area. Past tense. Used to be means hua karta tha. Green area hua karta tha. With lots of trees but the trees have been cut down. Trees have been cut down means in present perfect, right? And a new shopping complex has been constructed. A final interesting development, underline that also, last sentence pay you can use this. A final interesting development has been the introduction of a bike rental scheme in the city center. Clear? So this is how you will write uh, your answer on maps. Let me tell you, just like in IELTS test, opinion essay and discussion essays are very very common. The most common types are opinion and discussion. In the same way, for report writing, most common types are graph with a trend and comparative graph. Although we have four categories, but graph with a trend and comparative graph, I'll teach you that. They are most common ones. For letter writing, formal and informal letters are very, very important. Sometimes semi-formal, otherwise formal and informal. So you'll be getting this uh, sort of map in actual test. And again, uh, yeah, one thing. Please come to page number 112. Uh, not, not 112, 114. 114. Okay, I'm here, page number 114. The pictures illustrate the changes in ship's mouth. 2010. Now, which years are they? Past. Both are past. 1995 and 2010. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Now, for 1995, you will use past. And for 2010, even you will use past use present perfect tense okay let me see if they have given any answer towards the end of the book passive voice nahi maine passive voice se to nahi roka you can use passive voice okay that is kimsville kimsville is different this is ship mouth kimsville is here but that is in present so, uh, I mean, you will be using total past tense. Listen, for 2000, uh, for 1995, you will use there used to be. Hua karta tha. There used to be. For example, there used to be a factory there in 1995, which was replaced by a shopping center. Right? Which was replaced by a. Gaya. Clear? So used to be and then you'll use like that. Okay. Uh, yes, one more thing. We have this academic book also. 
for this one have we given it to the students good so we've got this book for uh, actually can't show the book on screen but uh, yeah better okay guys uh, now we are going to learn the most important essay in IELTS right most important opinion essay uh, whenever you take your IELTS exam uh, almost 80 to 90 percent chances are either you are going to get opinion essay or this types chances are very sleek like for example 10 20 percent chances that you get opinion uh, problem solution or advantages disadvantages but you need to pay attention to all Uh, opinion essay, uh, we also call it agree disagree essay, opinion agree disagree, how far do you agree, to what extent do you agree, through the question you understand that they are asking you for your opinion, that is what we call opinion essay. Now first of all, note down the units which you are going to read before Saturday when you come to take your mock test. It's unit number five, uh, unit number uh, three, and unit number thirty-one, and unit number six is on page number sixty-seven. Is that clear? These two units you have to read. First of all, we go to unit number thirty-one. We go through a topic. We read the topic, and then I just elaborate that for you. Uh, for now, let's come to page number. Yes. Uh, page number 36, please. We have a topic here. Prison is the best punishment for criminals. And then they have written, instead of that, you should write uh, how far do you agree or disagree with this statement? How far do you agree or disagree with this statement? Prison is the best punishment for criminals. How far do you agree or disagree with this statement? To what extent do you agree? Do you think? Do you believe? All these things show it's an opinion essay. Uh, before we continue, I just want you guys to think about the topic. Whenever you do brainstorming for five minutes, during your brainstorming session, you have to discuss it like that. Prison means jail. Prison means behind the bar. Is the best punishment. Means there are ways to punish them also. Right? Now first, what is your opinion? What do you think? Do you believe prison is the best punishment for criminals? Either you agree or you disagree. In both cases, whether you agree or you disagree, you need to come up with two reasons for your is the best punishment for criminals. Reason number one can be when we uh, sent the prisoners behind the bars, they become good human being after that punishment. And as a result, when they come out of the jail, they become good human being. This is reason number one. Reason number two, it's, it's a good idea. Bad people from the good people in the society. So prison is really a good way to separate all the offenders, criminals, uh, lawbreakers. They learn the value of uh, pious life or normal life and then they become good human and all that, right? So you need to think like that. If you agree, if you disagree, prison, petty criminal is someone who has just stolen a chocolate from a superstore and you put him in the bars or put him behind the bar. Petty criminals, it's not good. For some criminals, going to the jail is like a holiday camp. Yeah? One of my students, uh, he was sent to a jail in England and as he reached there, they took his belongings and then they, they gave him some options. Do you want a book 
or do you want playing cards or do you want any game like that so he said i took playing cards and i, I was playing cards you know tash ke patte uh being in a prison is just more like a holiday camp you get three times meal there is television meals will be served on time roti bhi achhi not like our jails phanti padti hai not like that he or you disagree you need to come up with solid reasons and how many reasons two two total two reasons two solid reasons why you agree and why you disagree and these two reasons should be like this not like this close i mean opposite six and we have another type of opinion essay i would like to tell you about that as well page number 67 please page number 67 got it now the topic is it's a common aspiration among many young people whenever you read the topic translate it into urdu punjabi or whatever you are comfortable with it is a common aspiration common aspiration means a common desire among many young people young people means university graduates youngsters people who just finished their education to run their own businesses or business rather than work for an employer to run their own business means to become an entrepreneur this doing a 9 to 5 job they want to do their own business so the topic is it is a common desire of young people to start their own business instead of working for some employer now the topic sentence do you think the advantages of working for yourself outweigh the drawbacks and many students think this is advantages disadvantages essay it's not it's opinion essay do you think when they say do you think now if you agree do you think advantages of working for yourself outweigh the drawbacks if you agree it means advantages are more so you will come up with two advantages to support your opinion if you disagree that means disadvantages are more then you will come up with two disadvantages to support your disagreement is that clear right i'll i'll go through these essays by the way right so in opinion essay you always write five paragraphs how many always whatever and it's very important to identify opinion essay because sometimes they write like this do you think this is a positive or a negative development that is also opinion essay when they use the word do you think and you have to think right you you think it's positive this is your opinion or you think it's negative that is also your opinion so whenever they say do you think this is a positive or a negative development that is also opinion do you think advantages outweigh drawbacks that is also opinion how far do you agree disagree to what extent do you agree disagree what do you think do you believe all that means opinion essay whenever you read the topic and you have a feeling that they are asking me about my thoughts on that my opinion that will be an opinion essay i don't want you to write a wrong essay think advantages outweigh disadvantages which type advantage disadvantage so if you write wrong type which does not match with the topic you will get substantially low band for that okay now let's go back to the previous essay and we just go on with that uh all right just a second just a second i tell you the page number 36 yes but i changed my mind i'm the teacher i can do that huh so uh, you should come to page number 72 page number 72 and by the way for opinion essay there is a template which i'll share with you complete template that will tell you how many paragraphs how many sentences and what to write and all that now you should have a pencil in hand and always remember whenever examiner looks at your essay right they have four criterias the first one is task response 
how thoroughly you cover the topic. Task response means you understand the type of the essay. Task response means you understand the topic of the essay, right? Task response means 250 words minimum for essay writing. So all these things come in the category of task response. If you write irrelevant essay, like uh, once I gave the topic, uh, smoking should be banned at the public places. Disadvantages of watching TV for children. Many students wrote essay on television. Television is this, television was invented by this and that and all. And the topic was, what are the children? Now, you will not write about adults. You will only write about children. So, it's very important to, if you understand the topic and you achieve task response, good and all that, still you can get reasonable bench score. And if your task response is not achieved, then the other things will fail, right? They say, uh, for example, दो लाख रुपया लड़के को घर और गाड़ी भी मिला हुआ है कंपनी की तरफ से लड़का जो है उसमें यह भी खूबी है लेकिन बस नशा करता है सी दैट जब नशा करता है तो दो लाख जाए चुल्ले से बाकी चीजें भी जाए चुल्ले से टास्क रिस्पॉन्स इज नॉट अचीव ग्रामेटिकल रेंज जितनी मर्जी अच्छी है जाए चुल्ले से मतलब कोई फायदा नहीं है उसका फिर ठीक है फिर आपकी वो कैबलरी का भी फायदा नहीं है सो टास्क रिस्पॉन्स दैट इज वाई रीड द टॉपिक टेन टाइम्स यू सिटिंग इन एग्जामिनेशन हॉल एंड रीड इट इज अ कॉमन लाइक दिस ओके रीड इट वन टाइम सेकेंड टाइम देन टेक अ लिटिल ब्रेक लिटिल ब्रेक मीन डू बैक एंड रीड so if you misunderstand the topic and by the way this has to be done before you start your essay because once you start then you cannot change at any point these things should be crystal clear before you start your essay so at least task achievement is the first thing and then there are the other criteria if you don't achieve that you will not achieve other thing second criteria is grammatical range and accuracy and for that i will only advise you three c's C number one, compound sentences. C number two, complex sentences. C number three, conditional sentences. Most of the time, 70% you will use compound sentences. Only 10 to 15% means one or two complex sentences in the body paragraph will do. You just tell the examiner that I know complex sentences as well. And wherever it is necessary, especially when you're giving example, there you can use conditional sentence. So these three type of sentences should be clear to you. And then they have accuracy. Accuracy means your sentences and all that. The next criteria is lexical resource or vocabulary. The third one. Now when we are reading a topic, common aspiration, many young people to run their own business. Now we should know different words for that, for young people. You should know other words. For common aspiration, you should, you should use the word like self-employed, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. So these type of words you have to use. If throughout the essay you write common aspiration, young words again and again, that is a plan for five band. Okay, so what you present to the examiner related to the topic. It's not that I know five good words. Yeah, exactly. Those words which are not relevant. Anything you write irrelevant will be out of the word count. Anything. There is one phrase, there is one thing we call it stock sentences. S-T-O-C-K. Stock sentences. Which you can write anywhere. They don't convey specific meaning. They only convey general meaning. Now, some students try to write those stock sentences in introductory. Different people have different views about uh, this thing and that thing and all that. Stock sentences are usually cancelled in IELTS. Cancelled means it will be out of the word count. It does not match with the rest of your writing. 
right you've written other other 10 sentences 10 sentences are broken one sentence is excellent perfect by all means so get that sentence as a cramped sentence that will also be out of word count no stock sentences no stock sentences means don't just copy full sentence that my teacher told me not and the last criteria is coherence and cohesion proper flow of ideas now what is coherence and cohesion first things first the first point explanation of the point example and for coherence and cohesion you have to use the tags like first of all secondly finally moreover these type of words actually connect your ideas now i just want you to write down on a piece of paper number one tr just write it down somewhere tr number two gr tr is task response gr is grammatical range or you can write gra grammatical range and accuracy lr lexical resource vocabulary and the last one is cc coherence and cohesion now i will show you all these things here I will tell you this is LR, this is GR, this is this, this is that. Okay, page number 72. Are you guys there? Yes, sir. Hmm? Okay, and as I told you before, you have to do one more practice. Just pick up this essay. Let me tell you, for every essay type, you have to prepare your personal template. What is that personal template? Opinion essay, in introduction, four sentences. Sentence number one is this. Sentence number two is that, third is this, fourth is that, and then you write your points. So like this, you need to, the first thing, make your own template. Number two, practice these sentences. I'll tell you how. Let's take a start. First paragraph, please. These days, it is a common aim of many people leaving university to try to start up their own company. Now you can write here general sentence about the topic. And what's the topic? Topic is common aspiration, young people run their own business. So you start it these days, comma, it's a common aim of many people leaving university to try to start up their own company. At least you can just see these days it is, then you can write sentence on any other topic. So you can practice these days it is common and then after that whatever you want to write, you can just do. Second sentence, uh, and by the way, you can see here, leaving university. Leaving university is for young people. They've used, in the question, they use the word many young people. And here, leaving university. And for uh, startup their own company. For startup their own company, what is that they used in the question? Run their own for the new companies or organizations and all that. All right, now let's go on. So first sentence is general sentence about the topic. Second, leave that. Now listen, this second sentence is to elaborate the first sentence. Means to continue that first sentence talk. It means young people. Now for young people, they use the word they, which is a pronoun. They believe that Running a business has many advantages over working for someone else. Now, for someone else, they use the word rather than work for an employer. Do you understand? No repetition. They are using different words for that. Uh, okay. Such as freedom to make your own decisions. Now, this is what we call the third sentence is called thesis sentence. Thesis sentence is your main. Uh, tells the reader whether the type of the essay is what opinion problem solution discussion and all that i agree with this point of view when you write i agree examiner will say yes this candidate has understood and if you write in this essay i will discuss advantages and disadvantages of starting your go into the well khota kyun mein chala gaya Satyanas ho gaya, yehi se satyanas ho gaya. Ab aage jo marzi kar le, it will not benefit you, right? So this sentence is called 
thesis t h e s i s thesis sentence and this sentence tells your position on the essay and the type of essay so i agree with this point of view but it is important to bear in mind that running a company does not suit everybody so this is the middle uh, sort of agreement i agree but running a company does not suit everybody so you can write like that as well how many sentences are there in introduction exactly so now you remember three sentences and you should know what are those three sentences so that when you write you know that first is general second is elaborate the topic in the second one and third one is your thesis sentence okay now you said i agree so there should be two reasons for agreement two reasons in two body paragraphs you will write let's see what is reason number 1 there are several benefits the word benefits is for advantages see that rewording paraphrasing using this is what examiner wants to see examiner does not want to see high five vocabulary very very there are several benefits of setting up your own business for me the main one is that you have room to benefit number 1 room to be creative or creativity now throughout this paragraph you will elaborate on this point you will not have another point in one sentence one point another sentence another point you need to develop your idea now around this creativity you will develop your idea instead of having to follow your employer's decisions comma you can set the goals for the business comma which means that you feel more in control underline this sentence and then later on write it on top of your notebook and try to write five different sentences using this pattern this is a compound sentence with three ideas and these sentences are highly regarded in the eyes of examiners okay just underline that write it on a copy focus comma kidhar aaya which kahan pe aaya kitni clauses hain and then try to write something like that this generally results in people feeling happier in their job this is concluding sentence of this paragraph so what is reason number 1 or benefit number 1 not only that so you can write secondly or you can write not only that means i have another benefit not only that you can also keep the profits if the company is successful what is benefit number 2 keeping the profit okay you can also keep the profit if the company is successful if all goes well conditional sentence if all goes well comma you will earn far more than if you work for someone else so see a variety of sentence compound complex conditional and all that for instance for instance means for example you can write to illustrate for instance for example and all that for instance if you set up and by the way usually examples are given in conditional sentences for example if you start a company for example if you go abroad for example if you start your own business like that right so for instance if you set up now the word set up your own graphic design company and by the way in ielts essays you can always create examples on your own you're not going to see i don't have general knowledge now this graphic design you can change it to a software house you can change it to a call center you can change it to any academy or any any coaching center it's all up to you for instance if you set up your own graphic design company comma and you build a good reputation comma you will be able to make substantial profits how many ideas in one sentence three ideas it's a compound sentence so write sentences like at least one to two sentences like this in body paragraph right uh okay let's one you will therefore be more motivated to work hard in order to make a success of your company uh always remember an opinion essay you will write 
two points to support your opinion. Just two. Now, what is the third paragraph? The third paragraph is actually to discuss the opposite side. Because you are going to balance your essay. This is what we call contrast. You agree? Good. Now, people who disagree, you will write about them. And whenever you write contrast paragraph, do not write it with I. Write it with people believe. They think, they argue according to some people because that is not your view. Your views have been discussed in the two body paragraphs. Now, let's see. Having said that, you can even write however. On the other hand, on the contrary and all that. Having said that, it is understandable that running a business is risky. First, you are saying room to be creative making profits and all that. Now you are going to talk about contrast and the contrast is it can be risky. If there is a very good word, economic downturn, like economic crisis. If there is an economic downturn, comma, or you make mistakes in your business decisions, comma, your company can go bust, go bust. It's another word, right? Then again, comma, which can mean that you have, uh, you, that you lose everything and you have to lay off your staff. Now, underline this sentence and try to write at least one or two sentences. Clear? Moreover, now whenever you write moreover, you want to say further. Moreover, additionally, furthermore and all that. Moreover, it is very hard to switch off at weekends. Switch off is a good word here. And by the way, we know these words. I think there is hardly any word that you guys don't know. But only how to use them, that's the main thing. Okay, it is very hard to switch off at weekends. Business is always in the back of your mind. You're always thinking what to do and all that. Okay? All right, so this is paragraphs to support your opinion one paragraph opposite opinion right and now you come to conclusion to sum up is no doubt now this is one sentence summary or we call it paraphrasing your opinion once again in conclusion you will to re, uh, reword your opinion to sum up although there is no doubt now you can copy that for opinion essay to sum up Although there is no doubt and then you can write the topic sentence. Although there is no doubt, there are some risks associated with running your own business. I believe, now this is your final verdict, conclusion of the essay. I believe the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. And by the way, you can copy this opinion essay when they are talking an opinion essay with the advantages outweigh disadvantages only there you can copy this right so i believe the benefits outweigh the drawbacks particularly with regards to making decisions or if you want to write all three with regards to creativity and making decision however now this is the contrast part of your essay however it should be said that not everyone is a risk taker and some prefer to work for someone else right now again one more thing not like mathematics that 100% you have to follow this pattern koi sentence aage piche nahi ho sakta you can do that right but the purpose is you need to fulfill four criteria once you do that you will get good bench score now please come back to page 36 Got it? Uh, we have another essay over here. We'll just go through it so that you guys... Uh, I'll be very quick now. Very, very quick. Prison is the best punishment for criminals. And then you write, how far do you agree or disagree? Sentence number one. These days... Now, the topic is prison is the best punishment. These days, every time you turn on the television or flick through the pages of newspaper, you learn about is this 
general sentence about the topic. Topic is crime. So, these days every time you turn on the TV, pick up the newspaper, you learn about victims of crime. Uh, second sentence is, but what is the most effective method of dealing with the rising crime rate in our society? This is a style where you highlight something. If you want to do it, this is fine. Otherwise, you can paraphrase the topic here. The main topic, you can paraphrase that. Some people believe the best. Now, this is paraphrasing the topic. You can do that, no problem at all. Some people believe the best way to punish criminal is to sentence them uh, to time in prison. Now, that's the topic. Prison is the best punishment for criminals. Sentence number one, general sentence about the topic. Sentence number two, paraphrasing the topic. I completely disagree. What is that? Thesis sentence. I completely disagree with this idea. And in this essay, I will support my opinion with examples. Clear? Now we go on. Firstly, now firstly is to achieve coherence and cohesion. You are telling the reader, this is my first point. Life in jail is far too comfortable for prisoners. Right? Jail me koi responsibility nahi. Just enjoy. They also play football. Right? Life in jail is far too comfortable. So, what is the reason behind disagreement? Reason number one is life is comfortable in the jail. For example, many inmates, now for prisoners, they have used the word inmates, have access to luxuries such as television, computers, and sports facilities. And in other words, again, for CC, coherence and cohesion. In other words, when you say, it means what you said before, now you want to explain that further. In other words, spending time behind bars is more like being in a holiday camp. And finally, uh, this is the concluding, para concluding sentence. If prison is a conditional sentence, then I believe it needs to be considerably tougher. One reason is what? What's the reason here? Life in jail is too comfortable. Second, another reason why I disagree, you can copy this. Another reason why I disagree. For opinion essay, I told you, yase copy karke apna ek template bana le. Ke har paragraph, paragraph I will write for instance, in one paragraph I will write to illustrate and all that. Another reason why I disagree with prison as a punishment is that a large number of prisoners are not petty. Right? Now we are talking about petty criminals. Okay? Take shoplifters as an example. Do you know who shoplifters are? The people who go to big shopping mall and they put a We call them shoplifters. Take shoplifters as an example. Now, you should know words like that, shoplifter. Take shoplifters as an example. They are often locked up in the same cell. Cell is what? Prison. See that? They are locked up in the same cell. This is the variety examiner wants. As murderers, rapists, and violent criminals. Now, murderers, rapists, violent criminals, these words have been used for criminals. So, this is what we call vocabulary. Vocabulary is not something that, I mean, you say hi-fi and this and that. Just five to six words related to which is given in the main topic. Now, the topic is prison, best punishment, criminal. You need to know four or five words for prison, four or five words for best punishment, four or five words for criminals. And you can just... I strongly believe, once again, your opinion. I strongly believe that this is a serious waste of taxpayers' money. What's more, uh, in IELTS, essay writing never is a contraction. So, it's better to write here furthermore. Just cross what's more, write furthermore or moreover. What's more, furthermore, moreover or you can write what is more. Instead of what's more, write what is more. Petty criminals. Now, 
is for shoplifters. Petty criminals may even learn how to commit more serious crimes when they are inside. They make plans. Last time I was a shoplifter, now we will rob a bank. <laughs> okay, like that. On the other hand, what does that mean? Yeah, on the contrary, some people think jail is good thing. On the other hand, there is an argument. Never say that on the other hand, I also believe. Not like that, okay? On the other hand, there is an argument that prison can help to rehabilitate offenders. Very good word, rehabilitate and paraphrasing offenders for criminals. Rehabilitate means to make them good human being again. Many inmates have the opportunity to study while they are doing time. Doing time means they are spending their time in jail. As a result, many never re-offend. Now the words like re-offend, you know offend already, re-offend is another word. When they are released. So two paragraphs favor your opinion, one paragraph opposite to your opinion and you will write that in third person. Finally conclusion. In conclusion, although it is a common belief that prison is the best way to punish criminals. Words may like thing. In conclusion, although it is a common belief that prison is the best way to punish criminals, I believe, now your opinion once again, I believe it is too soft. Go back to second paragraph of your essay. Second paragraph, what is there? Life in jail is far too comfortable. For that they have used the word, it is too soft. Clear? Life is comfortable means it is too soft and that it is not necessary in the majority of cases. What is that? Large number of prisoners are not actually a danger to society. So that is it is not necessary in some of the cases. That means you have given the summary of your two supporting points. And finally, personally, I think prison should be the last option when all else has failed like that personally i think dash should be the last option when all else has failed so this is opinion essay and you're going to get opinion essay on our units you must read again i tell you page number so that you could prepare very well page number 31 unit number three and the unit number 6, page number 67. When you read these units, they will teach you every type of sentence, grammar, vocabulary, connecting words and all that, right? Okay. Uh, we are going to discuss how to write a discussion essay today. Or discussion essay, how many paragraphs you are going to write, what to write in each paragraph and all that. Uh, first of all, whenever it comes to IELTS writing task 2, uh, by the way, page number 39, same book, page number 39, uh, but first please listen to me. Uh, the first thing is whenever you go to take your IELTS test, you should be able to identify type of essay. I mean you read the topic and you should be able to tell this is opinion essay, this is discussion essay, this is problem solution essay, this is advantages, disadvantages essay, and you should write it there on the question paper, like today, uh, somebody told us that on question paper, you can write things. You can do your rough work on question paper, there is no problem. Even you can brainstorm your ideas on question paper, which they give you, right? On the question paper is opinion essay or discussion, or problem solution or advantages, disadvantages. You should write it there. And then you should also write compound, conditional and complex sentences so that your brain gets the message from there that you have to use compound, complex and conditional sentences, right? By the way, you will learn things from the book which I've shared so you can easily learn about them. Okay, now let's see. Whenever they give you discussion essay, it's very easy to identify discussion essay. In discussion essay, they always write. Sometimes they only write discuss both views. Otherwise, they write discuss both views and give your own opinion. 
right sometimes they write only discuss both views otherwise they write now look here whenever you write a discussion essay do not use the tone as i you should because there are two sides by the way in discussion essay they will always give you two opposite sides what are two opposite sides some people prefer to live in the cities on the other hand some people believe life in the country use and give your own opinion so they will give you two contrasting opinions two contrasting views right it's very easy to identify discussion essay number 1 they will give you two contrasting views number 2 they will mention there discuss both views and give your own opinion so you can easily understand that and by the way two essays are and in that test uh, students got opinion essay right so one most common type is opinion essay second most common type is discussion essay other essays are less uh, common in ielts writing so mainly you should focus opinion and discussion essays right now whenever you write a discussion essay uh, you are going to write five paragraphs paragraph is introduction in a minute i'll tell you how many sentences and what to write in introduction right first paragraph is introduction second paragraph you will discuss one view or one side elaborate your point further in that paragraph right but remember when you discuss one side you will never say i believe according to me in my opinion you will say people argue people believe some people think some people say right because you are discussing that you are not giving your opinion it's not opinion essay it's a discussion essay when you discuss other side there again you will not use i think i believe again you say on the other hand on the contrary there is a people who believe or a vast majority of people think something like that right so you will not use i think i believe and all that so after discussing both views in your opinion your opinion means i agree with this or i agree with that right okay and after that you can write a conclusion so total five paragraphs and five paragraphs only when they say discuss both views and give your own opinion if they only write discuss discuss they don't write give your own opinion then you can write four paragraphs introduction discuss one side discuss other side and in conclusion give your opinion you don't need to write a separate paragraph for that but if it is discuss both we write a separate paragraph now uh, please come to page number 39 on page number 3 you just have to come to the middle here page 39 got it good uh, now we are going to read and understand the topic which is very very important uh, if you write essay on wrong topic or if you misunderstand the topic score will go down substantially then they will not like your uh, uh, grammatical range and vocabulary and all that if you write off the topic and they have a marking criteria for off the topic whatever you write off for example one paragraph off the topic they will just Uh, uh, put that in bracket, and that is out of the word count. Isko bai phang do. They will not consider that. Whatever you write off the top, you know. For example, you learned a paragraph, and some teacher told you anywhere. You know, there are some different people have different opinions and this and that and all that. Very flowery ones. If you write anything like that, they will just roll it all, and that's out of the word count. Examiner will not consider that. so write things on your own your own language your own language written according to the topic will bring you better bench score as compared to the copied one if you cram if you cram paragraphs if you cram some sentences that these are beautiful sentences remember one thing a sentence which you can write anywhere in any type of essay must be avoided they are what we call stock sentences stock sentences stock sentences means you can write them anywhere so you should avoid those sentences okay now please follow me 
we read and understand the topic some people view teenage conflict now please look here some people view means according to some people teenage conflict with their parents i just want you to imagine some teenagers right you know from 13 to 19 13 to 19 yeah that is teenage right just imagine some teenagers so some people view teenage conflict teenage conflict means when children reach teenage they often argue with their parents right mother say something and they go against that father say something take with their parents according to some people what is that as a necessary part of growing up means it's normal there is nothing bad about it okay it's a necessary part of growing up when children reach teenage they argue with their parents that's normal there is nothing bad in it so it's a necessary part of growing up what is this one view hold it here now we see what is the second view and i told you there will be two contrasting views right second view is whilst in discussion essay they will use the words like whilst however on the contrary whilst others see it as something negative which should be avoided it means what does it mean people or others see it as something negative it means teen age conflict with their parents so one view is teen age conflict with their parents is normal other view is their parents is negative it should be avoided now what is after that discuss both views and give your own opinion clear now you understand it's a discussion now let's have a long jump uh, i've already told you about that so the first paragraph is introduction second paragraph is discuss one view one side third paragraph is discuss other side fourth paragraph is give your opinion and your opinion only means which view you support according to me teenage conflict with their parents is something which should be avoided that's my opinion first i will discuss teenage conflict is normal then i will then i will come and say according to me or as far as i believe you will write a short paragraph where you will just mention which side you support and then you will write conclusion okay okay now we read another topic and we go through this uh, and there are around 10 to 15 discussion essays here which you can read right so the topic is several languages are in danger of extinction what is extinction dying out 29 several languages are extinction means they will wipe out they will finish they will not be any more right because they are spoken by very small numbers of people so what is one side of discussion like they've just given us the background at the moment this is background several languages are in danger of extinction because they are spoken by very small okay that governments should spend public money on saving these languages what is view number 1 government should spend on saving these languages this is one view while others believe that would be a waste of money so some people say money should be spent on saving these languages other people say it's a waste of money we have other serious issues other than these languages so this money should be spent on medication and education and all that so we have these two views and by the way you should spend around 2 to 3 minutes reading and understanding the topic it's not that you say what was the topic languages and i wrote very well english is international language spoken all over the world that's not the topic topic is not topic is actually several languages are in danger of extinction should we spend the money to save the languages or it's a waste of money right so this is what you need to address in your essay discuss both these views and give your own opinion now let's go to first paragraph please uh the first sentence is a general sentence and by the way there are different you can write four sentences you can write two sentences 
right? Three sentences, it's all up to you. I just tell you, I mean, if you want to write two sentences, the first one is general sentence. Second sentence is what we call your thesis sentence. Thesis sentence is a sentence that tells the examiner what your plan in that essay is. Uh, in simple words, you can call it uh, plan sentence. Plan or what, whatever your plan is. Thesis is spelled like T-H-E-S-I-S, -S, right? So let's see how many sentences we have here. Uh, it is true that disappear in the near future. This is a general sentence about the topic. It is true that some minority languages uh, will disappear in the future. Although it can be argued that governments could save money by allowing this to happen, I believe that these languages should be protected and preserved. So in the second sentence, have given your position on the essay this is another style what is that you mentioned both sides and you have also mentioned that i support this very side right you will discuss the side that you actually uh, support or do not support but you just need to see whatever the first argument is you can write about that first for example there are several reasons why saving minority languages could be seen as a waste of money. So what are they going to discuss here? Saving languages is a waste of money. They are going to discuss that one here. Firstly, if a language is only spoken by a small number of people, expensive education programs will be needed to make sure that more people learn it and the state will have to pay for marketing now remember one thing in IELTS if you want to get good bench score you need to consider four things the first one is task response task response means you write on the topic task response means you don't go here and there like topic is this and you don't write essay on languages importance of languages it's not that right and task response also means for task 2 250 words and for task 1 150 words that is what we call task response. Second criteria is grammatical range. Just consider compound sentences. Compound sentences are when you join two sentences together, that becomes a compound one. And you can consider conditional sentences. If we allow these languages to die out, for example, if we, you can create examples on your own. So for examples, it's a good idea to use conditional sentences. What's a conditional sentence? Don't come here, I will not be able to teach you. If you don't listen to me, I will not, something like that. We call it a conditional sentence. So uh, as I said before, you guys should do one thing. It will take around 30 minutes. Watch three tutorials on YouTube. The first one is about compound sentences. Just write there how to make compound sentences in English. Second one is complex sentences. And third one is conditional sentences. These three type of sentences are highly regarded in the eyes of examiner and you may get very good score for that, right? Yeah, compound, complex and conditional. And uh, passive voice also. In essay writing, passive voice. Languages are spoken. This is passive voice, right? Okay, now let's go on. Uh, yeah, I was telling you this is the second criteria. The third criteria is vocabulary. We call it lexical resource, LR. In vocabulary, students believe that if we use difficult words, if we use hi-fi vocabulary, we'll get hi-fi band. Not at all, right? Not hi-fi vocabulary, a variety of relevant. Now, for example, we have a topic, several languages. For languages, what are the other words? In danger of extinction. For extinction, you can use die out, wipe out, discontinue, right? Then they use the word uh, number of people. Okay, let's find some people. Government. For government, you can use the word government, administration, okay, law enfor enforcement agencies, uh, ministers, anything like that. Uh, public money. For public money, you can use taxes. Other words for that. 
so it's a good idea in actual exam also underline the main words in the topic and then think about the synonyms related to that okay uh, so yes saving languages to save language for save what are the other words protect a language sorry preserve a language very good preserve a language protect a language this is what they want to see now see protect is a simple word preserve is a single a simple word so if you use these words most definitely you will get good bench score and if throughout the essay you say only government language government language government language you will get low bench score for that right so eight band candidate did not which was a fancy word he said i only used variety of simple words related to the topic and i got eight band right okay let's just go on uh yeah the fourth criteria is left the fourth criteria is coherence and cohesion very simple every sentence that you write in ielts essay you have to guide the reader what that sentence is for example if you write a sentence and you say first of all now reader is clear this is your first point then second sentence you write and you write there by this i mean by this i mean means what you said before now you want to elaborate on that you want to express more on that right after that you write for example when you write for example you are telling the reader that now i am giving the example and then you write finally that means you are going to conclude so these type of tags are extremely important whenever you write so you could guide the readers coherence and cohesion now what is cohesion i mean when you connect your ideas together means all the sentences as i gave you the example before if i say i have a mobile it is very beautiful i like my mobile it was gifted by my father i use it every day it is very good battery timing 20 hours or something like that okay so these sentences are not connected this will give you 5 band 5.5 band but if you write i love my mobile because it was gifted by my father on my last birthday right then you go on moreover there are several applications in my mobile which have educational uses therefore i always keep it with me you are connecting your ideas two to three ideas together right that will bring you good bench score not only in writing but also in speaking speaking as well right so that is what we call coherence and cohesion ye char bacche khush ho gaye to aap bacche bhi khush ho jayenge okay you'll be very happy at the end when you get the result so let's go on this money i'm reading the same paragraph this money might be better spent on other public services secondly now see that i told you firstly secondly finally secondly it would be much cheaper and more efficient for countries to have just kinds of cost related to communicating with each minority group so this is one side now we come to the second side despite the above arguments and by each essay try to learn and copy some phrases you can copy the phrases to achieve coherence and cohesion if you write this despite the above arguments you mentioned something now you say despite the above arguments means now you are going to go on to the other side i believe that governments should try to preserve languages that are less widely spoken i believe now what are you doing you are talking about the view with which you agree okay again let me tell you there isn't any single way of writing essay i'm teaching you discussion essay this way there are five other ways also by which you can write discussion essay now you might be thinking which essay it's not the essay style which will give you eight band it's your writing what you write in the essay that will bring you good bench score i have seen some essays in introduction they write only one sentence that is also fine introduction just one sentence no thesis statement just a generalized sentence and then they go on with the essay so it's not the style you may find variation to this style 2 plus 2 always 5 okay thank you wanted to check your reflexes whether you are in learning state of mind or not so 2.2 2 plus 2 is 6 yes ha huh? yeah he said he come jari rakho 
फाइव और सिक्स आई डोंट केयर आई वॉज सम वन डे आई वॉज इन अनदर पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री एंड आई वॉज गिविंग वर्कशॉप एन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड आई सेट सी ए टी कैट प्रोनाउंस इट लाइक कैट अ गाय अपीयर एंड सेट नो इट्स नॉट कैट इट्स केट and i said come on it's not kate kate is uh, actress kate winslet but although kate winslet looks like cat that is something else but actually the word is cat at the end whether you call it cat or kate so it makes a lot of difference right yeah anyways let's go on uh it is uh, now you can see this a language is much more than next we have this uh, semicolon semicolon is usually used when you are writing complex sentences they are only for complex sentences uh, in complex sentence you've got the main clauses and the sub subordinate clauses uh, it has a vital connection with the cultural identity of the people who speak it if a language disappears now the word disappear extinction right for extinction if a language disappears a whole way of life will disappear with it and we will lose the rich cultural diversity is more interesting uh by spending money to protect minority languages governments can also preserve traditions customs and behaviors that are part of our country's history and finally we've got conclusion it may save money in the short term if we allow minority languages to disappear but in the long term this would our cultural heritage now look here i'm going to share a handout with you this is for those who want solution ready made solution those who just say ah mere muh mein niwala dalne ah you know there are some of you some are saying now well do some effort and all that some say no i'll just open my mouth or us pe bhi kehte hain ki itni der se muh khola hai chamach kyun nahi muh mein dal rahe i made a template uh, for all essay types i'm going to share that in our class whatsapp group there are 3 to 4 pages you can print them out at least that template will help you understand how many para right the next thing which i'm going to tell you uh, in a discussion essay what are the sentences that you will write first of all when you write introduction and uh, by the way you should be clear for example in actual exam you are sitting and they give you advantages disadvantages essay you should be very clear how many paragraphs how to start and what to write in each paragraph looking looking here and there and then you say uski surkhi achhi hai ha i'll buy that also or something like that you know people just think like that uh, if you any paragraphs if you know type of essay you can easily without wasting your time start writing that essay right so whenever you write a discussion essay i advise you to write two sentences in introduction okay two are fine if you want to write three you've got the plan for that all number 1 write a general sentence about the topic now topic over here is languages are in danger of extinction and all that write a about the topic sentence number 2 paraphrase the topic in your own words paraphrase means apne words mein us topic ko jo wording di hui hai usko ghuma phir aake use synonyms and write a sentence about that and sentence number 3 your plan your plan means in this essay i will discuss both these views and finally give my opinion you can write this is thesis sentence right so you may write three sentences comfortably but make sure these three sentences out of two sentences should be compound and one you can write simple uh, that will be fine now after that when you write the body paragraph body paragraph is after introduction in body paragraph first of all you just rewrite the first side of discussion as they mentioned here there are several reasons why saving minority languages could be seen first sentence of the body paragraph you just write about that topic uh, if it is a discussion essay the first thing now there is another thing we call it development of ideas let me tell you what is development of idea if i say i would like to learn french this is 
my desire or opinion or okay let's make it like this in my opinion french language is quite important to learn now this is i have not developed my idea i have only given my opinion in order to develop my idea number one i have to explain my idea number two i have to give relevant example so in my opinion french language is quite important to learn because this language is spoken very widely in many countries of europe moreover see that i'm developing the idea and if i say i would I french language is very useful french language has many applications french language this no develop your idea first talk about the main thing make another sentence to hear about it then give example to further develop your idea remember one thing do not stuff your essay body paragraph with the with a lot of idea if i say uh, what will you do at the weekend or what will you do on the weekend you say i will go to all right let's make it like that what will you eat at the weekend what will you eat and you say i will eat uh, pizza i will eat burger i will eat uh, shawarma i will eat uh, uh, some french fries i will eat uh, i will eat it and like that you are you developing the idea no but if you say what will you eat at the week weekend first of all this weekend i will eat reason is i like pizza very much and there is a birthday in my family so therefore first i will eat pizza after that because right after pizza i usually like eating ice cream therefore right from the pizza place i will go to my favorite ice cream parlor and there i will enjoy my favorite garlic ice cream whatever is my life huh <laughs> just joking see that i'm developing the idea so you should develop the idea for that you can give example and this is going to be better and otherwise if you say i will eat pizza i will eat ice cream i will eat this i will eat that and i will this and that this is not going to be good so in body present the main idea then in one sentence explain the main idea then in third sentence give a relevant example and in fourth sentence conclude the idea in body paragraph you only need four sentences just four what is the first one first sentence yeah just present the main idea whatever it is second elaborate third give example and by the way if you don't have example then what will you do further explain it all right don't worry examples are not compulsory that without example you will not not get that is equally fine and the fourth sentence is conclude that idea right okay so this is how you can write your discussion essay okay guys now we just start with ielts uh, essay writing uh, and in essay writing today we will learn how to write a problem solution essay uh, mainly there are four types of essays which we need to go through problem solution essay advantages disadvantages essay opinion essay and discussion essay so today we'll be discussing problem and solution essay uh, whenever they give you problem solution essay problem and the second thing is they will ask you either causes of the problem or they will ask you the problem right for example uh, causes of the problem what are cities and problems if they ask you problems they will say what are the problems of big cities so it can be problem solution or cause and solution you understand yeah cause example of that a uh, please come to your books ielts advantage writing skills and uh, by the way unit number 2 and unit number 6 these two units you have to read before you number 6 from the same book okay uh, because these two units will equip you with grammar uh, vocabulary and all that let's go through this topic problem and solution essay and uh, you should come to page number 24 first come to page number 24 got it page number 24 i'm going to read it from top you should spend about 40 minutes on this task in writing there are two tasks task 2 is same for academic and general training 
Task 1 is different. Letter writing for general training, report writing for academic candidates. So, uh, these days I'm reading the topic. These days in many countries, fewer and fewer people want to become teachers. Particularly in secondary school. Now, what is the problem? Particularly in secondary school. It means the problem is people do not want to adopt teaching as a profession that is the problem right what are the reasons for this now they are saying reasons if they use the word reasons or causes that means they are asking you to give them the reasons or causes of the problem what are the could the problem be solved now what's the problem people are not willing to become teachers right teachers ki shadi nahi hoti jaldi or anything like that teacher bana. Right? So, <laughs> okay, this is what they usually say. So, you need to just come up with the causes and then the solution. What are the reasons? And by the way, reason and solution must match. Same reason and then solution to resolve that very reason. Now, after this, I will just give you another example of problem solution essay. Please come to page number 60. Page number 60. Page number 60. And there's another topic. Uh, you can share. There's only one book here. Uh, yes, there's only one book. So you can just, uh, someone can come from there and just make sure. Uh, all right. So let's go on. Book share kar de uspe bhi vese. 40 minutes on this task write about the following topic people who live in large cities face a range of problems in their daily life now you are also living in large cities so people who live in large cities face a range of problems in their daily life what are the main problems are they asking causes no so this is problem and solution so problem and solution cause and solution cause and effect Sometimes reason and how does it affect the society. What are the reasons of unemployment and how does it affect the society. So it can be cause and effect, cause and solution, problem and solution. Things will come under the same category. So this one, people who live in large cities, what are the main problems people in cities face and how can these problems be tackled. Now, please listen carefully. Whenever you write problem solution essay, the first thing is immediately, whenever there is any essay type, by the way, after the topic, the first thing is you need to use a pencil and write the type of the essay. Type of the essay. You read the topic and say, okay, this is problem solution essay. You read the topic and you say, oh, this is advantages, disadvantages essay. You read the topic and you know what the type is. If you write wrong essay, like yeah, I was going through some band descriptors and irrelevant to the task, you get one band. Entirely irrelevant to the task, one band. Even if you've written excellent answer, right? Or if your answer is memorized, even then you get number one in IELTS. Then you can say, I got number one in IELTS. Wow, clapping. Yeah, not like that. So you should be very, very careful. Uh, after this, very briefly, I would like to tell you the nine band number one task response task response means topic and type topic and type type means opinion discussion and topic means whatever the topic of the essay is you should write on that IELTS topics are not just like one word topics in our example is the topic corruption what is the topic unemployment what is the topic pollution they don't give any topic like that they will give you a topic in a statement statement of the topic so you need to see actually this is about pollution but they are asking about this very thing of pollution we call it of the topic so in IELTS first identify the topic then identify the range of the topic so that you don't write your essay of the topic means irrelevant to the topic so topic range of the topic and type of the essay these things are actually your task response and then 
150 words for task 2 and 150 words for task 1. After that, second thing is uh, what we call grammatical range and accuracy. Over there, just focus your sentence structure. So I advise you all to repeat your tenses once again, present, past, future. Mainly we use present tense in essay writing, mainly. But sometimes you want to give a reference of past so you can use writing you must use some passive voice passive structures right so uh, passive voice should be used after that uh, compound sentences complex sentences and eight band they need to make a variety of compound and complex sentences now what's a compound sentence when you join two sentences together you can watch a short and you can learn about compound sentences and then just practice same with the complex sentences practice and that's it okay now when we talk about uh, after this the next thing is vocabulary the third criteria out of nine you will get from there uh, vocabulary is they call it lexical resource lr vocabulary you will not get good bench score if you use difficult words of english high fi english yeah, even examiner doesn't understand what you write. Very hi-fi English. Hi-fi English will never give you hi-fi band, right? And if those words are irrelevant, hi-fi English irrelevant words, you know band one is waiting for you. Okay, so be careful. Now, what they want, they need a... ...related to your topic. They, they just want to see that if they give you a topic, uh, fewer and fewer people want to become teachers, particularly in secondary school. What other words you know about teachers? What other words you know about uh, secondary school and all that? Uh, in a minute, I'll show you all that. Okay. For vocabulary, yes, very good thing. There are two types of vocabularies. One, essay related vocabulary essay related now that essay related vocabulary will repeat in every problem solution essay essay related vocabulary will repeat in every opinion essay so you should learn that first because there will be few words and phrases which you can learn second is topic related topic related means whatever the topic is so as we go through one essay i will tell you what is topic related and what is essay related vocabulary okay uh, after vocabulary the last criteria is coherence and cohesion Coherence and cohesion means the way you write of paragraphs, introduction, body paragraphs, conclusion, and then within the paragraph, within the body paragraph, the way you have actually organized your sentences, the way you have developed your ideas, and then the connectivity of your ideas together. We call it coherence and cohesion, and I'll show you all these things. Okay. Now for problem solution essay. Number one, you can write five paragraphs. And by the way, first paragraph will always be introduction. And last paragraph will always be conclusion. Introduction and conclusion. Okay. Uh, the middle paragraphs, they may vary from two paragraphs to four paragraphs. They, you will never write five body paragraphs. Maximum four and minimum two. Two body paragraphs. I'm talking about body paragraphs. Minimum two and maximum you can write four body paragraphs. Uh, okay, now for problem solution essay, there are two ways of doing it. The first three causes of the problem and solutions. Three causes and three solutions. And you can write those three causes and three solutions in three body paragraphs. Cause number one with solution number one. Cause number three with solution number three. This is one method. Second method is you can write all the causes in one paragraph cause number one cause number two cause number three and then in the next paragraph you can write solution solution number one solution number two solution number three and make sure those solutions are related to the same causes which you mentioned before this is also right but i advise you to write cause one plus solution one there you can easily balance the paragraphs and everything that is even better clear so total five paragraphs now topic related vocabulary is all Topic related, uh, sorry, 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 essay related vocabulary, type related vocabulary. Type related vocabulary is almost 30 to 40 percent. So, if you learn that and that will use that will be used in any, right? I'll highlight those words which you can use. And then, next is topic related vocabulary. Yes, you need to focus that. And for topic related vocabulary, I'll share a book of essays with you. Read all those essays and They talk about crime, pollution, 
population, education. We don't know about these things. So I've got a book with 111 essays and these essays are on the uh, what do you say the very common types of essays which they give in actual exam so if you read all those essays like in one day you can read five essays and in 20 days you can read all these essays so those essays will give you good vocabulary good understanding good knowledge and then you can write good essays but you want you don't want essays based on two things language and knowledge now if you have language you can't write it if you have knowledge no language you can't write it so let's just take a start you will read this essay which is on page number 60 on your own right now page number 24 page number 24 uh, so we have already shared this book in the group so you can just see it from there as well same book is in class whatsapp group you've been added to that so you can just check check it from there okay guys now uh, going to see already you know there are five paragraphs this time you see what to write in each paragraph what to write means number of sentences number one and number two what to write in each sentence like how many sentences and what what each sentence is about that's what you're going to learn so let's start with the first sentence a generation ago i'm on page number 24 right a generation ago teaching in a high school was considered an extremely well respected and popular job and in some Sentence number one is actually a general sentence about the topic. Clear? In introduction, whenever you write the first sentence, that is always general sentence about the topic and you will start it with a generation ago if you want to say something in the past. Otherwise, these days, nowadays, at present, right? So a generation ago, teaching and all that. After this, the second sentence is where you are going to paraphrase the problem in your own words. Paraphrase means you re rewrite the problem using your own words, using your own style. So they say, uh, however, in many parts of the world, there has been a sharp drop in the number of young people who want to become high school teachers. What's the topic? These days in many countries, fewer and fewer people want to become teachers, particularly. Got it? So what is the paraphrasing? However, in many parts of the world. Now they have used the word many parts of the world for many countries. This is what we call good vocabulary. This is actually what we call uh, synonyms, rewording, paraphrasing like that. In many parts of the world, there has been a sharp drop in the number of young people. What is that? Fewer and fewer. sharp drop in the number of young people who want to become high school teachers secondary school and high school they are same like first year second year we call them high school secondary school and high school do you understand the mechanism now vocabulary and all that and by the way this was the second sentence first sentence general second paraphrasing of the problem and third is your plan third sentence will contain your plan what's the plan this essay will look at the reasons for this and propose some solutions and by the way from plan examiner will catch you right if you write over here in my opinion <laughs> examiner will think now this essay is opinion essay and if you write over here in this essay i will discuss it means discussion essay right if you write in this essay i will discuss advantages and disadvantages of joining teaching as a profession right teaching is a novel job and this and that so from this sentence examiner will catch you so write this sentence which shows clearly that this is problem solution essay get the reasons for this it means causes and propose some solutions it means solutions clear so in first paragraph, how many sentences? Three. Three. And you should know that. Then you will not waste your time. Otherwise, you'll be looking at the clock or looking here and there, thinking, thinking, thinking like Mr. Bean. Then you'll start looking there. No, this light is not good. I'll look at that. You know, introduction, problem solution essay. Yes, five paragraphs. Problem solution essay, first paragraph, three sentences. First is general, I write it down. 
and when you write the sentence make sure you write compound sentences if you want good band score if you need six band do whatever you want to but if you need seven six point five or even eight then compound complex and condition Okay, now today when you go back home or tomorrow morning, just watch a short video about compound sentences. You will just le learn that concept, fan, F-A-N-B-O-Y-S. Fanboys are some connecting words, so you just use them and you will learn compound. Compound sentences, when two simple sentences are joined to learn English because it is an international language, something like that, okay? Uh, all right, now after that, in body paragraphs, in body paragraphs, Actually, we have four sentences or four points. Number one, you need to write about the first cause of the problem. Number two, you will elaborate that cause. Number three, if you have any example, give example. Now, example is not compulsory. If you don't have example, further elaborate that idea. Okay, examiner will give you good band score if you develop your idea. Develop means I say something. Number one, number one, you say something. Number two, what do you mean by that? You explain that. Number three, to support it, you give a relevant example. And number four, conclude the point. In problem solution essay, fourth sentence will contain the solution, right? One of the main causes of the problem is that, now this sentence can be copied in any problem solution essay. One of the main causes of the problem is that, and if it is not causes, then you can say one of the main problems is that. If it is problem solution, then you write one of the main problems is that. If it is causes and solution, understand, yeah? One is causes and solution, one is problem and solution. So one of the main causes of the problem is that teachers' salaries are lower than many other jobs. Full stop. Now listen. In we will not talk about anything other than teachers' salary. Right? Development of ideas. What? Now, for example, you write five things. The first problem or the first reason of the problem is teacher salary. Secondly, there is no respect. Thirdly, this. You will get bad band score. Why? Because you did not develop your idea. Now, what is development of idea? You said teacher salary. Okay, fine, good. What do you write another sentence. Then if you have an example, give an example and then come towards the solution. Right? So let's see. One of the main causes of the problem is that teachers' salaries are lower. And by the way, don't write anything like, say, one of the main problems is teachers' salary. Okay? What do you mean? If you say teachers' salary is the main problem, what do you mean? That salary is higher or salary is lower? So whenever you salary, if you're talking about salary, what do you mean by that? Okay, teachers' salaries are lower than many other jobs. Uh, teachers pay. Now, for salary, what word are they using? pay you will get good band score you know the word pay so you can write these words teachers pay has not kept pace with that of other professions such as law or medicine right this is such as the salary of a doctor or engineer and all that in the uk for example what is that example third sentence in the uk example a doctor with five years experience will earn far more than a teacher with the same experience. Clear? Uh, remember, in IELTS essay writing, never write any number. Never write any fake statistics. 70% teachers are unhappy because how do you know 70%? Okay? So, even if you know, never add any survey report, any percentages, any numbers according to the survey. In America, two-third teachers have this and that. Never write anything like that. I'm telling you, it will be the band killer for you if you write anything like that. Okay? Yeah. So don't try to tell the examiner, I read articles and all that. I'm PhD scholar and all. Even if you're PhD scholar, avoid all. Try to keep it as simple as possible repetition okay and then you can do one thing just use uh, this proper structure and there is no reason you don't get your good band score okay uh, I mean I taught the same methodology to several students who the same method students got five as well now I tell you why five their basic sentence structure that's what Ms. Mr. Ijaz was telling you the foundation of your English language that is the mean now this structure 
structure is good you know tenses active voice passive voice this structure will give you seven bad and if that is bad you will get even five bad so it depends that is why i'm saying just if you don't know tenses all repeat them and then active voice passive voice compound sentences complex and conditional and that's it nothing more okay so let's go on underline this the solution is and you can use it in any problem solution essay and now listen you will not use the word solution second time in next paragraph for solution is you will use another word in third paragraph for solution you will use another word to demonstrate that you know good language so the solution is for the government to raise teachers pay now the word pay has come again that doesn't matter i mean it's not uh, you're not using it many times significantly which would attract more people into the profession is that clear now this is the conclusion in problem solution essay for body paragraph conclusion contains solution right let's go on another problem is that now you can copy it in any problem solution vocabulary is topic related one is type related so this is type related another problem is that many children do not behave well in class what's the problem children's behavior now in this paragraph you will not write anything now you will tell them what do you mean many children do not behave well in class that is to say now you can use this word to achieve coherence and cohesion that means connectivity of ideas that is to say means mera matlab hai ke jo main kehna chahta hu sometimes that is to say teachers often have to deal with pupil uh, pupils who disobey them which often causes them to give up teaching right so this is give up is a good word and pupil is another word for Student. students now you tell the examiner examiner i know pupils as well and sometimes you write people instead of pupil okay so this tends to put off now guys listen and remember the word this is very important do not use it unless there is a phrase with it you can use it then otherwise you should use the word this this is like a bridge when you say this tends to put off now this is linking the idea presented in the previous sentence and what is that yeah teachers often have to deal with pupils who disobey them which often causes them to this tends to put off this means the behavior of pupil this tends to put off put off means to stop potential teachers potential teachers are like you say i want to become a teacher i want to become a teacher after my qualifications and all that so this tends to put off potential teachers as well to tackle this issue underline that in problem solution i say you will use it first what was the phrase they used in the second paragraph yeah they said the solution is now they say to tackle this issue so you can problem solution essay to tackle this issue and focus the commas as well only two punctuation marks are most common full full stop number 1 number 2 comma and sometimes apostrophe right mainly use this one children a sense of respect for teachers in order to make children behave better in class is that clear right now see two paragraphs and properly we mentioned a third be this sentence as well a third cause of the problem is that teachers often have too much work to do so what is the third problem overburden workload they have a lot of work to do copy checking marking now new classes are starting classroom ko decorate bhi karna hai ye bhi karna hai wo bhi karna hai and all that teachers often have too much work to do most teachers are snowed under now idioms in essays yes you can but appropriately overuse of anything in ielts essay will give you disadvantages instead of advantage overuse like you use so many golden sayings and quotations don't use quotations don't write golden sayings in i because you know i tell you the reason why not golden saying or someone's words they don't belong to you you have crammed it so golden sayings and golden words will go into the pile of crammed answer you understand the reason i just realized it now so therefore don't use any golden saying any quotation and all that so 
Uh, snowed under is an idiom. You can use appropriate idioms, but not so many. Snowed under means to burden someone. Like, you know, if you put a lot of snow on someone, you're snowing them under. With marking and paperwork. Now, listen carefully. You said too much work. What do you mean by too much work? Marking and paperwork. So this is how you elaborate your points. Marking and paperwork, which means that teachers, they have to stay late at school and work at home in the evening. As a result, now as a result, consequently, these words will help you achieve of your essay as a result many teachers are tired and stressed and their job has a negative effect on their family life the way forward could be what is that so, is then they said to tackle this issue now they are saying the way forward could be so you can make a list now see that you know in body paragraph four sentences what is first what is second what is third what is fourth for four body paragraphs just select some words which you will use a type of the essay you should have all this plan with you these sentences you can cram so the way forward could be to cut teachers hours cut teachers hours means give them more free periods and all that and to tackle on more teaching assistance right I still remember when I my daughter is sitting there. Okay, forget about that. All right. When I was at a college, global college, I used to teach there as an intermediate English teacher. I taught English uh, as at an intermediate level and uh, uh, BCom level and all that. So I used to have a free period, and another teacher used to have free period at the same time, and we used to have tea together. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay so teachers should have more free periods so that they socialize in the same college two teachers they got engaged as well as a result of free periods and all that so the way forward could be to cut teachers hours and take on more teaching assistance take on take on means to provide take on more teaching assistance which would make now this structure with which please try to use it at least at least you can just write four to five sentences by using this structure comma and then which you can do another thing as i said that before just write for example introduction and i said there are three sentences write the first sentence on a notebook on top one sentence write it using a marker and then use a pen look at that sentence and write another one just copy that but ideas should be different then write another one write five sentences then second sentence write it on top and then try to write five sentences on different topics then third sentence and now your introduction is prepared problem solution essay any topic comes problem solution your introduction is prepared because you know the structures now work on body paragraphs and make sure in body paragraphs at least you use two compound sentences one complex one compound or minimum two compound and when you're giving examples there you can use conditional sentences right okay let's go on uh teaching assistance which would make teaching a uh, easier job now we are going to write conclusion again you should know like it should be on your fingertips in conclusion we write four sentences the first is this second is that third is that and all that right uh to sum up you can use to sum up to conclude and all that to sum up Teaching has become a much less popular job. To sum up, paraphrase the problem. Due to reasons such as, now you will give the summary of problems. One sentence, summary of problems, uh, and pupils' behavior. Is that clear? So we've given one sentence summary of three problems. This is a serious problem. This is a serious problem and unless we can and after that I advise you they have written something else but I advise you to write solution unless we can increase the salary of teachers comma write three solutions first you mentioned three problems and now you'll mention three solutions uh, the education or talented young people uh, to become teachers the education of our children will suffer now last sentence look here last to you and whenever you are writing a problem solution essay keep in mind usually the overall solution is with the government with the city council king teachers government schools so who should do that maybe ministry of education 
or government so this is what we say bigger problem so when a bigger solution when you write bigger solution the council ministry of education if it is something related to pollution which ministry we have ministry of health, health. ministry of health yeah that that can be involved so uh, there you can write i is with now you can copy it right this is topic uh, uh, type related so my view is that the main responsibility for solving the problem lies with parents and the government so this is your overall solution parents and the government is that all fine now you need to know how many sentences what is each sentence and practice each sentence well and then say okay my problem now I'm going to work on opinion essay, same way work on opinion essay, then work on discussion essay and on exam day you'll be very fine. And for knowledge on essay writing, I'm going to share that book, 111 essays, read them all to get something similar, right? Thank you. All right, guys, I need your attention. Uh, we are going to take a start with one of the important types of essays and that is advantages, disadvantages essay. Uh, in total, advantages disadvantages problem solution opinion and discussion right uh, and at times they mix up any two types and they make another one so uh, you should be ready whatever the introduction will be same conclusion will be same only body paragraphs depend on the type of essay now whenever it comes to writing advantages disadvantages essay First thing is you must be able to identify the type of the essay. As you read the topic, you will have a pencil in your hand. After reading the topic, the first thing which you write on the question paper is the type of essay. Type of essay, for example, you read the topic and you write opinion essay. You read the topic and you write discussion essay, the first thing. of the essay which is very important in IELTS they will not give you one word topic they will give you a topic statement so within the topic statement you have to see what is the range of my topic what is the topic for example topic is smoking range of topic now what which aspect of smoking you are going to cover in your essay we call it range of topic so topic and range and type of the essay these things should be crystal clear the first thing after that for every essay you should have it on your fingertips for example advantages disadvantages essay you may write two body paragraphs introduction and conclusion is with every essay for advantages disadvantages essay you may write two body paragraphs or you may write four body paragraphs i will recommend four body paragraphs right then for problem solution essay you may write three body paragraphs and you can also write two body paragraphs right i will teach you that later uh, opinion essay you must write five body paragraphs discussion essay two body paragraphs or you may write three body paragraphs if it is discuss both views two body paragraphs if it is discuss both views and give your own opinion now you will write so these things should be at your fingertips clear how many paragraphs and type of essay and topic of essay and range of topic and all that after that the next important thing is you must know in introduction how many sentences right and what these sentences are number of sentences and what these and you know if you for going to your actual IELTS test you will not waste your time you will not have this writer's block writer's block means you are holding a pen it is on the paper and you are thinking how to start you don't know how to start blocked and you don't know what to do but if you know in my introduction first sentence is a general sentence about the topic second sentence is paraphrasing the topic third write it down so these things should be crystal clear and you should know plan for every essay type now we are going to take a start with advantages disadvantages essay it's very simple and easy to identify the topic because they will always write what are the advantages and disadvantages of but let me give you one warning do you think advantages outweigh disadvantages 
90% students take it as advantages, disadvantages essay. Whereas actually this is, whenever they say, do you think advantages outweigh disadvantages? Or do you think this is a positive or a negative development? This is also opinion essay. So you should be clear about that. In advantages, disadvantages essay, they will not ask a question. They will simply say, what are the benefits and drawbacks of going to a foreign country? What are the advantages and disadvantages of doing something and all that? Is that clear? So topic will be given like that. So these few things, once you read the topic and see how many paragraphs you are going to write. Uh, now, let's just come to this book and over here we read the topic. The topic is what are the advantages and disadvantages of by the way sometimes instead of what are they write discuss the advantages and disadvantages of discuss now in discussion essay they say discuss both views and give your own opinion that is a discussion essay but if they only say discuss the advantages and disadvantages of leaving your country to live or study abroad are you guys clear about this topic? Leaving your country. Leaving your country means going out of country. Leaving your country means going abroad. Live. Live means settled, settled there. Live means immigration. Live means work permit. And study means foreign education. Right? That's what you guys are doing. Some of you are going to apply for education, studies abroad. And some of you are going to go for immigration purpose, right? So now what's the topic? Advantages and disadvantages of going out of your country for higher education or immigration or work permit. So advantage number one. Huh? Career? Okay. Advantage number one, career. Advantage number two? Dollars, huh? Or dollars. Advantage number two? Maybe lifestyle, right? Okay, lifestyle or maybe if you're talking about education, so you earn international degree. Disadvantage number one? Homesickness. At times, you know, you're missing your baby or baby, whatever, yeah. Uh, no, listen. Listen, listen, listen. It's not different. If you are out of your town, you come across homesickness. But now when you talk about homesickness here, you will talk about it as if you are in a foreign country. Homesickness in a foreign country. So this is the disadvantage. Okay. Uh, all right. So what you guys need, to do, you can do this work on question paper. Don't do it on answer sheet. If you're doing paper delivered ideas, if you're doing computer delivered ideas, you can type these ideas. And just start your essay from the beginning. At the end, you can delete them. That is your rough work, right? So two advantages and two disadvantages. Now listen, why two advantages? There are two options. Option number one, in one paragraph, you can write two to three advantages. In another paragraph, you can write two to three disadvantages. Conclusion and introduction. How many paragraphs? Four. Second plan. Second plan is introduction one short paragraph with one advantage second short paragraph with second advantage one short paragraph for disadvantage number one another short paragraph for disadvantage number two and conclude but but remember these paragraphs must be short you don't want to write a 500 word essay right because if you increase the word count you will have lesser time for task one or if you're doing task two you will not be able to complete it ideal essay is the one that is written between the range of 250 to 280 so it's all up to you i mean it's not that if you write two paragraphs and uh, you will get low band score if you write four paragraphs you'll get more bands it's not like that okay now please come to this book and we have these bullet points uh, write an introduction to the topic. In a minute, I'll teach you how to do that. Think of two advantages to the situation. We have done that already. Think of two disadvantages and write about them with support and write a short conclusion. Now, by the way, do you want to write four or six? 
mistakes, that's better. Because you know, there is one thing which is idea. So if you write one paragraph for one advantage, you can easily develop your idea. You can do that in one paragraph, two advantages. You can write first of all, first advantage, elaborate, give example, then but in that case, your paragraph will be long. Okay, so it's all up to you. Now, everyone, please come to page number 12. And by the way, uh, this week, you guys already know the plan. This week, we will have a class on Sunday, right? Because 14th August is on Saturday. So on Sunday, we have mock test at 2.30 p.m. 2.30 p.m. Clear? Yes. Uh, on 14th August, you can have fun, enjoy. No, not, don't, don't have fun and enjoy. Study. Exactly. You know, there are different ways of uh, showing your love for you. Shouting and dancing and music and you show your love like this. Yeah, I'm going to Canada for my country. I will send dollars. Yeah, dollar or dollar? Dollar. So, and you know, two type of people are in Canada. One type, they spend money. They say it's fine. The other type, they spend money and multiplied by the dollar price. They, they tell the people back to their hometown and all that Pate burger hazar pedaya see something like that yeah in in, in, in reality seven or eight dollars they, they never tell dollars they just multiply and then they say and when they come back here then they say okay ten dollars is equal to this and hundred dollars that and all that all right so I mean when you go to a foreign country don't become miser don't multiply spending there and that's it don't make uh, yeah I, I once met a lady came from Canada and I went to see her and she said in Pakistan it's everything is so expensive it was June month of June and she was using that pedestal fan right and there was the AC in the room and she was complaining Pakistan mein to aap AC chalai nahi sakte itna bill a jata and all that and I was sitting and sweating and I said okay Sometimes people who live in Canada or any other country when they come back they are very miser but other ones are very good yeah you know what they in Canada so then they just send them the money and all that okay so let's come back to this thing uh, these days more and more people are going to other countries for significant periods of time now we have full topic periods of time means one year two years five years ten years like that Either to find a job that is for career, work permit, and all. To study that is foreign education. There are clearly many benefits to doing this. Doing this means going abroad. But people who live abroad also face some difficulties. Difficulties means challenges. Difficulties means disadvantages. Discuss the advantages. Now, it's not... Uh, essay I told you before discuss the advantages and disadvantages of living and working in a foreign country is that all clear okay now we take a start I will just tell you how many sentences and what to write in each sentence and what each sentence is so the first paragraph taking a year out to live or study abroad. Now, by the way, just keep in mind four things. On the same paper here, you can just write task response, TR, task response. Then you can write grammatical range, GR. That's fine. Grammatical range, that is GR. Then you write lexical resort. And then you write CC, coherence and cohesion so these are four criteria these are four things examiners have in mind task response means how thoroughly you cover the topic you write your essay on the topic and 250 words minimum for essay not less than that grammatical range means a wide range of structures like compound complex sentences conditional sentences passive voice like we have passive voice you can use that as well uh, lexical resource means words 
synonyms related to the topic now we are talking about going coherence and cohesion that means a proper layout of your essay proper paragraphing and then using the words which connect your ideas i will show you all four things here in this essay so sentence number one nowadays taking a year out to live or study abroad is becoming increasingly popular please put a bracket and then write general sentence about the topic clear general sentence so this is nowadays taking a year out to live or study abroad and we usually start general sentence with nowadays at present or anything like that uh second sentence now this second sentence is optional by the way if you want to write it write if you don't want to write it even then it's okay second sentence is support the first sentence in second sentence, to actually uh, go on with the same idea in another sentence for many people especially young adults the chance to spend an extended period of time overseas is an attractive one okay next however there are both pros and cons to deciding to do this now please cross to do this because you know this sentence can be written in any essay a sentence that can be written in any essay anywhere we call it stock sentence and stock sentences are uh, the ones that decrease your band score right a sentence which you can write anywhere in a it will be out of the word count and you that will be the reason for low band score so avoid any stock sentence stock sentence means any sentence that you can write anywhere now instead of doing this you should write however there are both pros and cons to deciding to move out of your country understand now it has become a sentence which is related to the topic uh have you got my point yeah i made it a sentence which is related to the topic so this is the third sentence every introduction listen two sentences are common in every introduction number one start with a general sentence and the last sentence is always a plan we call it thesis sentence Th your plan in one sentence and that plan is in this essay i will discuss some of the reasons why what is popular what does that mean some of the reasons why moving abroad is popular it means advantages now try to understand if in advantages disadvantages essay you write everywhere advantage number 1 is this advantage number 2 is this another big advantage is that one more advantage is that second disadvantage is that advantage 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 abroad going abroad you will get low band score repetition of words repetition of ideas repetition of phrases they are actually the band killer right or if you move around in circles same ideas again and again ideas like you know different people have different opinions about that different people have different opinions this is again a stock sentence if uh in this essay or you can write this essay will discuss in this essay i will discuss or this essay will discuss some of the reasons why moving abroad is so popular and this advantages challenges to be overcome is the first paragraph clear so you can write four sentences if you want to otherwise you can write three sentences in your uh, this uh, essay even you can write two sentences also even you can write one sentence also i mean there are different types never take essay writing as something mathematical of writing it you go to another book they will tell you another way of writing it now you might ask me which is the right one everyone is the right one every method is the right one every essay type is the right one as long as even with two sentence introduction you can get 7.5 and with four sentence introduction you can get 5.5 as well so it's not the number of sentences it's what you write okay now 
we are going to start with advantage number one and I will show you four things task response, grammatical range, lexical resource and coherence and cohesion. You can write let us. In essay writing never use any contraction. What's a contraction? Don't, doesn't, gonna, wanna and all that. Never use any contraction in essay writing. Essay writing is formal. In formal writing, we never use contractions or words like wanna, gonna, don't, doesn't, and all that. So, let us by looking at the advantages of moving away. Moving away is the replacement of going abroad. So, this is what we call lexical resource. And again, I tell you, high five vocabulary to get good band score only relevant words and variety of words relevant and variety so now moving away is a simple word very simple word moving away one of the main positives now the word positives is used for advantages and look here for every essay type there are two types. number one related to essay type now, whenever you write advantages, disadvantages essay, you can write positives, you can write uh, challenges to be overcome. So one is uh, type related vocabulary, second is topic related vocabulary. Topic is going abroad, words related to that. So for uh, type related vocabulary, you can learn. Now, for example, you know for advantages, disadvantages, for advantages, I can use these five words. For disadvantages, I can use these five words, right? So, you should learn that vocabulary. So, this is how you can score well in your IELTS, right? So, let's go on. Uh, one of the main positives of heading overseas. Heading overseas is what? Going abroad. Do you understand? This is what we call LR, lexical resource, variety of words. But relevance is very important. It's not that you write a variety of words, but topic. Heading overseas is that it broadens your horizon. Advantage number one, broadens your horizons. Now, how does it broaden your horizon? You see, if you go to a foreign country, you see people from all over the world. So then you come to know about different things and your mind is totally changed. That's why people go abroad. They come back after five years. They, they are broad minded people. So it broadens your. What I mean by this coherence and cohesion. What I mean by this and listen, IELTS examiner will give you good band score if you develop the idea. Now, what is development of idea? Your horizon. Okay. What do you mean by this? Explain it in one sentence. Even to further develop your idea, you can give example and then you can conclude that very thing. So this is called development of idea. If you write 10 advantages, you will never get good bench score. If you write one advantage with proper explanation, example, conclusion, you will get good bench scores. Four, five, six, seven, and all that. Just two advantages and two disadvantages. Okay, what I mean by this is that you have the chance to meet people from different cultural backgrounds and learn to cope with foreign customs and food. So this means broadens your horizon. So you elaborated what you mean by broadening your horizon. Now the word this is very good. In essay writing, uh, avoid the word it. Like you can use it in introduction somewhere. It doesn't mean it's a banned word, but instead of it, you should use this. When you say this can make, this means what you said before. This works as a bridge to connect your ideas. And this is a very good word for coherence and cohesion. When you say this, this means chance to meet, no, chance to meet people from different cultural background and learn to cope with foreign customs and food. So this can make you more rounded as a person. If you don't understand the word rounded, you can use the word experienced or any other word. More rounded, more experienced, more skilled as a person. Is that clear? So one advantage, properly elaborated. The, they didn't give any example. So Without that even fine secondly now why have we written secondly to guide the reader and this comes in the category of coherence and cohesion 
Secondly, thirdly, can lead to a better quality of life. What is advantage number two? Better quality of life. Take British people for example. Now we have example. And try to give global examples. Don't give local examples, right? Take my uncle for example. Yeah. So not like that. Take British people for example. Because they say use anything from your experience and all that. But never give any personal example like that. Give a general example. And try to give a global example. Because your writing will be marked by any examiner anywhere in the world. Okay. So, thousands of people from the UK moved to Spain and Australia. Now, for abroad, what are the words? Spain and Australia. You can say, take Pakistan for example. Thousands of people from Lahore or from Pakistan moved to Canada and Australia. Something like that. Okay. Every year, these countries, what do and Spain. So this is how you have connected two sentences with the help of these countries. So this is what we call coherence and cohesion. Ideas are connected within the paragraph. These countries have a warmer climates and encourage a better work-life balance. In addition, now in which category will it go to? CC, well done, coherence and cohesion. And you can write in addition, you can write additionally, you can write further something like that but you must write I mean in your body paragraphs every sentence should have a word or phrase for coherence and cohesion for example first of all in addition by this I mean every sentence should have something like that now for instance if we write let, let's go back to the previous sentence uh, take British people for example if we don't write take British people for example and we only write thousands of people from the UK move to Spain and Australia now, do you understand what this is? No, because they did not say anything. So if you write any sentence without a tag of coherence and cohesion, that sentence is nameless, right? There is no purpose of the sentence there. Therefore, you should use something. Okay. In addition, by living over... One more thing. It doesn't mean that one word you have used in the essay, second time you will never use it. Repetition is when you use one word within the same paragraph four, five, six times. So if you use a couple of words in one paragraph, now you use them in the second paragraph or third paragraph, they're absolutely fine. Okay, here. Yeah. Uh, living overseas, you can gain qualifications and language skills which may improve promotion prospects on return. Turning to the other side of the argument. Now for advantages, disadvantages essay, this is a very good phrase. Turning to the other side of the argument. Which pile will it go to? CC, coherence and cohesion. Turning to the, now you have told the reader that now I'm going to talk about the opposite thing. Turning to the other side of the argument, culture shock is a major problem. Culture shock, you know what culture shock is? Oh, hi. Yeah. You will go to Canada, you see their lifestyle, say, ha. Oh. That is what we call culture shock, huh? Yeah. Something like that. So, culture shock means, like, for example, in your country, uh, alcohol is forbidden. They will see alcohol openly. So, any meat that you don't eat, there you will see that meat there. So, this is what we call culture shock, right? So, uh, turning to the other side of the argument, culture shock is a major problem. Major problem means disadvantage, right? So you can use, make a list of all these words for each essay type. Major problem, issue and all that. Many people who take a year out. Now take a year out means go abroad. Take a year out means they go out to a country for one year. Take a year out. Find it hard. To cope with the language barrier, so culture shock is also language barrier, the food and general cultural differences. So food is culture shock, language barrier is culture shock and general cultural differences. This often leads to, what do they mean by this? This means language barrier, food, general cultural differences again cc coherence and cohesion i told you this is a very very useful word this often leads to homesickness when there is culture shock language barrier 
बेबे के आलू वाले पराठे याद आते हैं हाँ ये होम सिकनेस एंड इन सम केसेस अ सेंस ऑफ आइसोलेशन सेंस ऑफ आइसोलेशन मीन्स मैं अकेला पंछी ये एग्जैक्टली और राइट नेक्स्ट एनदर इशू इज दैट अगेन एनदर इशू दिस इज सी सी कोहियरेंस एंड कोहिजन एंड इशू मीन्स disadvantage another issue is that at least you can use all these words make a list of them in every essay you can use them issue is that it can be difficult to start a new life from scratch when you go to a foreign country you will start a new life from zero new house new place everything new new neighbors and new family and all that family depends yeah not family you you can bring your old family or you can make a new family there so life from scratch from scratch means from zero in other words see that you can use it now why are they using in other words they want to redefine the same idea we so after this you will give one sentence summary of uh, two advantages and two disadvantages you need to weigh up weigh up means you got to do the weight of something you need to weigh up the pros of better lifestyle pros means can use this word in any advantages disadvantages i say in conclusion pros of better lifestyle weather and so on so these are two advantages comma and the cons of con means disadvantage and the cons of culture shock and language barrier culture shock is disadvantage language and these are two advantages which you mentioned and two disadvantages which you mentioned and finally you will give your personal view personally i believe the benefits in terms of personal growth eventually outweigh any negatives so in three sentences you will write your conclusion all good okay thank you okay uh, there are three parts of ielts speaking part 1 is called introduction where examiner will ask you some basic questions all about you like you know myself questions favorite color shopping family and all that so there is a list of questions will give you and you can practice from there right uh, in part 1 to the point according to the question uh when you answer the first second question you will understand how much does the examiner demand from you like the sentences and the length of your answer and all that once part 1 is over examiner will say we now move on to ielts speaking part 2 uh by saying this examiner will hand you a topic like we have given you the topic so examiner will give you a topic with pen and paper because in speaking test you are not allowed to take wrist watches mobile phones recording devices they are not allowed okay so examiner will give you the topic and then pen and paper and then examiner will say you now have 1 minute to read the topic you can take some notes if you want to and after 1 minute you will have to speak on this topic for 1 to 2 minutes the first thing is as you read the title of the topic you need to decide talk about don't decide it like you are thinking 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 okay i'll talk about that no 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 i'll talk about this no 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 decide immediately after that the second thing you need is that whether the topic is in present past future or one point is in past two points are in present one point in future so you should see this all very very carefully Because people say when they give you the topic for speaking part 2 you can describe the past of the topic present and future all wrong some topics you find there you need to use only past tense for example describe a place you visited now when they say describe a place you visited how can you talk about future and present you will just speak about that place in the describe that incident when you visited that place so you need to understand the topic and after that the tense of the topic and then the next important point is when you write down the notes remember in one minute you cannot even write one paragraph so do not try to write sentences do not try to write paragraph in the topic they will give you some bullet points for each bullet point you have to write a point 
or you call it like one bullet point in the topic and one bullet like a heading you know sometimes if you know the heading you can write the rest of the things so write your headings in such a way that if you read the heading it gives you ideas to express on that very thing so write two to three headings one main thing and after that when examiner says after one minute you now have to speak on this topic for one to two minutes you can just start and speak and one more thing in actual exam you don't know in part two whether one minute time is over or not so on and on until you are interrupted by the examiner allow the examiner to stop you don't ask the examiner oh yeah a minute <laughs> is it done Try to stop before a minute examiner will give you some signals like this so then you need to go on okay but i advise you to go on and on and on and after one minute actually talk time in part two is one to two minutes but usually after one minute they stop you or after one minute they can stop you anytime and there's no negative you topic from you okay and the pencil from you and then examiner will say we now move on to IELTS speaking part three in part three they will ask you some questions which test right like today it's 15th july 2022 so they appear in their IELTS test on like uh, 8th july 7th like that they said in speaking part three there is a variety of questions and these questions are not even related to cue cards now I tell you why and how they ask you these questions about your bench score. If examiner is indecisive, for example, examiner cannot decide 6.5 or 7. You know, like in football, we have penalty strokes at the end. Different topics. So don't worry about that. That they asked me so many questions. Like one student appeared, she said, in part three, they asked me around 10 to 15 questions. And then she said, My speaking. Okay, so no need to worry about anything. All right. So you just need to answer every question confidently. If they change the topic, if they ask you a variety of questions, that's perfectly fine. Because now instead of asking you questions on one topic they ask you questions on different topics because students cram their like there are some speaking books and their speaking topics have been leaked through those books so students cram those topics and they give memorized answer so in order to break that pattern not memorized any answer for IELTS speaking and IELTS writing never memorize any answer in part three these questions are the category of questions number one opinion based questions where you have to give your opinion about something number two compare have to compare past with present present with future or two things in present one thing from the past one thing from the present like city life village life life 50 years ago and now and all that so comparative questions the third one is prediction they will ask you some questions where you have to speculate about future, where you have to talk about future after 20 years, after 30 years and all that. OK, and these type of questions, opinion based questions, comparative questions, prediction type of questions, they will ask you and around five to six questions. Normally they ask Now, how to answer. Very simple. The way you answer your questions in speaking part one, like I've given you that three step formula. Step one, answer the question directly. Step two, elaborate your answer in two to three sentences. And step three, conclude your answer in one sentence. So in the same way, you can handle the questions in speaking part three, but make sure you are using right sentence structure. If the question is a comparative question and you got to compare past with present, so make sure you use past tense when you're talking about past and present tense when you're talking about present, okay? In part three, uh, actually, in speaking part one, they check your bench score from one to three. Bench score one, two, three in part one. Part two, they check your bench score four, five, six. And in part three, they check advanced level seven, eight, and nine. And then they give you your average bench score uh, out of these three sections. Okay? All right. Thank you. Okay.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Asad Yaqub and with me we have Mr. Absar. Hello and welcome to my IELTS video. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to have you. Okay, thank here. you so much. So, Mr. Absar is a good friend of mine and he's in my IELTS master class as well. And mashallah, he answers the questions very well. So, this video is going to be a simple IELTS speaking video, a specimen video where you can see the answers Mr. Psa is going to give us. These answers are a good specimen for band score 7 to band score 8. Right? So, Mr. Psa, are you ready? Yes. Shall we start the speaking oh, test? They're good to go. Okay, thank you. Did you have a favorite book when you were a child? Yes. I mean, when I was a child, I was more inclined towards uh, Urdu poetry and just Bangit Ra was my favorite book which has been written by uh, Mr. Allama Muhammad Iqbal, who is a national poet of Pakistan as well. Uh, during that period, I learned quite a few uh, poems and I learned them by heart as well, which I can recall now uh, as well. I still remember those poems. Beautiful poems for children, for uh, young people and even for the older generation as well. All right. How much reading do you do for your work or studies now? Like for your job? Well, my job is more of a uh, customer services. I have uh, done a master's in business administration way back about 20 years ago. Uh, and I still utilize those that I have uh, done in during that period for my day-to-day -day, uh, experiences. Uh, but as far as the academics are concerned, uh, it's a very busy and a hectic schedule, so I hardly find any time uh, to read a book, although I would love to read something. Uh, lately, I have uh, read a couple of magazines, uh, especially the Reader's Digest, which, okay. which is very good for... <clears throat> All right. What kinds of books do you read for pleasure? Mm, as I mentioned earlier, these days hardly find a time to read anything. Uh, but yes, these uh, new magazines and uh, there is a uh, application or a website called LinkedIn on the internet which is available and there people some uh, post some articles regarding uh, my job requirements and my job status these days. So I always go through them and then I'm very much into gadgets so I read uh, documents of, uh, or um, and the new advancement things. On that so that I can be aware of all the advancements that's going on okay do you prefer to read a newspaper or a magazine online or you prefer to buy a copy of it well uh, <clears throat> these days getting books from uh, a bookstore is not much of a habit these days so uh, and we are so much inclined towards the online things that now they have uh, introduced that King Kindle as well which is like a, uh, reading a book on uh, uh, like a physical book and I mean you can actually turn the pages on and it looks like with the, so uh, given the time whenever I find some time and uh, given the circumstances I like to read them on online all right we now move on to IELTS speaking part two you will have to talk about the topic for one to two minutes okay. you have one minute to think about what you are going to say you can make some notes to help you if you, if you wish okay. the topic is describe a big city you would like to visit so, please, you can start. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, what we can see is uh, the big city that I would like to visit is Istanbul. It's not the first time that I, I have been there. I have been uh, living there for quite some time, but uh, it always fascinates me and I would like to visit it again. You see, the big cities uh, seem attractive to someone because they think that there may be very exciting things to do and uh, many opportunities for the people to go there and work there and earn a lot of money. But uh, presently speaking, uh, the cities are so uh, overcrowded and so uh, busy that uh, the things uh, are getting difficult for, uh, for, the, uh, for the foreigners to go there and uh, learn those, they're living in those societies. So, uh, yes, to answer your question, I would like to go to Istanbul again and uh, live there and uh, enjoy my time over there. 
All right, that's good. Let's move on to IELTS speaking part three. What are the most interesting things to do while visiting cities on holidays? Well, uh, whenever you go to different cities, you uh, need to explore them vis-a-vis -vis, uh, their nature uh, is concerned. Uh, some, uh, there, there are some historical places and some touristic spots there. For me, since I'm a very, I'm very much inclined towards food, I'm a foodie as well. So I love to uh, try the new cuisines and uh, enjoy myself and uh, enhance my experiences of food. So that is one, one broader reason that I would like to go to visit those okay. cities as well. Why can it be expensive to visit cities on holidays? Well, when somebody or I mean, anybody goes there on a holiday, most of the people are visiting those cities on holidays as well. So it will be very crowded. And then, uh, especially if there is a touristic city, then uh, the person, the people living there, those shopkeepers, they know that uh, these uh, people are here for visiting. So they charge then enormous prices. And then uh, as compared to the, the economy that we are facing, the uh, rupee has been devalued a lot. So when you travel to different countries, uh, different cities of different countries, the exchange rate matters a lot. I mean, it affects your uh, things. And then uh, these shopkeepers, they want to deprive you of all the money that you have. So it becomes very difficult and very expensive to visit those cities. All right. Do you think it is better to visit cities alone or in a group? Well, that's a very relative question because you see, uh, if you can get along with like-minded people, then yes, going uh, with, a friend, with a group of friends matters a lot. But again, there are some uh, pros for visiting alone as well. Because you see, when you go alone, uh, and especially if you don't know the city, then you roam around uh, on foot into the cities and to explore them. So uh, going alone or with friends uh, uh, relatively depends on the circumstances and the city that you are visiting and which, way, which one is better. Okay. I mean, it's hard to say which one is better. Okay. Why have cities increased in size in recent years? Uh, as I mentioned earlier when I was discussing about the big cities, uh, most, mostly the big cities are cosmopolitan ones. People from different walks of life, different breeds and different creeds gather there to, uh, to earn their living. And then uh, they have like uh, so much to do uh, and uh, these cities have so much to offer as well. Uh, there may be some uh, employment, good employment opportunities, then there may be uh, higher a number of people living there and then crowded as well. So the chances of uh, getting uh, a good business out of it may be very uh, crucial for uh, you as well. All right. Thank you so much indeed. Thank and you. I'm really thankful to you that uh, you you actually agreed to record some speaking tests for no. my channel. You're most welcome. I mean, Thank I'm always you. delighted to have you. Sure. Uh, we'll do more tests with you. And guys, by the way, if you want me to record more tests with Mr. Apsar, please comment this video and then we'll make a series of speaking Definitely. tests. Okay. Speaking part one, part two, part three separately. Definitely. Okay, thank you so much once thank again. You very much. Right? So guys, I teach IELTS online all over the world and on campus in Lahore mainly, but I'm visiting Dubai from 13th December to 16th January. 13th December 2022, 16th January 2023. Okay, it's from 16th to 13th, okay? So if you wish to be the part of my on-campus classes in Dubai, you can contact me. But if you're watching this video after that, don't worry, I'll come again, right? So all the best. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Allah Hafiz. And once again, thank you so much. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, Jazakallah.